The Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup is presented by Skeeter Boats. Muta Bassmaster Live, and guess what? We got something completely different for you today for the second year in a row. We are adding redfish into the mix. That is a look at Port Aransas, Texas on the southeast coast, the fishing capital of the Lone Star State, and we are looking forward to a great three days of competition here for the next three days here on Bassmaster Live. Love this place, and uh, it's it's got a place in the heart of redfish anglers all over. We're about to find out why that is with the greatest saltwater tournament angler in America, Captain Rick Murphy. And Rick, uh, take us through this incredible, legendary playing field. So, Tommy, first off, it's great to be back, you know, but we're talking about uh, Port Aransas, and the cool part about Port Aransas is it's dead in the middle of our area where we're going to be fishing. To the south, we're going to be down near uh, the Bird Island and the lower Laguna Madre, uh, and then our reaching, going through Corpus Christi Bay as we fly north through our little drone here. Aransas Pass uh, is certainly a ship's channel that opens up to the Gulf of Mexico. And then we go to the north. We're going to go as far north as the Port O'Connor Jetty. There's a lot of great habitat, as we saw last year. A lot of great teams, a lot of great stuff to see and to fish. It's going to be interesting to see how our teams adapt, Ronnie, uh, to certainly the wind conditions that they're going to have in the next few days. All right, well, we look forward to this competition. We've got uh, five teams who have qualified through the prominent uh, redfish trails in America. Another five teams made up of an elite series angler and a, and a very well-known redfish angler. And that was the sort of team that won last year. Ryan Rickard and Chris Zaldane of the Bassmaster Elite Series. These guys had a perfect sort of three days of fishing there. Caught 43.4 pounds, a seven and a quarter pound average. Boy, they certainly did. And you know, they really, introduced some really cool stuff. Mm. Zaldane brought something, Ronnie, to the game that we had never seen before in the Redfish Arena. Uh, and you want to tell everybody about the chatterbaits? Yeah, I mean, we saw we saw big swim baits, we saw chatterbaits, we saw a lot of things at the Bassmaster Elite Series pros that were in this event that they're confident with every day of the year, no matter what body of water. And they really realized that, hey, redfish are very similar to bass because of the way they ambush bait, their mentality to approach feeding, and they obviously live in some marshier, shallower conditions, and we get to see that happen, Tommy, and see their confidence baits come into reality here. That was one happy team for sure, Ryan Rickard, breaking through for his first win. He'd been so close so many times. Right now, we're getting ready. We're actually in the middle of the takeoff right now. Some shots from earlier this morning, uh, still good and dark. They're as far west as Corpus Christi and Port AR there, but there's some of our teams in action. Again, we have 10 teams here. Five teams with the purely a redfish team that has been competing on a trail and qualified through that trail to make it here. And our other five teams, an elite series angler and a, and a redfish guide. You know, you're absolutely right, Tommy. And I, I asked these guys some really cool questions, trying to get a little background about the guys. I asked them what kind of uh, sports they played in high school. I asked them about what they thought their strengths were, their favorite ways to catch redfish, their weaknesses. And then certainly we talked a little bit about their tournament wins, whether it was top fives or wins in general. So we got a lot of great information and background from these guys. All right, well, these teams are, can't wait to get underway, especially our defending champions, Ryan Rickard of Florida, Chris Zaldane, who makes his home in Texas. We had a chance to chat with them right before they got underway this morning. All right, here we are. Uh, take off at 7.05. We may uh, take off just a little bit later than that. The goal today, Captain Ryan, is what? Pick up where we left off last year? Pick up where we left off last year, and we hope to kind of duplicate what we did on day one. Yeah. That's kind of our goal. You know, yep. it may not be extremely heavy, but I think you're going to have to post a pretty good bag today because the southeast prevalent wind is going to be the, the wind that they like to bite best yep. on. And I think 14 plus would be an unbelievable start today. That's our goal, and uh, we'll make an adjustment if we need to. Yeah, you know, like doing these. Uh, uh, pre takeoff interviews like at the Bassmaster Classic or the Elite Series, you know, we're always talking about wind direction and weather changes and things like that. And down here in the salt, like 
it's like do they do, do these guys even think about that type of thing at that level and they think about that or even more not only is like safety an issue uh but you know it just it triggers the fish differently um but yeah we've got what like a 15 to 20 mile, mile an hour southeast right, wind today getting close, so we're getting ready to go up, here and uh, we're just we're just pumped man 14 to 15 pounds today is our target goal right and then carry that this, weight uh, through the rest of the week how does it feel to be defending champs oh, <laughs> targets the targets are on our backs like look I, I had to erase the target off his back this morning. These guys are hungry. There's a bunch of new teams. They're star-studded. They're like, I mean, these guys, these guys qualified. I mean, you guys got the, a bass fisherman like Scott Martin, who, you know, he's absolutely a saltwater guy from your neck of the woods. Yeah. I mean, they're absolute sharks. We got to do what we can to keep those sharks in the water and out of our boat. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it definitely is a target, but it's also we're going to ride that waiver last year and try to keep that momentum moving forward, and, and uh, we'll see where it takes. Our defending champs from 2021, Ryan Rickard and Chris Aldane. You don't think those guys are a little a little wired up today? <laughs> they, up. Are, they cannot wait to get underway. <laughs> None of us can. And we welcome you. A great Friday morning to you. Welcome to the Bassmaster Studio, sponsored by Marathon. I'm Tommy Sanders here. And with the aforementioned Captain Rick Murphy and Ronnie Moore on, on, uh, on set as well. Our buddy Mike Sukon, the Such, is down there filing stories. You can find them right here on Bassmaster.com. And what a great, legendary place for 135 years. This has been a fantastic sport fishing destination. A lot of water, a lot of fish, but the deal is you got to be around the right ones, the right size. You absolutely do. And you, the guys were talking about the 14, 14 and a half pounds. So what we're talking about, Tommy, is these guys are going to try to find the biggest fish that don't measure over the 28 inch line. So the way that's really important is they want to find the fattest fish. We saw fish last year. Ron Houston weighed in some nine plus pounders. The average weight, I think, last year for the guys that were in the top three or four, they did have some eight pounders in their bag. It's going to be real interesting. They are 100% correct, Zaldane and Rickard. The southeast wind is going to create a really good bite for them today. So they got to take advantage of what they've got before them. Otherwise, you know, tomorrow we're going to have some serious north wind. Could shut the bite down, could slow it down. The good part is it's supposed to decrease uh, as the day goes on. So we'll see what happens. These guys are all professional. I'm really interested to see how these guys adjust. Yeah, the adjustment period is going to be interesting, Rick, because obviously you said today is going to be a southeast wind, tomorrow a, a north wind, and then Sunday is going to be our beautiful day of weather. And so we'll have to have you explain what the wind is going to do to this body of water, because we know wind on lakes and rivers all the time, but necessarily it, it doesn't necessarily affect it like it does here. So we'll have to get into the aspects that they'll have to adjust with. But it's going to be a great week, and like you said, plenty of seven-pounders to go around to at least set the tone this week. Absolutely. You know, Captain Rick, we talk about the two different species. People tune into Bassmaster Live this morning, maybe expecting to see bass fish, and they may not be so familiar with the redfish. Both of them hard fighting. A bass is going to be the top predator, the apex predator in his place, unless there's pike around. But the redfish is not yet. He's a super aggressive fish. So what they're going to have down there in the lower Laguna Madre, Corpus Christi Bay, all through the north of the uh, Port Aransas Channel, is they're going to also have a lot of big trout and there's some black drums. I was talking to Scott Martin before the uh, yesterday and he was telling me about some fish that they found that were tailing. And the first question I asked him, I said, Scott, you sure those are redfish and not black drums? The good part is black drum and redfish kind of live in the same water. They like to feed on the same thing. And speaking of feeding, they're crustacean feeders. And the cool part about this, Tommy, if you look, we're talking a little bit about the bass's mouth. As you can see here on this redfish mount that we have here, they have an underslung mouth. They're very aggressive feeders for sure, but you like a lot of guys like to throw top water and guess what? It's hard for a redfish to get that top water. So you'll hit it several times. You gotta really keep your cool, keep twitching your walk the dog style of bait. Don't lose your marbles and the, he'll eventually suck it down and get it into his crushers and that's what allows us to catch them on top water. The cool part is real aggressive, whether it's a yeah. vibration type of bait that you're talking about, like a spoon or a chatter bait, uh, they're gonna eat it. So they're gonna have some really good fishing today, I hope. It is gonna be fun. You can see the sun just not quite peeking over the horizon yet. We got a little bit of cloud cover today. These guys, uh, most of these teams making pretty lengthy runs there. There's a little bit of wind out there that complicates that a bit, but uh, these guys are 
on their way right now. That's a team of Wes Logan and Brent, Brent Roy. Wes Logan, the Alabama Elite Series angler, just finished up his third season with the Bassmaster Elite Series, owns an Elite Series victory, which is a, a, quite a feather in his cap. And Wes Logan, uh, fishing with uh, Brent Roy from Venice, Louisiana. Venice uh, also one of the uh, world capitals of red fishing. Yesterday hits. Yeah. You know these guys. A lot of these guys love to sight fish in that overcast cloud cover. Tommy, it's going to take that part of the way Maybe from their whatever. game, and there are a lot of them are going to be blind fishing, which is certainly cast as far as you can with whatever it is you're using, and then bring it back to the bait. If it's a jig, you're going to be bouncing it in the sand. If it's a spoon, you're going to be reeling it. You can see one of their competitors running by there quickly in their bay boats. Here comes another one. Uh, it's going to be really, I'm really excited and interested to see how these guys are going to adjust with that cloud cover like it is. Just go. As was the case last year, 2021, the first incarnation of this uh, Redfish series on Bassmaster. Live to, each day was a different set of challenges. Uh, some, some of the teams are in survival mode, waiting for the perfect day. I think this time around, maybe day three is going to be the perfect day for so many of them. For sure. For sure, day three. Now, we got to remember this, though, Tommy and Ronnie. You know, it's really important to understand because it constantly blows in Texas. A lot of the guys, they set up these big drifts, and they'll drift for three or four hours across these giant bays and pockets and sand holes in their blind casting, not turning on the trolling motor. And what I've learned in fishing in there in uh, calm conditions in Texas is when you turn that trolling motor on, somehow or another, that redfish knows you're there, feels you, it seems to say two or three casts away from you, and it doesn't seem to matter. The wind is your friend in Texas because of the way these guys like to drift fish and allow the wind to allow them to cover ground. One thing that it may take away is that sight fishing bite, the comfortability of being able to see a fish and cast towards it and be precise. But the one thing, like you said, Rick, that it does open up is the ability to fish more free. You don't have to be as stealthy, as quiet. These fish aren't going to be as spooky. And we see a lot of these, we have about 10, 10 miles maybe to the south boundary from our takeoff, but about 40 to the north, towards the north boundary, a lot more plain field to the north we're going to see probably everyone go that direction today because you said with this south directional wind it's going to kind of push all the water from this south boundary to port aransas out of there making it much shallower much much skinnier much harder for these anglers to fish today and give a lot more water and capabilities to the north of our takeoff for sure and the other thing that comes to mind is that you got some guys that are matched up obviously we talked about it at the top of the show where they're matched up with bass pros and then you got guys that have qualified through other tours and they're fishing with their with their partner. The one thing that Zaldane and Rickard have, as well as Chris Kennedy and Chris Sensi, is that these guys know each other. They also know the lay of the land from being here last year. So they're gonna obviously have a pretty good advantage, uh, but then you have Kevin Aiken, which he's from here, lives in Corpus. So, It'll be interesting to see how our teams that don't live here, how they're going to adjust. You know, a lot of times knowing the area well, you have a tendency to be chasing what you think, oh, well, they may be over here or they're over there. And that can hurt you versus a guy like Scott Martin and Jonathan who have just showed up for the first time here. They've got two spots, but those spots got the right fish in them, and they're going to fish those spots thoroughly over the next three days. Yeah, you get taking advantage of your time, making efficient use of your time. Of course, a big factor in bass fishing, and obviously we'll see that play out today. One thing that's interesting is we never see the best fishermen in the world fishing as a team. All the decision making, right. all the fish catchings on them. This week for our five Elite Series pros who are paired with five redfish anglers, obviously there's five duos that are normal teammates or normal redfish anglers mm -hmm. together. But the teams that have Elite Series pros, it's kind of going to be a one-man show in terms of the decision making. A lot of the redfish anglers are going to make those decisions, and you're going to lead some of the best natural fishermen in the world, where all they have to do is cast and catch, which takes a lot of stress off of them. The decisions they can make as a team, but they all they have to do is worry about the fishing, and some of these Elite Series pros can settle in. We had uh, 
conversations with these guys yesterday at Media Day, and a lot of the redfish anglers expressed their admiration for the ability of these elite and to catch the fish. I, and, and it was well pointed out that these elite series anglers fish pressured water everywhere they go. And not to say there isn't pressure here, but boy, they've. Uh, They've honed their skills. They're pretty precise and very, very uh, surgical in their ability to catch those fish. They sure have. And, you know, that's the cool part about being matched up with a guy that you know he can make the cast, Tommy. You know that he's not going to sit down three hours into the day. He's going to be up there casting, chunking, uh, reeling it back. Uh, you know, the one thing that I've always admired about the bass guys is how they can just stay so focused, hundreds of casts a day, till the very last second to where they have to leave to go to the takeoff. When I watch it on TV, watch you guys on TV, it's really awesome to see how focused they can stay throughout that whole eight hours nice. and the, for the three or four days, depending on the length of the tournament. Rick, I'm not saying that uh, bass fishermen bass fishermen are pretty stubborn, oh, but it seems like redfish uh, anglers can be as well. Go with chatterbait and see if one bites, and hopefully if it does, it's a seven pounder. Just gonna chunk and whine, see what happens. But the ability for some of these redfish anglers to switch up, they know a spoon works, they know top water can work at times, they know a popping cork can work at times, and so they tend to just lock it in their hand and find the right fish to, that will bite. Whereas bass fishermen, they know fish are everywhere and they have to adjust, They'll, they're willing to adjust. A couple things to line up. One is the right depth of water, which is foot and a half to one foot to one foot and a half. Second is bait. You have to have some bait. And number, number three is having some grass, some sand holes in it and, and softer bottom. Not the real hard bottom. They like that, like that muddy bottom. I guess it's because those redfish can go down in that silt and feed a little bit more, I guess. And I heard that that silty soft bottom holds a little more temperature, warm, a little warmer. So this time of the year, come in winter, that softer bottom is warmer than the hard bottom sand. So it kind of makes sense. So, you know, that's the area that we found right here kind of lines up with all that. We're just going to stay in here for several hours and see if we can't pick apart two biggins. So when I talk to Scott, he is actually fishing not far from where uh, Houston was fishing last year. Uh, he didn't, he wasn't able to put it together around those islands that we saw the guys fishing last year. Um, but he's fishing some drop off of the channel areas that is not very far from there. So the cool part is, like we said, you know, if you're a local, you have lots of options and that can be, can really hurt you. I'm really confident that Scott and Jonathan are going to catch them uh, because they don't have a lot to go on. So they're going to really, what they do know, they're going to make sure they go with what they know. Jonathan Willis, his partner's from Pensacola, Florida. A guide with not a lot of tournament experience, but a lot of fishing, a lot of time on the water fishing, guiding for redfish. So he's, uh, he knows what the challenge is and he's got a plan to deal with it, I'm sure. And of course, Scott Martin, 22 year Bassmaster Pro who has done plenty of saltwater fishing. You, you better believe it during the course of his, his fishing career. And I don't want to call out someone real early, but Roy and Logan yesterday in their interviews were real shifty about what that bait that Logan discovered that he could catch him on. And if they just said a chatterbait, like we saw all last year, there is no secret. There's nothing, no. there's nothing that you can hide. We know, we know what you're throwing. And let's talk a little bit about that, Ronnie, if, you, if we got a second or two. You know, most of the guys before the chatterbait was introduced uh, to red fishing were throwing spoons. And the one thing that I've noticed the difference between fishing a spoon and a chatterbait, both are vibrational type of lures. The lateral line of that redfish is going to feel them. However, by putting a paddle tail trailer on the chatterbait, I've noticed fishing it personally, it can be fished a lot slower, but still creates a tremendous amount of vibration over the spoon. So early, if the fish are a little lethargic, for sure that chatterbait with its paddle tail type of plastic swim bait on the back is going to allow them to be more thorough and to have it really fishing slower. Just let the wind push us and just keep cheating like that. It wasn't little. Good. 
get up here just a little bit. That'd be a perfect. We don't have to hit troll mode too hard sitting like this. You're just joining us for Bassmaster Live. This is the second edition, the 2022 edition of the Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup Championship. So it looks like Roy and Logan are power pulled down there. They got their trolling motor still up and they're just blind casting out front of the boat. As you saw, Roy just released a real small fish, like maybe on his first cast. All right, so we've uh, we made about a 10 minute run from Port A. Little area right here. It's a big, it's a big area. It's got a lot of bait, a lot of birds. You can see the pelicans diving in the background. And this is where we found a, a good, consistent concentration of fish. Um, they were just kind of all throughout this little zone here. So we're just gonna kind of fish patiently. You know, it's it's these fish are along these edges like this, but they're also out on these flats just randomly. So you've just got to keep casting. So that's all we're gonna do. I'm, I'm throwing a chatterbait right now. He's throwing a spoon, and uh, hopefully we can we can connect with one of these one of these schools of fish in here. You know, for us practice wasn't fantastic, but again, the biggest thing that I'm excited about is that we have an area, not just a spot, not just one spot. We have an area where there's some fish. So if they're, like we caught some right here. If we don't catch them there, I don't care because we're gonna go back in there and we caught one over there and we caught one over there and we caught, you know. So we're just gonna bounce around. I like that better than just saying, hey, we've got this one little spot that we can catch fish because mm -hmm. if they're not there, then what do you do? Yep. And pre-fishing wasn't a bunch of trying to hook every fish that we could possibly hook. Pre-fishing was a bunch of just trying to locate fish. Yeah, yeah. Oh, get ready, get ready. There's a lot of this area down there, Tommy, that is a lot like Jonathan Willis's area where he lives. Pensacola, Orange Beach, uh, the Destin, Panama City area, uh, the Panhandle of uh, Florida. They have grass lines like this. They've got potholes that dump into little sandy areas. So he should be fairly comfortable if he's got the mullet. Be a super quiet and stealthy. These fish, number one, they can they can hear everything. It's shoot. Oh, he just what was that? I bulled you. Yeah, it was a little bit of a little bit of a bait ball there, man. Spooked the mullet, but it was a good bull. Good water in here. It's a little low on those things, but not real, real low. Yeah, we're still. I'm gonna trim the engine up just a hair. Make a move from Jonathan Willis and Scott Martin. A little farther up and pick up Chris Sensi and Chris Kennedy. The powerful Redfish Tour East. That's how they qualified. They. Do I need to talk or anything? Team? Yeah, you need to say something. We're real close to the launch, <laughs> and I just missed a good fish on top water. It's the only bad thing about throwing the old top water, and I'm using single hooks on the skitter walk because a lot of floating grass, and that's part of it. You throw the top water, it'll call up a big fish, but uh, you miss, they miss it a lot. So, but it's what's been working for, so I'm gonna stick with it for right now. What's your plan? We're gonna do this all day bounce around in some different spots and uh, hopefully we get lucky. Hopefully we catch a fish here in the next few minutes. <laughs> Chris and Chris had a good first two days of fishing last year. Kind of missed the boat, missed the bite on the last day. The airboat's coming by. Downfall. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I, he said, you know, we had a top 10 finish last year. And I started <laughs> laughing they when did? I was talking to him. You know, yeah, that's the one thing you got to love about yeah. Cincinnator. That's what I we call you. him on tours. You know, he's just I mean, a, so positive all the time. Uh, you know, both these guys have been fishing yeah, together a long time, and they've been and very awful, successful. They had to re-qualify through the power pole, and they did. Power pulled down. So what are you gonna do? Now he is, yeah, he drifted in. We just kind of work around him if we got to. We'll get there eventually. 
So I think you got Chris Cincy, he's throwing a top water walk the dog style of baity. Too far off the island, maybe? Took the treble hooks off and put in line single hooks to Just eliminate to some of that bit, grass. Trying to get a little bit closer so we yeah, can yeah, peg yeah. the island pretty good. Right. Kennedy waiting for their first keeper of the day. That fish have to be 20 inches in length minimum in order to keep. That can't be more than 28. We'll elaborate on that at length throughout the day because that's kind of what separates you. That's what makes you a winner at the end of it all after three days. How big a 28 incher you can get. There he is. Good fish. Coming over. A little. A little. I don't know what it is, but it's not big at all. So just go back in there. I don't think it's a keeper, dude. Like little. Go back in there. Sorry, right. cook one peanut oil. A couple fish move. That will not be a keeper for Scott Martin right there. He's looking for something bigger than that. Scott says uh, while his uh, Elite Series compadres are in a deer, deer stand, many of them this time of year, this is the time of year he is saltwater fishing. We'll see him in action and all the rest when we come back. The Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup at Port Arnassas, Texas is sponsored by Humminbird, Yamaha, and by TH Marine. The Texas Gulf Coast, what a place, what a place for fishing dominated by this giant. Barrier Island, depending on where you are, it's known as Matagorda Island or Padre Island, the Father Island inside of it, the Laguna Madre, the Mother Lake. That's where all our action is taking place today. Our 10 teams in the first of three days of fishing down here. Our 10th place team from last year, trying to up their standings this year. Chris Sensi and Chris Kennedy. Ah, come on. There's not a lot of fish here. <laughs> Fish on. You can fish? I don't know. I, I hadn't used this rod yet, but it's a fish. Yeah, that's a good fish. He's not making any <laughs> runs. <laughs> Hand slipped off. You saw that? Wow. I don't know. Chris, he just turned into. I think I hadn't used this rod yet, and I hadn't had a drag type. Yeah. Get in that. Ice broken. Ice broke. Wait, don't flop him under. Now we gotta see if he uh if he measures small fish, but hey, it's the first one. So it's underneath the backpack, Chris. They're looking for a 20-inch fish you heard me? or better. What's underneath the backpack? Or oh, the measuring board if you'd like to get it. Oh, where's that? Underneath the backpacks. Up to 28 inches. We'll move it. <laughs> Just pop it out. Just pull it out. Nothing but a nothing but a thing. Pull that, pull that down. Check and see if this one actually makes it in the limits. I don't think he does. Man, he does not. Got to be over 20. That's okay though. Broken ice. This is the target species. Miniature version. See? Sorry, y'all. But he's gone. <laughs> Good thing he wasn't 23, 24, 25 inches. Get uh, the man. Yes. Chris Kennedy laying it out for us there, the native of Metairie, Louisiana. That wasn't a professional release, but <laughs> he went and didn't even touch the boat. I'm good. Cincy and Kennedy still looking for their first keeper again. Two keepers, that's going to be your limit for today for the team. Sounds like an easy task, but boy, you got to keep improving. You got to keep upgrading. You get the best two you can get. Oh, there you go. Ah, dead gumming. Oh, there you go. You got him. Come on, come on. That was a good fish. Another good fish. I'm right there behind you. There he is. I don't know if we're tangled up or not, but I don't care. Yeah, we don't care. We're tangled up. I'm gonna cut. I'm gonna. Is that a better fish? 
I don't know what a good fish is anymore. Go ahead and cut it off. All right, so can we get it in with us? Yeah, probably. Okay. Was that him? That was the one Yeah, that was him. He came. Oh, right. yeah, that's a good, better one. Hell, yeah. All right, give me this. You deal with the, you deal with the line. Wait. All right. How do you like that? that? Tangle up. He Chris backed it up like he should. Textbook backed it up. He blew up on me. Is he bleeding? Mm, yeah, cool? no, he's bleeding. You're not tongue hooked, is he? No. Okay. Oh, he might be. I don't know, it ain't bad. <laughs> Look at this cluster. Still small, but he's four and a half pounds. Step over here. Oh, don't look at that. These ain't no bass. You can't lift them. So you notice something that happened there, Tommy, was that Chris Sensi had a fish blow up on his topwater and miss it. And Chris Kennedy was in the position where he had his soft plastic paddle tail uh, lure. And Chris uh, Sensi owns a company called Slayer Inc. And they make soft plastics and jig heads. So he threw right in there behind the topwater and got the bite. The redfish was following the top water for whatever reason. Maybe he had a little piece of grass on it, wouldn't eat it, and he ended up catching them on the jig. Good teams will back each other up like that. Kind of using the top water to locate them in a, in a way. Right? Correct. Yeah. That clickety clack that most of the top water walk the dog style of lures that is being in the marketplace now, that really calls them. That and the popping cork. Those are the two most effective, you know, noise-making lures in the redfish arena right now. And I'll say they're very, very effective and um, good for them to have the wear for all to be able to throw right behind and catch, you know, the, the fish that wasn't eating a topwater. Look at this place where we find uh, Cincy and Kennedy with our Skeeter Boats bird's eye view here. We're going to get some incredible footage during the course of these three days to show you all the different environments here. We talk about the length of this playing field, but the width is just as important because it contains so many different environments. Yes, absolutely. And as you can see, the boys are power poled down there. They're fishing the wind blown side of that I'm island. Going. Yeah, I just need you to reel tight is what I need. You're, you got a lot of slack in your line, so I can't tell what's happening. Just hold that part. This way? This way? Yeah, that's it. Put that there. It's too much slack. No, you got it. It's right there. Problem we don't often see on the Bassmaster Lead Series when there's only one angler fishing and one rod at a time, but sometimes your lines get tangled, especially when a fish gets in the boat and some chaos mm. ensues. And then do it like that. Let it go. Line your wrist. <laughs> Braid and wind. Well, is that it? I thought that'd go. There you go. All right. He said I was a professional at like getting untangled. Did it. <laughs> <laughs> I was joking with Chris Kennedy before the tournament that he deserves an award to have to fish with Chris Sensi for yeah, 10 years. <laughs> You know, it's like a life sentence. But these two dudes are such good friends and they really in the well, Chris. are very intense. Man, he wanted it though compared to the other day, you know what I mean? Yep. I mean he hit it what, three times? He so picked we're up over mine, two I didn't feel it. Top water now. <laughs> I'd say one and a half. Yeah, one and a half. Oh yeah, you're right. Because we cleaned up. I mean, that's that's just what you got to do. You got to call them up. up, and we got them in the lift boat. That's all that matters. Lift your rod tip up. Just lift it up. up. Yeah. Oh boy, thought that was him. All right, come on, big boys. So I you can see that fish coming out the water after you beat. Are you serious? Oh yeah. I mean, that was the same fish, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh. Uh, he was definitely chewing. That was a. He wanted it. The first one that blew up on it, it didn't, doesn't come back for it. That guy came back. I kept, I can't believe they just miss it like that. You can see they got a combination of sand and grass, potholes there, Tommy, along with an island that's windblown. Got the stink out the boat. That's the perfect Slime habitat. Slime on the line. 
for where a redfish is going to want to live. Even got a seagull right. flying, probably right. looking for the same right. bait that these guys are looking for. That bait's being pushed to the island, right? That's, yes. That's being concentrated there. That's correct. Those fish would want to lay right off of that right-hand corner of the island. It causes a little seam as the wind current kind of blows so that's what around. we're doing, Dan. We're going to call them up and then back it up. <laughs> like call, Great technique. call it up, back it up. Now look how... Call them to the dinner table. And you worry about the tangles after. <laughs> Look at how different the attitude is in the boat, just with even one small fish in the well. And as they put a second one in there. And that was three activities we've had over here just on this one island. Yeah. You're gonna see the sun's not even really hardly they relax. Yet. And when you relax, that's when you can do some significant damage. Huh. A lot of mullets. I mean, should we go in this cove or just stay outside? I would just it? stay on the outside right now. We got plenty of time to do whatever we got to do. I wouldn't even mess with the cove. I mean, we caught them on the outside, had some, might as well try yeah. to catch some more. That's two on the first island. We didn't even come down. Actually, that's three actions well, on the could first. have been three. For some reason, they're just not sucking that thing up. He was blasting it, though. Did you see him? Yeah. I think the water, pers the wind personally, is more out of the east. Well, we got a drone showed up. Oh, yeah, he's good to fly on the drone. Nice. That was on, on, a, on film? Nice. What was? That whole, that whole bite, everything. <laughs> and now they're producing TV well, shows. <laughs> becoming love becoming it. fans hey, of Bassmaster. Are, are we live? Are we live? Yeah. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> you know, Rick, a lot of our anglers are are excited when the drone and cameras come around because they know that they're doing well, even if it's in the first hour of the day. So Cincy and Kennedy off to a good start with at least a couple fish to break the ice. Nothing, nothing keeping yet. When you're getting bites, it creates confidence. As we say, this series uh, was kindled, started back in 2021. Last year was the first year. Our champions, this team right here, an elite and a redfish angler. Ryan Rickard and Chris Zaldane. Chris Zaldane, a reputation for uh, loving the big baits and uh, managing to get that into the mixture a little bit there and, and bring some bass sensibilities to red fishing here. That's, that's the way it's supposed to work. And that's the cool part about having a bass pro with a saltwater angler. You know, the, the, the uh, tackle box just got super large, you know. It's a great way to put it. Great three days, averaging about uh, seven and a quarter pounds a day. 43.4 was a winning weight last year, netted him $50,000. Winners this year get $75,000. So let's get to this team live. Tell me about last year, what you're going to do this year. All right, here we are. We just set up. There's a, you know, a bass fishing checklist is only that big when it comes to tournament fishing. Saltwater, red fishing, the checklist is that long. So we just got settled. We got down to our spot here. We're approximately 35, 40 miles south to take off. It was a nice smooth ride despite the 15 mile an hour southeast wind. Got the sun coming up on the horizon here. Captain Ryan, he's getting ready. We're throwing swim baits this morning. I myself like the six and seven inch versions. He's throwing a nice little like shrimp and crab imitator, like a little three and a half inch swim bait. So. The last time we were here was about three or four days ago, and we left here releasing a nine pound fish. So uh, yeah, it looks, if it looks familiar, this is the area we caught them in last year. So the fish use this this time of year uh, to feed and then move on and migrate. So target target weight today is, uh, is, is a seven pound average. We leave here with 14 pounds, yes, we're sir. on the board. That'll be good. Uh, last year it was just magic. This, this whole area was absolutely magic. We're gonna try to recreate that magic this year and uh, the fish are around without a doubt. Not as many fish this year, but the quality is absolutely still here. Just getting getting live well ready and prepped up. Some oxygen air, some rejuvenate. Put some in the box. All right, bro, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trek that direction. Yep. 
right there. Of course, I knew it was. I knew you were. <laughs> you knew it was of coming. Of course. Oh yeah, that's our line, and then bomb cast with the wind is a uh -oh. huge hold on, hold on, deal. Hold on. Oh, sorry. Bomb casting with the wind is a huge deal. He's probably Nick went up there there to check it to see. So good, you know. Good. He didn't go in there just for the heck of it. <coughs> no. And it ain't the first time he's gone in there. We just have to stay patient, you know. Like I said, the biggest thing that we found here is that it's an area. So, you know, even though that's a kind of a spot over there, it's still a big area. I mean, we caught them all throughout here. You can see this grass. There's that grass. Braid to fluorocarbon, everything's braid to fluorocarbon. Look at the, some of the spinning setups. Spoons, little spoons. You're gonna see that a lot this week, and they're absolute redfish killers. Got him, he's on, he's on. He's on. Oh, trout, trout. First cast. <laughs> uh, first cast. Predators prey here, man. Little bycatch. Uh oh. Fishes. I like about Captain Ryan. He, he cleans up my mess all the time. He, 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 he keeps a tight ship, man. That's so important. It really is. The right headspace all day. It didn't take long. Are you? Well, yeah, but y'all have carpet too, so it's like not as visible. Yeah. You know, this is yeah. like that big nasty stuff sitting there right. glaring you in the eye. Dude, look at the birds working this morning. It's gonna go down, dude. I like what I'm seeing. I do too. I would like to see a few mullet, but yeah. there is definitely birds, which is good. I think I'm gonna tuck up as far yeah. up as I can yeah, and just right uh, sit and pull. Look at right here, right here, Chris, right here, right here. See it? Yes, yes. I don't know. Good swirl. Never, never jumped. Never saw him, but I mean, it was 100% a fish. Southeast wind. Yeah. He knocked the fire out of it, dude. Still in there. It's the prevalent flow, though, you know. Yeah. Southeast is a prevalent yeah. flow here. It should make Normal. the fish feed today. I mean, this wind is actually going to be really good for us, I think. Yeah. Yeah. The lower this water gets, the better. Here we go, right here. Dude's got eyes like a hawk, man. All right, we've got all, most, I guess, all of our teams now. Our 10 teams are set up and currently fishing right now. We've got the team of Sensi and Kennedy. Uh, the only team we have on the board per uh, bass track with a four pound, two ounce redfish, one that they will not want to take to the weigh in a little bit later on today. <laughs> but uh, it's early yet. Getting one in the boat is, is always a good thing, as you, as you mentioned, Captain Rick. And boy, what a great place. I mean, it's just, you, you know the potential of this spot, and we're just sitting here waiting for things to explode. Oh, abs absolutely. And you know, we got uh, Zaldane and Rick are just got to their spot and already talking about birds talking about lots of mullet, lots of bait, a lot of activity. Guess what? I'm it's guessing. It's going to be on soon for somebody. I think they're going to have a bend in the rod shortly. <laughs> well, right now, let's check in with our colleague Dave Mercer, the host for all Bassmaster Elites, our MC for all Bassmaster Elite Series event and the World Championship, the Classic. And Dave, you are in such a special place, a welcoming place for, for anglers and fishing fans and uh, so much history there. I know you're enjoying it. Yeah, Port Aransas truly is a special place, guys. And for those of you that have never been here, it is basically weekend at Bernie's. I mean, you take a fer <laughs> ferry across to here to a sleepy little island that has a population of 3,500 people normally, but balloons over to 100,000 people in peak season. I mean, you're as comfortable here in a vehicle as you are in a bicycle, as you are in a side-by-side, -side, as you are in a golf cart. And basically, that's what I'm going to do here the next few days is I'm going to get 
the coolest golf cart I can find, rent it and rip around this place and see what it has to offer. Because it truly is a playground, not just out on the water, but obviously on shore. So much stuff going on. But guys, at takeoff this morning, a little trash talking between the teams and stuff like that. This is such a unique event because you have five teams that are directly redfish teams. That's what they do. And then you have our what some are calling all-star teams, where you take an elite series angler and pair it with a redfish angler. And last year, obviously, Zaldane and Rickard won this event and have a lot of chemistry together, but it's gonna be very interesting to see which one of these, I mean, the bass guys obviously want want to dominate this redfish event, but the redfish guys, they, they do not want another Bassmaster Elite Series Pro walking out of here with the $75,000 first place prize. Well, Dave, uh, on, on the ground, all the excitement that goes around this. For every, everyone that's turning on Bassmaster Live now and they're not seeing bass fishing, tell them, to, in your mind, what's the attraction of red fishing? What's, what makes that exciting? Redfish, in my opinion, is literally a saltwater smallmouth bass. I mean, it, it really, and, and to call back to Elite Series experience, uh, Caleb Summerall, I mean, if you look at his career over the last number of years, he's really started to do a lot better in smallmouth tournaments. And I've spent a lot of time talking to him, like, why have you got better at smallmouth bass fishing? He said, as soon as I started looking at them like a redfish, um, I mean, they chase bait, they're pelagic, they fight hard. Um, as soon as I started looking at him like that, and obviously he's got a lot of, of experience with them because he grew up in Louisiana, but redfish is, in my opinion, the smallmouth bass of saltwater. But here's a weird one too, and, and maybe you guys can help me with this. Some of our pros saying there's too much salt water in the salt water. <laughs> the salinity is too much. As a freshwater meathead like me, I'm like, well, well, what? There's supposed to be salt in the salt water. But these redfish, they like the brackish water, a lot of our anglers are saying. And this year, with a lack of fresh water coming in the system, a lack of rain, it's a lot more salt than we've seen in the past. So it might be tougher, but I mean, it's a two fish limit. And with that in mind, what I learned last year is you better not play small ball at all here. You can't, in a five fish tournament, you can have a small fish to sneak through there. You better have two big ones every single day because it's only two fish and uh, there's some giants that swim in this body of water. All right, Who, who's your dark horse? Who, <laughs> who do you have as a dark horse favorite here? Whew. Uh, I'm going to go Paul Nick. I mean, I mean, I rode that train all year long. Let's not get <laughs> off, guys. Brandon Paul Nick is going to not only dominate the Bassmaster Elite Series, but his team is going to win the Redfish Cup Championship. He he may not feel that right now, but I'm, I'm throwing my. I mean, once you once you're on a heater, and I've been on a heater with Paul Nick all year long, so I'm not getting off until it bucks me off. We talked to a lot of the redfish anglers yesterday, Dave, and they don't view this as some kind of novelty event. They think this is a prestige event. They, they are really impressed by it. They think it's terrific. They are happy to be here, and they've worked hard to get here. Yeah, and actually, you know, some of our teams that were here last year, I've already heard from some of them saying, I can't believe I'm not going to be there this year. This is a big deal in the redfish world. To qualify to be here, it's very, very difficult. We talk about how tough it is to make the Bassmaster Classic and stuff like that. There's five redfish teams that make this from all the different circuits that help them qualify. So, I mean, this is one of the toughest championships to qualify for. And as you said, they take this very seriously. And while some of the bass guys are just like, hey, this is kind of a fun event, uh, the redfish guys will quickly remind you there is what's fun is winning. Winning is fun and, and they're here to win. So trust me, when I walked around the boats this morning, it definitely did look like some of the redfish guys were a little more strapped down and ready to go to battle. But uh, I, I still think the bass guys will catch a few. They did last year. Should again. Absolutely. Great to have Dave Mercer here. That's a win for all of us. Dave's going to help us with the coverage all three days long, plus doing the weigh-in. So looking forward to that. Was that while we were doing the cluster on that fish? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that's good footage, isn't it? Yeah. But it's just so far away, you can't tell exactly what's going on. No, but they got to hear us explaining it and talking about how the backup and all right, that Right. What stuff. all did they hear on that whole thing? You got, what, as soon as we hook up, you go live or something? Sometimes. Or they retape. They kind of just. Uh, no, I mean, Don't tell all our secrets, Tommy. Yeah, not not at once. But I think uh, if we're looking at a guy that's not low-hanging fruit like our angler of the year or the defending champions, I like the team of Cook and Aiken. I'm, I'm, I do you too. get a guy who knows this body of water versus a guy who just lives in shallow Florida fishing his entire life. 
even if he hasn't redfished a bunch, I'd expect Drew Cook to, to be just fine fishing how they do this week. Yeah, and if the conditions are such that he can see them on Sunday, he's yeah. going to be oh, deadly. Yeah. yeah. And that's the difference, Rick. You can explain that. A three-day Bassmaster event like our Opens or College Series or the Classic, that's 15 total fish possible for a maximum. 15 fish you can bring in. For these guys, it's six. So the ability like Cincy and Kenny to have two good days and then drop off on the final day is so easy. No one is ever safe because you can't have that big of a lead. If everyone's catching six to seven pounders, you may have a one pound lead after two days. And that's that's easily uh, something that they can overcome on Sunday. Great point, Ronnie. And you know, the fact is that when you're only talking about fishing against 10 guys, that 10 place could be, you know, they all could be within a pound or a pound and a half. That's what you hope for. At least that's what I'm hoping for. You know, certainly with Kevin Aiken being a local living in Corpus Christi, he knows these waters, you know, and then he is very, very impressed with Cook's ability to just be able to catch everything that they is in front of him. So uh, most, it'll be really interesting to see if Aiken can just settle right, in, man. settle into what he knows. Yeah, it's a lot of head shake, And let dude. Cook do his magic. A little one. Probably grab that net. It's a red. He's small. Bigger than anything. Red in the morning. We got out here with a mullet R and Drew and I spent some time pre-fishing and we found some fish floating in here. Oh, he's a good one, Drew. They're all good. They're good, good. The kind of redfish right here you want to measure. Oh, this one measures, we're starting off good. We'll see. You got it? Yeah. That's a good one. He measures. As soon as he stops shaking his head. He'll be close, brother. Got him. He'll be close. God darn it. Mm, son. Mm, mm, mm. Come on, baby girl. You can tell we Come on, baby girl. <laughs> now everybody wants the sweet talk. Hey, no doubt. <laughs> oh, no doubt. That's a, that's a good one. I think that one is for sure. Hey, do, Drew, do me a favor. What you, you need? Go ahead and keep that fill pump on real quick on that right. rival. The good one right here. This one's gonna measure, Drew. Feel Those fun. boga grips are in that live well too. If you'll catch them for me when you get a chance. Hey, South Texas redfish, first trip in the morning. I got Drew Cook, and that dude's a stick. So I definitely gotta raise my game. This is that old perfect pincher right here. This is, hey, this fish is perfect, dude. Easy, easy measure. We don't even have to get the slider out on him. Fish is 26 and three quarters. Look at that fish. Look at the dots on that tail. Mm -hmm. That's freaking awesome. Sit right here. That fish. Eight and a quarter, baby. Oh, First God. fish of the morning. Oh. <laughs> hey, Drew, that? catch me that net real quick. Did he just say eight and a quarter eight for a quarter. 26 and three quarter inch fish? <laughs> oh, my God. I well, that's a fatty. Welcome that's to Texas, boys. Right. Ahead of the game for sure. <laughs> Your new leaders right there, Aiken and wow. Cook, as our tournament rolls on here. Port of Rancis, Texas, and Drew Cook had the quote of yesterday. He said, I don't, I don't care who catches them. The net man gets paid just the same as, <laughs> same as the guy who catches them. We'll be back. Yes, he did. Step away for just a minute. Live coverage of the Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup is presented by Skeeter Boats. Redfish Cup for you today on Bassmaster Live. We got three days of it. This is day number one, and this is really the first really strong keeper we have seen caught by the man who kind of stands as the local favorite here. That's Kevin Aiken, who lives in these parts. Been redfishing at a high level for 18 years. That one was a nice one. That team, Kevin Aiken and Drew Cook are in the lead right now. Let's take our look, first look at this team. Gary Marino and Bo Farr. Gary Marino from Texas, Baytown, Texas, and Bo Farr from Bay St. Louis, Mississippi. That's all right, let him go. Tommy, these guys are fishing in a <coughs> similar place that I'm one on. of our teams were fishing last year. The guys that were fishing with the, the lipless crankbait with the reverse the hopping cork. Mm -hmm. This is the same general area. It is on the west side of the intercoastal waterway. And those guys last year were fishing school fish and this looks like it was a school as well, laying on that windblown point. Gary 
Gary and Reno. You fish. Seven and a half. You take care of them, I got this. You take care of them, I got this. I, that one in there? It's in here? I thought we got it down. Gotta be under 28 inches and seven and a half. That's a quality fish. There's two of them. Oh my god. It's a long, long, skinny fish mm. compared to the last one we saw. No. 28 and a half. Mm. What? Okay, we'll do it. Inch right is here. a big deal. It's, so if it's you're a half an inch deep. over, it's not going to shrink up that much. Or it's it's oh, no it's doubt. Over. There's no doubt. No Realistically, doubt. Ronnie, <coughs> probably when that fish rough. relaxes, like you couldn't. They were so close together, you couldn't do nothing. You know, it could be even longer than that. Yeah. You know. Might be a good one, dude. Yeah. Roy hooked up. Is it a keeper? Yeah. Logan will be the net man here. So far, the Bass Boys have been doing all the netting. Yeah. <laughs> Glad you guys they, came They along. also serve who wield the net, <laughs> they, say, they say. There we go. A keep. Keeper. It's on. Good job, sir. You know, with every bite, whether he's too big, whether he's too small, or whether he's just right, it develops confidence that you're in the right place and that you're using the right thing and that you're fishing it the right way. You know, so I think these teams that have gotten a couple bites, you're going to see them also continue to get more bites. Keeper, always something positive about that. Our Yamaha Weather Watch will take a look right now. Today, the high of 76, perfect temperature, wind northeast at 8. No, that's tomorrow. I'm sorry. No, that is today. Wind northeast at 8 miles an hour. Saturday, we'll swap around north northeast, 15 to 25. That's uh, being viewed, uh, Captain Rick, as the, maybe the most challenging day. Absolutely. And I think that 8 is off a little bit. I think it's a lot harder than that already. Um, but you know what, the guys are doing their job and they're getting the bites. There's our man Paul Nick and Good Wine. They look like they're fishing the lee side of the areas, not the wind blown side like some of the other teams that we've already seen so far. You got them? Just in case. Yep. 
Let me come back and get angler it. of the year in the Elite Series. My good wine, Florida guide, lecturer, social oh, media content guy. Finally made it to our spot. Uh, we've been running. Took us almost an hour to get here. It's a little sporty across the bay, uh, but not too bad. We're at least protected in here. We're still seeing a bunch of bait, but got mullet here, got bait here. We're here. Just need to fish here. It's coming. <clears throat> oh, I'm chasing so, that. I learned a little something overnight, Tommy, that a lot of the grass you that you see the guys picking off of their lures mm -hmm. there, that grass is grass that usually is pushed up against the shoreline. And then when they get this excessive Wild high water yeah. from this big wind, that grass now comes off of the shoreline and starts blowing around in the water. And so the more it blows, the more grass we could see over the next mm. two days, Just even on our calm day still be in the, mm. because we're blowing in so much more water than what the tide charts are saying it's supposed to be. Mm. Fun battle if you hook one out on the end of that cast. Yeah. Brandon told me yesterday that, point too. that he thought the tide was a foot and a half higher than what the tide charts say, and that's because that's of wind. wind. Yeah. A lot of our anglers say you go up to Venice, someplace like that, the tide is much more pronounced there. Here, the wind is what moves the water around. Not, not so. They don't have the huge tides here. Correct. In south, uh, right and, uh, it's been coming all the way from that point. Southeast winds blow it's in some really good water. green water out of the Gulf. All the bait's been swimming in this direction, swimming into the wind. You know, Mercer was talking about how he thought that that redfish was like a smallmouth no, fight. Tonight, head red. They're, to me, they're like a heavyweight fighter compared oh, to uh, oh. other species that um, make screaming runs, pretty. you know, mm -hmm. saltwater species. These guys, you hook them. Right here is, uh, fun when they bite it. They just never give up, even right to the boat, right into here. the net. They're fighting all the way. You know, and an eight pounder will really pull some drag. Yeah, mm -hmm. mullet, mullet, mullet here. Yeah. year around food. So it's something that no matter where you go, the redfish relies on this protein all year long. So when you don't know what to throw, I'll throw you one of these. You sound like a lead head or what? Yeah, we fish weedless. Um, you know, a lot of times grass is involved in what we're doing. So this is a, you know, twist on Gamagatsu hook. Key weighted. Um, pretty nice presentation. Puts out a lot of vibration and action. And um, gives you the ability to tuck it in and really create a seamless, weedless bait. You just move through the whole entire deal. All right, tally ho. Taylor and Moore are obviously from Florida, and uh, they both are from the Tampa area. So they're gonna be looking for mullet, you know, jumping. They're gonna be looking for potholes, something you know similar. Redfish net. Yeah. That, I got it. Got our lucky mat. Taylor and Copeland Moore both have bass fishing backgrounds as well. Heavy duty bass fishing resumes. Mm -hmm. Let's get back to our defending champs. This is a shot from the boat of oh. Aldane and Rickard, and you can see why that topwater is useful out there. Now live. 
swing and a miss. Just had it. What's the key to fishing as a team? Yeah, that's huge. I mean, you literally have to have one eyeball on what you're doing and the rod in your hand and the cast you made and then the other eyeball on what your partner's doing and the cast he made, the lure he's throwing. Because obviously we don't both want to be throwing top water, don't both want to be throwing a spoon or a swim bait. It, this is absolutely a team effort and with literally 360 choices to cast around the boat, 360 degrees, I mean, you're only covering two of those degrees at a time, you know, which is way better than one degree. So you're constantly trying to figure out, you know, which side of the flat these fish are hanging out on and playing the conditions. So if you don't work as a team, you are definitely behind because, you know, there's 10, there's 10 groups of two out here. And at some point, you know, that magic moment happens, whether the tide gets right, the wind gets right, or the fish push, both of you have to be alert at the same time. And when I hook up, he throws in there. When he hooks up, I throw in there, or grab the net, or whatever it is. So this team aspect is definitely a big deal. And uh, that chemistry, it's not something you can teach or work on. Uh, you either have it or you don't, period. That's it, for sure. A lot of time in the boat, of course, being the champions from last year with those two. Constant communication between them really uh, sort of gelled the partnership. Got a great result, the best result. You know, absolutely, these guys have so much confidence going in. They know each other. They got to spend the time together last year. And we're fishing in the same place during the same time of year. That certainly gives them a little step up on everybody else. Jonathan Willis, he's the Redfish Pro. Scott Martin, Bassmaster Elite Series. 22 years of pro bass angler. Scott, you got a monster. I'm trying, just, up. I'm trying to just get through there to see if there's another one biting. Oh, that's a good fish, Scott. It's going away. Shit. Fish. All right, what do you want to do on this trolling motor? Getting away from them reeds. Power pull down. Take your time. I should probably pull, pull all of it up just so we ain't got nothing to wrap us in. Need to keep her. Yeah. All right. Should make 20. I hope. Hold this right here. All right. Um, here. You measure. Let me fish because there might yep, be another go ahead, one. Go ahead. I got the spot locked right there. Exactly where we got bit the other day, we we didn't catch that fish. He hit, or one hit right there. The old spoon. Belly, belly on the board, belly on the flat. To a closed mouth. Yeah. We go, we're 20, we're good. We're good. Right? Yeah, yeah. 20s, right here. 20 and some change. We're good. Yeah. All right, first keeper. First keeper, man. Ooh. Good job, dude. It's a nine pounder, dude. Nine pounder. <laughs> ah, nine pounder. <laughs> In about four years. A little wishful thinking there, but Willis and Martin on the board. Good stuff right there. And they're talking about a lure. The, when they caught that on, you really associate with the redfish guy. You're absolutely right. You know, Tommy, the cool part is let's talk a little bit about redfish and what they love. And they certainly love stuff that vibrates. That lateral line that goes down the edge of that fish, the key is that it feels stuff that vibrates. Now, by nature, 
a redfish is a bottom feeder. He likes to pin things against the bottom, but this time of year when they're triggered on mullet swimming by, they have a tendency before the crustaceans all start showing up or actually going away, they're gonna turn over to stuff that looks like mullet. So as you guys saw there, Willis just caught a fish on a quarter ounce silver or gold spoon. I couldn't tell what color it was. He's simply throwing that out and reeling it back. The way you wanna do it is you wanna reel it back as fast as you can without it skipping on the yeah. surface. You don't wanna twitch it because then that breaks the vibration and the lateral line of the fish feels it vibrate and then it goes away, it feels it vibrate and goes away. As you saw, Chris Aldane last year, he introduced the chatter bait with a big swim bait on the back. So now what happens is you can fish considerably slower uh, with the blade vibrating, but then you have the paddle tail, which creates additional vibration, and the two together allows you to fish even slower than you would a spoon. So now you would be able to fish that maybe a little deeper in the water column. You're still creating a lot of vibration. You got a big hook that's sticking out above the plastic part of your swim bait, and it's working very, very well in the past, and I assure you're gonna see it work in the next three days. Well, let's take a look. Get back out on the water live with Rickard and Zaldane. Mm. Okay. Short nipped again, bro. Yeah. Got him. Got him. Good one, dude. Got him. That boy, Ryan. That boy, Ryan. That boy, Ryan. You get this trolling motor for me? Ryan puts a yep. lot of yep. drag on his reels. I expect this fish to be, you know, you. over 25 inches. And will you trim that motor? Trim it up? Yep. Watch yourself, watch yourself, watch yourself. Oh gosh. Good job, good job. That was danger right there, good job. That was danger. It's a good one, dude. Control the motor's up. Oh my gosh. Oh, the you see, the heavyweight fighter. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, that's a yes. big one. Yes. Now, see if, it, see if it measures. Is he going to measure? Yes. Boards out. Boards it out. Boards out. The difference between a ooh and a ha, ah, Tommy, oh can be a quarter of an inch. <laughs> yeah. That's a good point. It's gotta be under 28 inches. It's gotta be under 28. Good job, bro. That's what we're after. That's one of six fish. Come on, baby. Be here we go. It's gonna be for me. Come on, baby. Oh, he measures all day. All day? Oh, yeah. Seven pounder, dude. He's at least seven. Mm. Oh, yeah. All day. All day. 27 and an eighth. And how much weight we got? Oh, gosh. <laughs> Eight pounds. Good job, Brian. We're on the board, baby. Eight uh. pounder. Oh, you can see baby. the lateral line in the Call scale me. pattern, and that's what those me. fish use day, in the low light yes. situations to yes. feel the spoon, short, to feel the chatterbait coming through the he water. He came back to it. So Ryan likes to tend these fish. You really got to take care of them. The big ones especially. They're like a smallmouth in the summertime up, up north there. They're very, very fragile. Was that one hooked good? Was it ton hook? Oh, no, hook I think okay, he's cool. good, dude. I think he's good job, dude. I mean, she's already settled down, so. What's the key to taking care of them, right? You know, these big fish, they just, they exert so much. I mean, you guys saw that. I mean, it's exerting so much energy. I have to have him lift the motor and lift the poles and lift the yeah. trolling motor. Yeah. They exert so much energy to get off that when, they, when you get them in the well, they're exhausted. So you just, you gotta make sure these fish stay healthy or else your day can go wrong real quick. Good job, partner. That's one of them. That's one. That's one. The defending champs are on the board now. As a matter of fact, they are second place with a seven pound plus. Redfish tucked in behind Aiken and Cook. 
right now with the 8-4. You know, they, they listed that as an 8-pounder. We'll, we'll clear that up for you. Yeah, and, and the real goal this week for people who are tuning into the Redfish event and wondering the format, same type of format we do with the Bassmaster Elite Series. There is a penalty for non-alive fish, and so their goal is to keep those alive to fish limit. We will have a live release boat that releases them. I know a lot of Redfish advocates and saltwater folks want to preserve this awesome uh, species that they can fish for for years. So that is the same procedure we do for Bassmaster Elite Series events in, in order to preserve and conserve this species. Well, a lot of concerns today as we started for the weather conditions, the wind, the big wind hasn't shown up yet and the fish catching has shown up. Got more on the way as we step aside. The Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup at Port Arnassas, Texas is sponsored by Minn Kota. Power Pole and by Skeeter Boats. The Redfish Cup is back in the fishing landscape now. Return in 2021. Had a great tournament there. This is a 22 edition here, the Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup, Port Aransas, Texas. The fishing capital of Texas. Uh, one of their, their, their other uh, slogan is where they're always biting. They're biting today. There's the proof for you right there, unofficially, those weights right there, via Bass Track uh, Show. Aiken and Cook, the team of uh, Kevin Aiken and Drew Cook on top with eight pounds and a quarter. That is strong right there. And tucked up very close behind them, the team of Ryan Rickard, Chris Aldane, our defending champions from here. Port A, the Fighting Marlins. Let's get out on the water live again. To our reigning Bassmaster Elite Series Angler of the Year, Brandon Polnick at this his partner and good wine. I'll say uh, a lot of people thought that the weights might go down this year, Tommy, and they may, but we're off to a really good start with two fish over around eight pounds or more already for teams. Yeah. Strong. And some of these guys just got started fishing. These guys made an hour long run, so they're mm. really getting their day started. Yep. Good one. It's running at me. Giant, but he might make the slot. Yeah, yeah, he'll make the slot. There we go. Yeah, we on the board. There's the old chatterbait. It's just like bass fishing, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come here, buddy. <laughs> Except they got more teeth. Redfish aren't bad. They just got teeth on top, really. But Long this is the exact well. same setup. I threw all your bass fishing. Little bladed jig, X Zone Mega Swammer. Looks like that bait swimming around. Measure him up, make sure he's good. I don't even know how this thing works. Yeah, just like that. And slide him on. Just slide it to 27. Oh, he's, he's good. He's easy. He's over. 21. We on the board. This is our angler that traveled the furthest. It's my yes. first yes. tournament <laughs> redfish right there. I like it. They're so pretty. Got them blue tails, spots. <laughs> His fifth day <laughs> ever redfish. The, right. the first Put elite pro with one of right? yeah. It's a keeper, I'm just going to say. <laughs> I was the last one to weigh in. They called my name and came in, dude. <laughs> got it. I got third in that tournament. And he, oh, he was mad. Yeah. You know one on the board. We'll that's catch good, another eight or a nine. That's pounder. a good feeling. I mean, yeah. That's just one what more. lives here. It well, is what lives are, here. Numbers are down, but the same quality is here. Rickard and Zaldane are we'll halfway stick us for there. Minute. Oh my gosh. Beats their uh, winning average last year by a this long shot. This was a good zone right here last year, dude. Like they stacked <laughs> in this little pocket right here. This is where all them potholes were. Are, are we on our marks now or we're past we're the marks? We're past them. Okay, we're past the so marks. We've got, we've got two right here 
and then two right Okay, there. okay. So well, yeah, try I it, accidentally drifted. We're in it. Frick, we're, man. Yeah, that's all right. We're good. Oh. Mm. Just got tagged, dude. A good hit tag? No, not sure. Okay. Sixty percent, or could right. have been something else. But worth follow up. Where you at? Straight down towards the bridge. Yep, just right there. And I was like, the best part is it was right where you would imagine one sitting. Yeah. The wind blowing right in on the point. There's bait pushing around it. Why you just? Sitting there waiting for something to swim by. Right in the ambush. Got him, big Got him. one. There you go. Yes, Try sir. It. Yes, sir. Oh, gosh. Oh, it's like a smallmouth, dude. Smashed it. Tell me if you need poles up I or anything. You, you just good. tell me. Good. What's he feel like? It feels heavy. It's <laughs> it good. feels heavier than a bass, I'll tell you that much. Going left. You tell me what you want. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, seven. All right. Seven pounder. I'm going to say pounder. six pounder. Six pounder. The six. Hey, that's two in the well, that's dude. All right. Two we're, in the we're well. We're calling him out. He might be five and a half. <laughs> Happy days. Yeah, mm -hmm. Two in the well. He's a little dude. Two good ones. Yeah. <clears throat> now you can breathe. Get out of it. Oh, sorry, bro. Y'all didn't, we need to teach Zaldane how to lip those got this net for a second. I could boat flip that one, Captain Ryan. Yeah, yeah he might need to be five pounds. Yeah, he's little. He's little. He's callable. You hear him croaking? Five pounds. Five pounder. It's all, all right. right, two in the well. All right, you gotta call that joker out of there. All the redfish guys watching at home. over to Marino and Favre. We saw them catch a good one earlier out of the school. Yeah. Favre on the left, Marino on the right. Gary's the one who caught that first keeper for them. But if you notice, Tommy, crazy how we drunk, fishing the wind on the it. side. Got it. Correct myself. That wasn't the keeper. It was just barely over. Oh, that's First correct. Caught. Yeah, that's yeah. correct. He's right here. He's, he's little, but he'll keep. There he comes. Like they love the bulldog underneath the boat. First one in the box. That's what we want. We'll start upgrading here shortly. You see where they got the guys yeah, are leaving the, the net and the uh, measure board out. And I'm so superstitious. I would always put the net away and the board away. I always felt like there was never a need for it if you had it out. I'd much rather get it out 20 times in one day and need it 20 times than to have it out and never get a bite. So it wasn't all superstition. It had some practical oh, use, right? It, you avoid a lot of trouble. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. You know, when I watch Brandon Paulnick fish, it's like watching a bird dog on a covey of quail. He just... He, to me, looks like... There we go. Oh my God. There we go. 
He's at the lure. His mind and his every, all his physical demeanor is what is that lure doing? He's not fishing from the boat. You know, it's amazing to see his intention. We got all day, brother. He is oh, so yeah. far out there. Yeah. 12 yeah. anglers all time to win two angler yeah. of the year. I stopped it to fix my shirt. Transition and to well redfish. Oh. oh my gosh. He just, <laughs> stay on there. <laughs> uh, that's what come we come on. for right now. Come on. Get in this boat and be 27 and three quarter inches long. Come on. Yeah, that's him. That's yeah, him. that's a good one. That's him, yeah. Making some headway. That's him right there. Here he comes, here he comes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just turn his head yep. this way. I will. Oh, stay out of that spoon right there. Turn his oh. I will. I get him. I get, get him. him. Get him in there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Look at that one going to keep. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes, Look sir. at how calm Goodwine yeah, we'll was netting that, that fish. We'll because that's what he does every day. 210 days a year, Mike Goodwine says yes. he, he guides there. You know, oh gosh, he just turn his head this way. You know what I mean? It's like coaching one of his clients. Good for him. Except like he said, this client this week knows how to cast better than him <laughs> and did <laughs> better than him. <laughs> and he said yeah. 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 And my good wine has some bad. He's fished uh, Bass Nation events. He's yeah, some bass fishing experience. He inspired to be a bass right guy now. and just couldn't put it together, so he's stayed home and he's not coming off fishing. There. You know. See if this one makes that oh slot gosh, limit. Got to be over coming? twenty under twenty eight. Like triple. It's a good down. size gonna fish. Close. Yeah, he's gonna be real close. Be close bro. Okay, please be <laughs> short. Please be a little short. Oh, he's gonna make it. He's gonna make it. Yes. Look, we don't even have to. Look at that. Yes. <laughs> Almost 20, just shy of 27. Yes. Okay. You. Yeah. That's what we needed. One more of those will be sitting pretty. Mmm. What's the saying? I don't know if they say it in redfish, but we say it in bass fishing. I mean, winners win. And right now, Brandon Polnick is, is feeling the mojo now oh, with their yeah. second one in the, in the well. Absolutely. Those guys are definitely in the conversation right up near the top. Just our Skeeter bird's eye view again. We're gonna get some fantastic pictures all week long. Kind of unlocks the, the secrets. What's on the bottom here? We see it better. Lots of big pothole areas with some grass and that is the perfect habitat for a redfish. Now you just gotta decide whether you wanna fish up against the shoreline, you're gonna stay out in the middle of the bay, are the fish tight, are they you know, located? We heard Kevin talk about fish floating, Tommy. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you know, what he meant by that was a fish that is suspended in the upper Pretty part good. of the water column, just basking in the sun. Man, He's not I dead, not He's alive. Deep laying up in the surface, maybe transitioning, waiting for something that's swimming by on the surface, which mullet often do, or just laying there in the sun appreciating a good day. Mm. <laughs> and that's kind of the best way to pre-fish. You don't have to hook them. You can see them and you know where they are. You can watch them and see where they go and, and know that they live in that area. Correct. What's your take on this, Rick, where in bass fishing, some guys say, hey, I caught, I caught a fish on Monday. Who'd you have a The odds of me catching them on Thursday in the tournament or Friday in the tournament, I, maybe a few days later, is our redfish similar? Could you go catch the same redfish the next day? Or is that fish gonna take a few days before it really, you know, bite, maybe bites for you in that school again? I don't know about the next day, but I have caught redfish like guiding that, that had hooks, like a jig where he broke off whoever hooked him. Yep and uh, that jig hadn't begun to rust, and I know that you ever been the coast? enzymes or the acid in the fish's uh, system will rust out a hook in a short period of time. So I would say that two days, three days, 
If you caught him early on the first day, two days, three days later, for sure you could catch him potentially. Looks like our guys here are going across this bay. Maybe they're positioning themselves to either fish uh, a, a lee shoreline instead of a windblown shoreline, or maybe they're going to hang a left or a right and then drift across the middle of that bay. Uh, they're setting themselves up to, you know, do another drift. I'm not quite sure, but for sure they are moving off of the shore and going across this, this pocket here. You know, and this time of year, those fish could be against the shoreline. It depends on where the bait is transitioning through there as it's swimming through. Or they could be out in the middle laying on the bottom in sand holes waiting for something to swim over the top of them. That is a boat above Wes Logan and Brent Roy. Brent Roy, the multi-species captain from Venice, Louisiana. And Wes Logan, the third year man, Bassmaster Elite Series. Let's go down the way, pick up again with Team Willis and Martin. Jonathan Willis and Scott Martin. They are on the board. Not a big one yet, Just said to. There might be a fish in this. Yeah, look down. Two swam by the boat. The Scott What a big fish. Want we'll to make a couple long casts back here behind us? <laughs> oh, Scott. Good. It's a better fish. You made a fish or not? Uh, not as big as he felt. He's doing the ocean way. Oh, yeah. Take your time. Take your time. Quit. All right, yeah, you should make 20. <laughs> Take this. You keep 20. fishing that cut. There's probably more yeah, in there. Yeah, yeah. Look at how pretty clear the water is where they're fishing. You can see the Appreciate you. grass transition. Appreciate and your contribution. The white sand. See the Ooh, mullet jumping in the background there, guys. We don't need to let him. It looks red fishy as it can out get the boat. to me, you know. Sweet. Nice work, dude. That's teamwork right there. That is. Put it down. How did you change the water? Got him on the quarter round spoon. Double hand grip, just for surety. Oh. Gotta be 22. Oh, right. There you go. Belly on the bottom. 20. A uh, 20, I'm sorry, excuse yeah. me. Close it down. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's bigger than the other one. Yep. Perfect. <laughs> bottom end of the keeper size, but it's a keeper. We get to hold our heads high today. Come in with a, a limit. In bass fishing, dude, in tournaments, it's all about, you know, little goals. Goal number one, get a limit. And we just did that. The under 20s are off limits, so they can protect like, the uh, sub adult population. Yet, you want the trolling motor up? Future. No. And, uh, oh my God, it's oh, big, here we go. big, big. Control motor is up. Okay. Stay on. Try to lead him to, the, to this way if you can. Get him away from that engine. Mm. Looks like a striper. Hammer. Dude. Absolute hammer. Looks like a striper. Oh, come on, dude, Chris. Stay on there. Come on, Chris. Stay on there. Come on, Chris. Oh, come on, baby. Oh my gosh. Woo. Come on, Chris. Get that head up. Oh. Uh. Stay on there, girl. Nah. Uh, uh, come on. Oh, come on. Come on. Get oh. that head up. Oh, come on. Sorry, sorry. Get sorry, this head up. Sorry. Yeah, boy, yeah, boy, yeah, boy. Yeah, boy. Yes. <laughs> oh. Crush City. Seven? That's a seven. He's at dude. least seven here. Take That's this. That's a seven pounder, dude. Barely hooked, bro. What do we got? Talk to me, Keith. Flat Talk board. to me, Captain. 
Jake, come here. Flat board, let's get a picture of this fish real quick. Yeah, hold, here, put this yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fold that out. Fold this out. Look at the chaos, dude. I love the chaos. Look at this. 20. Top seven. of the tail. Get the shot see of, how that, of that tail, tail right there for me. See seven. how the tail's see been. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. See this? Yeah, just see this little nick. Nip. Yep. It's not yeah, yeah. pointy. But that works to their allowed. advantage. Yep, we're good. That's huge. Inch to spare on the top end of the slot limit. And there's parasites that look at his fins. You can see his little seven pectoral fins. See how seven. they've been eaten up a little bit. They get them in Louisiana. See how they're torn. That's let's get that one in the That's the fish. luck of the draw. Hey, redfish. Can, can you catch that? one? Can you get the that? Tail's been here, horny take tail this fish and put it in the net. Yeah. Put it in the net. Hold it over. Bring me the net, please. They got a five pounder in there. They're going to be able to release. Let him in there and try to keep his head up. You can actually take him off the boga if you need to. I'm going to leave him on, dude. I don't don't trust me. Don't Tell me real quick, duty, Rick, Captain. why uh, they have a live well there with running water, but why is it so important to get them in the net, more comfortable in the water before you transport them into your live well? Well, they're culling the five pounder out, and so that's going to take a second. That's a big live well in that skeeter. So it's going to take a second for Ryan to get the five pounder out. They have an eight pounder already in there. So Keep while they're doing that, yep. yeah, if you put three in there, now you're there's three to deal with, you know, and it's hard at times, especially when you have all this emotion, to uh, pick out which one you're trying to grab, and they're all racing around in there. Well, look at our defending champions right there, a very impressive 15 pounds and four ounces on the board. Good line and pound right behind Aiken and Cook. We saw them with the biggest fish of the day we have seen put in a live well. So a lot of action. We're they're talking about not so many numbers. I think the numbers are great and yeah. the size is terrific. Be right back. Live coverage of the Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup is presented by Skeeter Boats. Get you right out. We have got tons of action today. We're taking you live out to the boat of Gary Marino and Bo Favre. Marino hooked up again. I told you, brother. I told you. We got two. Time to upgrade. Whoo, pressure's off. Remember their first fish, Tommy, was an oversized fish. He was 20. We got two in the box. We're walking yeah. across the stage. Disappointing, but now they got two. Your tongue hooked. Local favorite Kevin Aiken fishing with the 2019 Bassmaster Elite Series Rookie of the Year, Drew Cook. I love I love how there's a couple concentrated areas, Rick, where maybe two or three of our boats are, are fishing in, in that general region. And then you have two or three guys that are just way to the other stretches of this body of water and they're making it work. And everybody's catching similar weight, but just way different areas. Right. These guys got one real good fish, an eight, eight pounder. Trout or something. I don't know, dude, Drew. I he got me confused again. I'm over there by your line, by the way. This is a It's a red. Man, I'm fucking acting like a trout again. I'm there confusing. Oh. That's a red fish. Yeah, it is. I don't know why he's shaking his head so much. He's like that other one. I don't know how big he is. I ain't got eyes on him yet. Say what? You gotta be better than what I think he is. I'm, I'm, I'll wait till he gets cool, you know what I mean? I'm just gonna let him. He's decent. He's Not decent. Than number two we got in the box right now. Yeah. Three, two, one, come your way. That worked. I do not remember where we put that boga grip at. You gotta hang it up. I get on. Five pounder, but it's two. I'll let you look at it. You got better eyes than me. I don't remember what we do with that boga. It don't really matter at this point, anyways. Quarter ounce jig head. This is actually, I throw a lot of Berkeley Gold, but this is actually a down south lure. Guy here in Texas makes it. Get a little bait. Quarter ounce jig head, we're not throwing a leader right now. Just because we don't feel like we need to, we feel like we get around them, they're gonna eat. Fish number two. Ooh, straight up, like 501. 505. Five pounder. 
South right. Texas redfish number two. About 13 and a half pounds for two fish. That's not, that's just below the average everyone yeah. expected to be in contention though. With plenty of time, we, we're just two hours into our fishing day so far. We're, we're just wrapping up the first quarter of this, this football game today. So it's looking good, lots of action, lots of good big redfish. Boy, you can't beat what's going on right now. Dave Mercer has changed locations. Dave, you are, you are the beach com comer now. Explain where you are. Beach bunny. Yeah. I am at the spot that everybody comes to. I told you last segment, this part of the world, 3,500 people live here, but it balloons to over 100,000 people, and you don't have a hard reason, don't have a hard time figuring out why when you come to this beach. I mean, untapped and unbelievable. One of the cool things about this beach is you can still camp on this beach. I mean, spend the night overnight here but you can go for miles and miles mustang island and port aransas here miles and miles of untapped you know you go to a beach and you're so used to just it being bombarded with people not bombarded with people i mean you got miles and miles to stretch out and enjoy yourself people are riding everything around here i told you guys last segment they're they're in side by sides they're in golf carts I saw a dude just moments ago pass me on one of those one wheel things. There's surfers down here and a bunch of, I mean, life is a beach, guys. And, and this is why people come here. But the other thing that you can see behind me is the amount of surf coming in here. It is really, really windy. And what doesn't really show on one side of me, if I look to one side of me, big storm down there, another big storm down there. We're in the one clear little pocket. So our anglers may have to deal with some stuff, but really to be honest, guys, I'm not worried about our anglers right now. I'm going to build some sand castles and, and, and uh, man, live on the beach. I mean, life is good. This, this is kind of, I mean, this is the best way to end the season on the beach. Dave, is that hard pack sand or is that like that Florida sand that's like, like sugar or something like that? Well, well, I'll just show you right now. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm in a, you just date, that's kind of hard packed. Yeah, like almost like a snowball, Tommy. Almost like a snowball. Not with ice in it, but almost like a snowball. I want to throw this out at the lens so bad right now, <laughs> but I will not. I Don't. will fight those urges. The voices in my head are always telling me to do things. I will not throw it at the lens now, but on Sunday, our last day of footage, I might smear that lens. But yeah, it's kind of hard packed. Great sand to build a sand castle in. Great sand, of course, to to camp in and that's the other cool thing here you can actually drive this beach you travel all around the world there's very few beaches you can drive anymore but this is one of those beaches that you can drive and uh i will guarantee you one thing guys it, it is just day one it's early on a friday before this weekend's out we will find a party on this beach and we will be part of said party yeah, yeah. Uh, Captain Captain Rick here told us there's one segment of, of the, the island there, the Barrier Island, that you can drive for, what, 60 miles, Captain Seven, Rick? 70 miles from the Port Aransas ship channel all the way down to Port Mansfield. And the only way to get there is either f from the north, for where you are, Dave. It's incredible. It's incredible. And it, you know what? You can spend a lot of time traveling around the world and you're going to have a really hard time finding this. Jamaica, all the Caribbean places you go, you never see a beach that that just stretches this long and is this free. And, and um, I, I think I'm moving to Port Aransas, guys. I think, I mean, before this, I, I only ever saw Port Aransas on beachfront bargain hunt. But uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be a resident. I'm going to be a resident here. I, I got one word for you, Mercer. This is Murphy sunscreen, bud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I'm trying to get a base so I can go back to Canada, and, and it's a long winter, so I'll get a, I'll get a base, and uh, and when it, there goes a guy on a bike. Uh, People are cycling around here. I'm not going to do that. That looks. Hey, hi, how are you? Um, yeah, I'll get a base, and uh, and 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 we'll we'll just keep talking. I'll just keep moving the hole that makes the words. But thank good you, to Dave. See you, Rick. Thank good, you, good. Dave. Good stuff. Dave Mercer enjoying the beach life there and, and, and planning on a move, it sounds like, all the way down to the Texas Gulf Coast. Great to have Dave on board today. And uh, Man, I think based on what we were hearing from the anglers yesterday, I think the, the production is maybe outstripping the expectations. Maybe I'm wrong. You know what, Tommy? You're 100% oh, right. Mm -hmm. it was like it was following my bait. In all our interviews, guys felt like it was going to be a 14 and a half pound average and we got two or three shine, teams that are oh, yeah. and that was to win that was the, the top <clears throat> yeah. the top way yeah, people were the, thinking yeah.
you know, Porter Ranzis just doesn't disappoint. Let's go out to Eddie Adams, Sean O'Connell. Eddie Adams from Metairie, Louisiana. Sean O'Connell. Right across the lake here in Mandeville. Right across the mother of you. Actually, fine. Indiana team. Phone, fine. Actually, yeah. Maybe better. <laughs> <laughs> a little salt away. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Come on, get him. Uh, yeah, I got him. Uh oh, maybe. Red. Yep. Put the pole there. I am. Might be a big trail. I don't know. It's coming towards. There's got to be a red. He's staying down. Never came up. Little one. Don't know if he's going to even make it. Be the redfish. Oop, oop. Got him. Little guy. Yeah, I don't know if he's gonna be a keeper, but he's a redfish. Sorry. All right. You want to measure him? May as well. I'm gonna keep fishing. Yeah. Oh. Keep fishing. Yeah, you might get another bite right there. Let's see here. Got a little slant board. Belly to belly, man. Have him kind of hooked outside the face there. Definitely a bite of him. Yeah, no. Oh, oh, oh. 19 and a half. He might be to 20. The pitcher. He won't lay his dang head down. I think he's going to make it. He's on, yeah, he's over, but his, uh, He's over 20? Yep. 19, yeah. Yeah, he's over. There you go. I mean, barely. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll put him in there, though. He's a fish. It's a cold fish. Hopefully, he won't stay there long, but we'll give him a shot. Adams and O'Connell now on the board. Look at how the difference in the weather Depending on where the guys are, it's cloudy. Well, where I before, but I always wonder, like, I wonder Kennedy and wet. Cincinnati know, right? are, and then you got Zaldane and Rickard. They got the beautiful, time, clear yeah. skies. Wow. Willis and Martin, they're not very <laughs> far from Zaldane and Rickard. And then Goodwine and Paul. Guns out, guns out, boy. Guns out, guns out, that's right, boy. I'm going to turn us, Chris, because we're a little off of our line, and we're just going to flip the boat, all right? Okay. I don't remember, but I think right. Rickard and Zaldane have about the same weight they had last year on day one, if I'm not mistaken. I don't remember. Somewhere around there. Because mm -hmm. they were in third, if, I'm, if I remember right, after I think after they were third the one. first two days. Yeah. yeah. I think Menendez and, and, and his and, partner, uh, Ricky, took, yeah, took the big lead yeah. early because they were, they were doing something way different than everyone else. They made they made a long yeah. hour hour long run as well. Yeah, I'll look up those results, Rick. Yeah, they were your day one leaders, Board and Menendez. Grant Taylor, Copeland Moore. Yeah, right. Only one of our teams not yet on the board, but they can change that very very quickly. You want to put the poles down? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a start. Not the right size, but right species. Lift the power poles. You want them up? Yep. All right. Up again. Mm. 
Lift it. Lift it. Ho, ho, ho. Uh. All right. Oh my God, the fish is still on there. Sorry about that. So Tommy, 20. they got lucky there. Remember this about a fishing line. Yeah, it just got around on the back of me real quick and he slid right in the boat. So I had to do a little loose drag and get him out. Pretty sure he's good, but all right, 22. When the line's not tight, it Start. won't break. So if you're snook fishing or you're fishing under docks and the line, a fish goes around a dock pylon, if you're not making it tight, it won't break. He went to a loose drag after he got hung on the power pole and it didn't break the fish off. If you pull back and try to horse the fish around that, there's barnacles, there's wood, there's, in the case of the spike, there's little nicks in that spike from oyster bars and whatnot. The line probably got hung on that, but because he loosened the drag, it didn't break. It's a great, good trick to remember uh, in every fish. Three and three quarters pounds. So now we got all 10 teams on the board. That's good. Perfect. Perfect release. Man, I'm talking, he came out of nowhere. But that's actually good, so I think it's one of the first trout we've caught on top water here. Second one today. I mean, oh, oh, that's right. But I mean, first one that had it was bigger than 12 inches. That might have been the first keeper we've caught. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think we caught any trout here the other day when we were fishing. Uh, I don't think so either. But you see how he came out of nowhere and just crushed it. Day four yesterday. Yeah, two days ago. You know, I don't know how Zal Dane's doing. Oh, you're out there a little. In the bass right tours right now, but Rickard just solidified winning the 2022 Team of the Year for That's right. the yeah. Pro Redfish Pro League. Redfish League. Well, Zaldane had a fantastic year, Tommy. We obviously, he didn't get a, a win this season, but he had a great season. He was ninth in angler of the year 10. race, so he was in the yeah. top 10 of out, of out of almost 100 anglers. So the confidence amongst those two right now, going into the event, is probably at a pretty good high. Yeah. And now... He's qualified for his eighth classic this year, so that's great. After yep. 12 years as a pro angler, that's a good, that's a good number. Yeah, I'd say. Boy, that looks so redfishy to me with white holes, transitions, shell along some of that shore. And got the grass. The fish doesn't have to do much, Tommy, to adjust to going either a little deeper or a little shallower as the tide or the wind blows more mm -hmm. water in or takes it away. That is the redfish habitat right there. Broken bottom. What a shot. Beautiful. All you saltwater guys get excited by big sand holes out in the middle of vegetation. I've noticed through the years. We do. I mean, it's just, that's because everybody lives there. They can lay, you know, think about this, that sand is just a click deeper than the grass. So that fish can lay in the bottom of that hole and ambush things as it comes over the top and be kind of disguised. It's like laying in the tunnel back in the wars, you know, the fox hole, yeah, so yeah, to speak, right. you know? Of course, these redfish, they don't have lay downs and stumps to, to hide behind. That's, 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 their, that's their structure, I guess. Absolutely. And by the most part, I believe a redfish loves to lay just like a trout, which is what these guys are catching, they like an area 
and then they'll like to lay in that hole and wait for something to swim over it uh, bait fish wise and then also the sand they're looking for blue crabs and they're looking for shrimp in there and all the different things that could potentially bury in the sand and they don't have to go very far obviously to get something that's in the grass what are the shrimp and the mullet doing this time of year typically well the mullet are certainly posted up along those shores you know swimming north and south uh, and then the shrimp, they have their big shrimp runs uh, in the s late summer and fall now. So I would think as the water temperatures cool, then they're gonna actually, uh, to a certain degree, they're gonna have even more shrimp in the system. Mm. And then once it gets super, super cold, I'm not sure what the shrimp do at that point. I can tell you in Florida and other Gulf uh, states that's when we have the big shrimp hatches is be our winter time when we have cooler water mm -hmm. the mullet migrate through the area in the fall in the in the in the spring and then everything transitions from a bait fish pattern to a crustacean pattern yeah. make a move again here back to Adams and O'Connell Looks like the team that's furthest to the south. You ever say, you see make two or three drifts in the same spot, you get your ass over there. Yeah. As you can tell, trolling motor up, they're using the wind to do their drift. That's right. Yep. Yeah. That's a good one. That's the real thing. Come on, baby. See, like a little better one? Yep. Hopefully, you'll measure. He's pretty big. That bullet. You don't measure. You gotta stay positive. He's big. Just keep your reel on your uh, rod. Yeah. Big donkey Kong. Over. Come on. Yeah. yeah. He measured we, we'd be going home. That's right. Big Texas redfish. Yep. Well, Eddie, he doesn't play. He's got that drag locked down. Yeah. Set him down. Okay. Hold him up in the head. He's jumping like crazy. I think a little bit more than we need, but it would be nice. It's a hefty one there. It's fish. certainly fat enough. It's just a matter of whether he's going to be inside the slot. I notice his tail Fucking is square and not so. too pointy. That could be work to his benefit. He's gonna be about an inch more than we need, I think. If I could ever get him a hook. Big heavy fish though. Yeah, he's real heavy. Throwing a jig head with a plastic of some sort. We throw him on the edges for it. Giggles, but he's gonna be a little long. 29 and a half. 29 and a half? Mm -hmm. Oop. There he goes. I think I wish he was about an inch, inch, inch and a half shorter. He looks like a shark swimming away, he's so big. He's big, yeah. Uh, big red. <laughs> Worst things to be doing than catching big redfish, man. But uh, yeah, I mean, the two I seen with my eyes a little while ago were both both keepers, and I mean, it's two big ones on this drift, and a couple of keepers we've seen, that one little one, so I think we get a little more in the right area here. We're gonna, we're gonna beat this little line up as much as we can, see if we can't put a couple more fish boat. Just a numbers deal, you know? I mean, you blind cast, and it's just, can't make up with their mind what bites your line, but we're gonna keep on chunking. I love the way the Cajuns talk, Come, it's so uh -oh. contagious. No. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a distinct uh, dialect. You sometimes need subtitles, but uh, you know, it's fun to listen to. Aiken and Cook making a move. <clears throat> that 
that overcast, I guess, just didn't allow him to see his floaters. Yeah. Back to Zalzane. So what Rick we got going on here is we're just trying to make these long drifts, getting way up current of the way, way up current, way up wind. Make these long drifts. We've stuck, I think, four or five. Have we stuck four or five? Four fish. Four fish. Four yeah. fish. And uh, we're really just trying to target these big grass flats with just potholes, just like last year. Um, there's not as much bait around, but but they, there is bait around, and this has been the area where we've really found the most bait in our practice. So, the good part about that for us is is that the, the quality of the fish are so much thicker here uh, versus some of the other areas. But uh, the wind's starting to pick up a little bit uh, as well, which is going to be fine for us because we got reprieve where we're sitting, and uh, we really we we we've had two calls. So well, no, we've had one call so far, and you know we're. We're sitting more weight on day one this year than we were last year. And our, our goal going into today was, 14. I mean, 14 plus pounds. Yeah. And we're, we're a pound above that. So, I mean, feeling really, really good about where we're sitting this early in the morning. I mean, we get one good call and it's, it's going to be an unbelievable day. So the big thing is yeah, we're picking up where we left off last year. I mean, last year was just a, it's just an epic day. Panda, pan, just everywhere you look, it was just, just big redfish busting on bait. Uh, and like I said in practice, we came through here, he caught a nine and a quarter. We're like, all right, we're out. Let's we'll get out of here and we will figure things out, you know, on tournament day. So that's what the, we're doing right now. We went through the area where he caught the nine and a quarter. We drifted into a spot where I just culled a fish, a brand new spot, brand new little, little small little spot. And we're just expanding on what we already know. So uh, not only from last year, but from what we learned in practice here. Like I said, whether it's bass, a bass tournament or redfish tournament, the fish aren't always in the exact same spot. They're going to be around it. It's just up to you to kind of, you know, use the wind and 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 the conditions to your advantage to make those decisions. So, you know, we haven't even we haven't even ventured off just 100 yards this way, and there could be a mother goat over Absolutely. there. Absolutely. So we're just going to figure it out as we go, but we're able to do it comfortably with what 15 pounds in the live well. Yeah. It's so important too with your boat positioning. Like you, you have to be positioned correctly to be able to really successfully catch these fish. I mean, if you don't have your boat set up right, yep. you are not going to catch them yep. because you might be trying to cast up wind or casting sideways where you have a loop in your line, and when they hit you, you've got so much slack you can't catch up. Or, or worse, you're on the trolling motor or, stirring yeah, things up. Yeah, I mean, you you don't want to use the trolling motor here. If you at all costs, you you want to avoid. You know, there these redfish are so aware of their surroundings. And a lot of these trolling motors will have, as soon as you turn them on or off, there's these beeps. And that beep underwater will go a long way. And they just get very aware of what's going on. And they know that's not natural. So I know a lot of the bass viewers are like, I know nothing about red fishing. Like, if, if nothing else this week, as you tune in to Bassmaster.com and FS1, if nothing else, like, pay attention to the, the, the boat positioning. And you could apply that to your bass fishing game. We're positioned up when we're being really quiet and stealthy. If we need to go across that way, then we're just going to drift there. We're not going to use our trolling motor. We won't even have a trolling motor in the water. But it's so important to be really stealthy. So use that when you're on those fall flats, when you're bass fishing this fall. Good stuff from our defending champions. Let's get over here to our two qualifiers for the 2022 Redfish World Series. Tampa area, Graham Taylor, Copeland Moore. together for about three years now. <clears throat> Looks like they're repositioning the boat like Rickard and Zaldane were talking. They're going to try to go get upwind of some place and then drift back down to it. The other thing that's so important when you're fishing downwind like this is that you have the ability to throw so much further. Oh yeah, yeah with the Think combination of braided line. 
versus trying to throw into the wind. Copeland loves to throw sight cast with spoons and throw spin, swim baits, vibrating lures. It looks like that's what he was doing there, just a steady retrieve. And the cool part about that is when you get the bite, your line is already tight. Oh, yeah, ready. So, Great fish, buddy. Measures all day. That's a big one. Get it deep. One small one in the live well already for this team. That's, That's going to be a, a better one. Glad he wasn't tongue hooked. Nah, he's better than six and a half. That's a seven pounder. All day, baby. Seven pounds. Oh, oh good. It's in the back. Good news, boys. Mm -hmm. Good news. It's one part of the puzzle, guys. That's Wait, one. Air guitar with this. <laughs> Taylor and Moore looking a lot better right now. Hooked up live. Let's get right to it. Yeah. Good one. Don't get me all excited like that. Oh. Ah, Johnny Flatbread. <laughs> That's a big fatty, man. I'm just going to step back and let him do his thing real quick. Flats the flounder. Why are you going to do me like this, buddy? He's, that's typical Mike. He's going to catch Brandon's dinner for him. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could show up at the house with that in my possession tonight. Yeah, man. Well, you stuff that with some crab meat. Oh, guess what? That's that lucky day, that flounder. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's what it stands, uh, the way it stands right now, unofficially, as per Bass Track. Richard and Sal Dane on top. Aiken and Cook in second place. Bear in mind, though, Aiken and Cook have a, an eight pound four ouncer. In the thing. So they've got a lot of uh, room possible growth, sure, growth yeah. room in there. Oh, five pounder more. being their second one. So yeah, if they catch another seven, they're right there with Rickard and Zada. Absolutely. Could get very, very tight here. Plenty more fishing on the way. We're not even halfway done with this day so far. The Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup at Port Arnassas, Texas is sponsored by Humminbird. Yamaha and by TH Marine. Redfish Cup Action 2022. Let's get back out live on the water. All of our 10 teams have keepers in the live well. Two fish is your limit here. You want the biggest two fish under 28 inches in length that you can catch today. To Jonathan Willis, there fishing with Scott Martin. There he is. There he is. Good one? I don't know. Waking up. Throw out there. See if you can get another come in, one. Come in, come in. I don't know if he'll help or not, dude. But it's a fish. I don't think he's giant, but he's kind of coming at me. A good fish that's going to outweigh one of the other ones. Maybe, yeah, probably. Here you lose him. There's a lot in here, dude. That's exactly. I was talking to Rick Murphy the other night, telling him, I was like, man, Rick, they're redfish, buddy. They're not black drum. I said, we saw a bunch of fish tailing. He's like, sure they were. <laughs> black drum? And I'm like, bro, don't say that, man. Don't tell me they're black drum. Those are pumpkins, man. We just need big ones, though. The ones gonna be the real two close. that swam by, the two that swam by were way bigger Let's than this. Let's let it settle real quick, and we got to get the weigh in these now. Because that's going to be very close to these. Well, let's see if it's. 
think that's gonna be like a 22 right there. We're creeping. He's, yeah, he's definitely bigger than the first one. The first one was like 20 and a half. It's the same as the second one, yep. yep. Yeah, so, so we just need to... Right there. Not a big fish, guys, but you can only do what you can do. But there, the one that went by, that was, uh, that was the one we need. You know, he's got a house. Scott has a house down in Isla Mirada in the Florida Keys. God, he's a fishiest guy. Oh, you know, he goes and catches lots of big mahis. Oh, no. Upgrade. Upgrade. Sailfish. You know, Willis is lucky to have him as a partner because he'll help him, you know, dissect everything. Mm. Zero. Right, Taylor hooked up here. Taylor and Moore just caught a good keeper. Themselves. Right in the middle of it. So these guys qualified through the Power Pole series. Mm, I don't know if he's an upgrade. The Florida Pro Power he's Pole. Choked it. On the Power Pole West, I guess they would be, right? Yes. There's a West and an East, and or maybe they take the first place and the second place team. I'm not quite sure. But in either case, these guys, uh, it's first year doing the Cup and. I'm gonna tell you, Tommy, it's hard to drop into a place that you've never fished before and and be on the right size fish, but, but I would imagine they'll adapt throughout bites. the three days and they'll find the right size fish. And Anytime you tone hook it. one, he's not the one you ever wanna put in your well. Fish are very, very prone to dying if they're hooked in the tone. So the best thing to do Great is one, dude. Great oh fish. my gosh, that's a big that's one. That one wasn't gonna... <laughs> oh my god. Chola motor? Yes, sir. Swimming at me 90 miles an hour, bro. Uh, he's not that great, not Chris. That I think he's probably six pounds. You keep fishing, I'll deal with this. So their second fish that they yeah. got there is a seven and a quarter, water, Tommy. He did, yeah. he did. He actually hit like so he was something. Will it be interesting to see? These two guys in their interviews said no, that they thought did. it would take 14 and a half. Definitely. At what point do you stop trying to pound class. upgrade and go find other areas or explore? How do you duplicate certain things with this wind knowing tomorrow is different? Do you go pre-fish? Because I mean, today, 15 and a half pounds is gonna be, oh, yeah. it's gonna be hard to upgrade without burning a lot of fish. Great point. And the other thing is, with them having 15 pounds in the well, good. if it was me, I'd be pre-fishing for tomorrow. Because, as they say, you can never win it on the first day, but you can certainly lose it. Yeah. And if he burns through all well, of his fish, the fish that he needs tomorrow, still eating. Yeah, that six pounder he just let go, yeah. He may need tomorrow. Yeah, and there, to go with an eight. Shreds. These guys all had three days of practice, and if you can turn your three days into practice into three snapped. and a half with a with half of today, that could give you an edge for Sunday to, or Saturday, depending. Right. Again, the advantage these guys have is they're not trying to get to know each other, <laughs> and they're not trying to get to know this place. This is the same place they fished last year and one with it. I think it'd probably be safe to say, sitting up here in the studio at Little Rock, that if the tournament is there next year, or yeah. in three years, yeah. that was, that was they won't day. be the only oh, ones at that Where spot. Where you at? I'm following <laughs> up. Um, <laughs> they not be the only ones at that yeah, spot tomorrow. I mean, <laughs> exactly. I thought you were gonna say it's easy to armchair quarterback at the desk, and I was like, that's why we love being here. We get to we get to call it and how we see it. Yeah. Even though it is different out on the water, it's hard to simulate tomorrow's water conditions. You can maybe get, say, hey, this is protected from tomorrow's wind, but level, clarity, all that changes. Yeah. And so far, I've hooked up here. And I'd be to, to I tell you. I went to pop that court and you about yanked the pole out my hand. 
I'm glad it's him and not me, because this, that wind and weather, I would not be a happy no guy. Cork, the thing I hate to fish with most, <laughs> well, it works. It works. It's effective. <laughs> it works. A lot of money's been won with a popping cork. I don't know if he's gonna call anything, no. He, I thought he was bigger than that. Nah. 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 It's all right, that's a fish. That ain't gonna work. We know they in here, though. I decided to swap to the popping cork. Got a full horseman cork. Berkeley Gulf shrunk about a 10 inches under it. Try to call them fish through it. The water is nasty out here right now. You know, if we just reel a swim weight, swim bait, five or six fish from a uh, foot from the fish, they're not going to see it. But you can call them to you with that cork. Let him go. Go get another one. Again, this caught one just well, over this morning. It was a giant. Yeah, yep. <laughs> would not keep a little too big. For sure. I think the wind's freshening a little bit out there, Rick. Do you get that impression? For sure, it is, and certainly it is picked up. It's forecast to really be blowing this mm -hmm. afternoon by three o'clock. I heard the the forties. Yes called out at one point, so I hope we don't get there. Yeah, I'm hoping for the boys that it stays in mid-20s, because that's not very more, very much more than what they got yeah. most of the time. I think you might have told me it's the 11th highest wind city in the U.S., I think, or something Corpus like Christi, yeah. yeah. I, Corpus Christi's been ranked up in the top five before. So <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, yeah, it's a windy place. It's always blowing here. Yes, sir. That is a good one. Be under. I got that. I got that. That is a good fish. That's what more like what we're looking for. Oh, yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, yes. Barney White and Dwayne Mills here. Oh, good yeah. Good prospect there. No, come on, come on, don't do that. Look, they got sun, guys. Yeah. It seems like the boys that are in the sun have got some pretty good bites going, going on. <laughs> I like it, I like it. That's my bud. Well, that's a big one. Hey, look at this. Give me some. <laughs> I, gonna make I don't it. even want to know. Just put him in the well. It don't matter, does nope, it don't matter. It don't matter. It don't matter. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> yes, sir. You do? I do. Eight and a quarter. Oh, boy. Nice. Look at the attitude, Tommy. I've said it a lot last year. I'm going to say it a lot in the next three days. When you get a good fish or you get That's two the in the well, your week. confidence level <laughs> no just lies. Goes, goes up. I caught him on a fish bites butt kicker. Haymaker color with a popping cork. Yeah, our leastest favoritest way to catch them, but it is the our most leastest. effective right now for us, so we're doing it. Is that a redfish Ooh, term? Or I a, like it. Uh, it is I now. I like it a lot. That might be a Dwayne term. Right? <laughs> you know, Dwayne Mills. I can do it. From the state of Louisiana, Barney White is partner from Alabama. Only Alabama angler. Well, one of two Alabama anglers we have in the field here today. So what we've seen, guys, in the last two teams, they have caught, they've converted over to noise-making corks with scented plastic. Um, you know, Dwayne's using a, a fish bite that dissolves and creates a, a instant potato type of smell is the way I refer to it, Ronnie. And then the other guys were using a gulp shrimp, which was um, farve. Mm. So, uh, you know, maybe this cork yes. thing is going to produce some noise that it's supposed to, but 
It's gonna take the place uh -oh, coming of life. the guys that are trying to top water. Turn into something big. That's a big very, game. very effective way. What are we gonna do to slow oh, these two oh down? Boy. You good with the troll motor? You want me to get it up? I'm good. Okay. Let's just hope they're not going uh -oh. through all their fish. No, he's a little. Is he? Yeah, he's a little. Is he just foul hooked? Yeah, he's a little. He's rolled on it. No, he's not foul hooked either. I don't think No, he's, he's not he's foul not hooked. Big. It's in his mouth. I can see it. I think he might be better than you Dude, think he they is. Pull so hard. He better he th he's better than you think he nah, is. Nah, he's a little. He's little. <laughs> nah, he is a little. I'm gonna let you handle this yes, and go sir. back to it. Wah, wah, wah. I got to test out my new spinning reel. <laughs> hey, that's good. Hey, at this point, they need to catch the biggest or the smallest in their area. They don't need to catch any of the mid size because right. those are need those help? are just getting burned for no reason. But weed out all those non keepers or the 21 inchers and, and look for the 27 and three quarters like Polinick was trying to earlier. Right. I'd reel them as fast as I could. I was hoping that one that went off that way maybe. Would eat you when you're coming in? Maybe. Adams and O'Connell. That might be real. That's a real fish, I think. These guys have a lot of wins. 35 yeah. wins. You know, between the two of them. Huh? And uh, a lot of top fives. Yeah, it's a good fish, eh? That's a good one. Huh? That's a good one. And as you can see, their trolling motor is so. in a position. I don't think he's giant, which giant. means they've good. been doing the drift. They're allowing the wind this be, this be good fish. to uh, push them along the flats. Good, good and open. Not as big as yours. Maybe. A little small. Come, Maybe. On, Mom, Come on. Give us something. I think board. that's going to make it, buddy. Get your board. What you got? Your board. Your board. I got you. You want me close? So they had one a minute ago that was too big. You can see the Texas colors laying there on the floor. With everything in Texas has a chartreuse tail, it seems like. Yeah. Some kind of colored tail. Some of the boys are dipping uh, their favorite plastic in white now. Oh, really? Yeah, I saw some red and whites this summer in August. good for one or two. As well as black and white. Seven and a half. White tail black body. Eight pounder. Oh, what? Get out of here. Eight pounder. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. That's a that's an important one. A yeah, little man. pound of luck right there. I don't count for many, but I catch the big ones. You can ask him later. I guess I can't talk about the black shot truth no more. Nah, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I'll take it. One bite away now, man. Good fish. Yeah, short too, man. Indeed. Good, good weight. Big head. Come you on. think they had those here, huh? Come on, baby. Show. Brought me back to Louisiana right there. Yeah, that's, that one, I think he made make pounds. Louisiana. It'd pitch him real hard. Huh? That's the first eight show. pounder we've caught the entire trip, so right time to catch it. Caught a seven three quarter. A little down south action. Nice and healthy. <sighs> All right, Needed that one, baby. Needed that one. Two so you see that black and chartreuse, boys, they call uh, that the Cockaho oh, Minna. Yeah. Okay. In Louisiana. <laughs> Definitely. That's we'll the color that they call it. Yeah. And everything, it didn't matter who the brand like makes it. If it's black and chartreuse. I'll take it, brother. It's called the cock. Even far between. Yeah, that's right. a good and then they make a that's purple and chartreuse, right which is an LSU those. color, of course. You can sit back yeah. and know that at least. <laughs> that, that's some years it's better than other years. <laughs> yeah. It sells best in the fall. It's a lot of work, man. A lot of work for that one fish. Right there on the mark. Get over first over. Ronnie, and Keep again, in, so what that you can't right say there, it enough. The pattern we found when we they were get two in the well. It, you know, Listen how happy true. they are. Oh, yeah. The yeah, boat yeah, now, every everybody's like breathing. Water, They'll relax. Them, so. Hopefully it gets on. You know, a, friend, a good friend that's the man around him, Mr. Kevin, he said he said that southeast wind will make these fish turn on, too. So maybe it'll we, maybe we'll start turning to a slam set. So should be really nice. Let's make it happen. Come my on, baby. My man, Eddie, probably get into the bucket of chicken or something. He'll be super happy. Good one. 
Yeah. So the deal with it is, you know, we see in bass fishing, each fish gets the guy a little more talkative. They get their five mm -hmm. fish, now they're on a mission to catch a big one. When you catch an awesome. eight pound redfish like this and you only have a two fish limit, you have that. half of energy. your goal for the yeah. day done. It's going. Yes. The rest of your day, if you catch it in the first you know, hour, you have boat, seven hours day, of your this, day this for one good bite. Right <laughs> yeah, they're fishing <laughs> for one ball, bite now. Yeah, the other boat was on the other marks. We missed the other marks. We were inside. We'll hit them two before it's over. And we'll hit 18, 18 marks over It's going to look like spaghetti when we get done with this thing. <laughs> Listen how they just are so happy Kevin. now. Kevin's doing it. I can feel, feel that. You know, you know? He's running that deep trough all we have. Yeah, yeah. So they told us yesterday, fish. being Louisiana anglers, they're going to have to make themselves do the drift there. They get back home and they, they, oh, they yeah. use that trolling motor mm -hmm. to get through all these mazes up there and everything, Calcasieu and yeah, yeah. Venice. But uh, yeah, big they're head. doing it and they're, they're sticking to the plan and it's working. I yeah. think they said the only thing that gets Louisiana and Cajun anglers talking more is either when they're catching fish or when they smell a fresh pot of gumbo. It's one of those two will get them really excited <laughs> and talkative. So I think yeah. it, we're on the fish one right now. Gumbo is probably later. Yes. Beating Ole Miss gets them pretty fired up, too. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, Adams, you know, one thing he said is that he typically in Louisiana loves fishing in ponds. His favorite thing to do is to sight fish with a soft plastic and pitching it to a redfish swimming in shallow ponds. So this open water game for him is probably, I'm not saying that he doesn't do it. I'm sure he does as a guide because they have those big bruiser redfish that get off of the coast down there this time of year following those big pogey schools. But I would say, you know, for him, uh, being out in the open water, <clears throat> he's having to really redirect himself and stay focused. And it uh, looks like the two of them are having a good time. Now they got an eight and a quarter pounder in the well. They're, again, like you just said, they're fishing for one bite now. One big bite. It'd be 18, 18. 18 to 18 is where you put another seven and three quarters. Yeah, yeah. That's a good one. Oh, boy, catch him up. I got you. Another redfish on. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm talking crap in my black shirt, so I'll be putting the gold one on here. <laughs> Don't take me long to learn. Another good fish, Eddie. Huh? Another good one. Definitely a cold fish. <laughs> <laughs> it do don't is, take much. It's a good one. It looks like another eight pounds. Good yeah. fish. I got to do some better. Big one, dude. Good one. Not big, take one. big enough. Big enough. That's going to replace their three pounder, yep. Tommy. That, that should you do it. Huh? He's fat, man. He's fat. Yeah, yeah. This is a good fish over 20 inches. He's going to get where on one of us. Give us a, another pound, probably a five pounder. And, and you got to think that if they have an eight and they catch a five or a six, it may not have them in the lead, but they're going to be close. And like we said on no Sunday, if you have a pound deficit, that's very, very doable. Oh, yeah. Very, very doable. Five and three quarter. Yeah, you have now they're almost 14 pounds. And let's remember last year and this year in pre fishing, there was some nine pounders caught. So, you know, that's that 300 yard drive. That's the. Hail Mary, yeah, you know, when you get that nine pounder, now you've superseded. Deal with the elements and get yourself in the neighborhood of the right size fish. That's what the imperative has been for all of these teams today, and we've seen a lot of them do, do some good things along those lines, that's for sure. <clears throat> White and Mills, good one early on today. We got teams from all over the country. We've got Florida, Louisiana, Texas, all relay, all all in this event, as well as guys who've never fished together. You have Bassmaster Pros. There's a huge for the 20 anglers competing this week. We have a great variety of teamwork, background, location, and skill set that are all going to have to come into play this week. Mississippi and Alabama. Yeah, that's right, Mississippi and Alabama. Reno. Barf. Lost a good one. Well, didn't lose one. Had one oversized, but just barely early on today. Would have been a giant for their live well. But they've been we got two. charging, not charging back, but chipping away at it. Yeah, exactly. They're also getting to know each other as teammates as well. And one of them just fishing redfish for the first few years of his life lately. And 
And like you said, this team, Adams and O'Connell, was it 35 wins together? That is some unprecedented teamwork. Yeah. And we have the hottest hand right at this moment. Hey, Trey Fish, I think you'll make on it. On our fishery. Get out of here. Eight pounds. Making a lot of progress. A lot of progress as we head toward the mid, mid part of the day. Seems like they're catching eight pounders like giving out lunch cards at elementary school. <laughs> Brandon Polony, leading angler of the year from the Bassmaster Elite Series. Good one there. There we go. Yeah. We on the board. Fish right there. Polonic a good one. Like Sitting it. in fifth place as it stands right now. Certainly in touch with the leaders. Hometown favorite. Not decent. Kevin Aiken fishing with Drew Cook. Three, two, one, coming your way. That works. I do not remember. My biggest thing is there. seeing where these guys are positioned. Some went way north to take advantage of more water on that north end. For with, with the wind switches, especially for these guys, will it affect their area tomorrow level-wise and, and maybe the fishing as well? Did these guys come ready to defend. They came ready to defend Rickard and Zaldane. Tremendous. Tremendous effort today in 15 plus in the live well. You couldn't ask for a better situation than that. Day one, halfway through. Giant fish bulldogging Chris Aldane there for sure. Oh, what a day it's been. There's a look at our unofficial standings right now. 15 4 for Rickard and Zaldane. Aiken and Cook with 13 4, tied with White and Mills and Adams and O'Connell. Very tight. Right under our leaders right there. Anyone could catch any one of those three teams could catch one fish and change that in a second's time. The rest of these teams only got some uh, work to do, a little bit of a mountain to climb, but they've got plenty of time to get it done. And we see right now that there are plenty of big ones available to be caught. We're going to step away for about an hour here in our coverage, but we'll be back at 12 Eastern time for three more hours of this Redfish Cup action from Port Aransas, Texas. Live coverage of the Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup is presented by Skeeter Boats. Ah, we're having a great time today. Switching over to Redfish here, the second go around for the Redfish Cup. The Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup coming to you from the Gulf Coast of Texas, the fishing capital of Texas, Port Aransas. What a place. I mean, we were talking about conditions possibly being difficult today, but you wouldn't know it from all the fish catching that we saw all day long. Let's go out to this team right now. Barney White and Dwayne Mills. Barney White, Alabama. Dwayne Mills from Texas. Excuse me, Louisiana. With the popping cork. Yeah, man, the popping cork. It is a good matter. It don't matter. Always a true and tried, matter. effective way to create some noise. Ooh but also not be on the surface because of the way that jig works a few, you know, 12 inches or so below that cork. That cork calls him up and every time you pop it, that jig pops up in his face. It's just a reaction bite that really works well in the redfish arena. We saw last year a popping cork come into play, but it was to suspend a bait, so it wasn't sitting there on the bottom in the, in the sand and the silt. It was an effective way to catch those fish that were swimming around those marshes. But for these guys, it was an effective way to attract them in the wind and the waves. And then we go over to some guys who are kind of in the in the meat of the wind today, but they're doing what they did last year. You know, they are really doing quite well. And what I'm worried about for these guys is that they're burning through their fish. Well, this is a three-day event. And the one thing you got to do is you got to manage your fish. And at the end of the so far, as of right now, when we took our little break here, these guys were in the lead and they've caught several fish. They got 15 and a half pounds in the well. Man, you need to go pre-fishing for tomorrow and the next day. Yeah. That team being Rickard and Zaldane, our defending champions from 2021, ahead of schedule, ahead of that torrid schedule they put down last year. Yes. You know, they said in their interviews, the media day interviews, that they felt that 14 and a half pounds a day would do it. And they're a pound of head of that. 
and they're in second place. So they're they're above where they think they should be to win the event, and they're not even in the lead of this event right now, Tommy, because the catching this morning been an uptick than what people thought. Eight pounders, oh, absolutely. very prevalent this morning in scene. Yes, absolutely, and the team taking advantage and, and, and just continuing to add, to pile on. Eddie Adams, Sean O'Connell, the team from Louisiana, from the New Orleans area, really going to town after a sort of a slow start. It's not a strange place for these guys to be on top, though. Tommy, you know, the two guys combined have over 35 wins and probably somewhere close to 100 top fives. Uh, very, very seasoned, well-oiled uh, redfish team. And uh, they and have the a little Texas redfish trail is what they fish. Exactly. Wow. So there is your unofficial standings right there. Adams and O'Connell on top with 16 pounds and four ounces. That is an eye popper right there. Rickard and Zaldane for all the great, great uh, heroics they pulled off during the morning. They're only in second place right now and a pound behind. White and Mills see them just ahead of Aiken and Cook. That team has an eight pound and a quarter. Uh, Aiken and Cook in the, in the live well too, so they can jump up at any time. Obviously, seeing some of these guys cull up to 16 pounds, 15 pounds, that's a lot harder at times than to get 10 pounds. But we see Taylor and Moore there. They were the last people to catch a fish. They have a 10 pound limit now, and they're up in the middle of the pack. Meanwhile, we see Cincy and Kennedy, guys who were here last year, first keeper of the day, it seemed, for any of these teams, still stuck on that one. So these ebbs and flows, the momentum's going to come for some teams. They get a patch of sun in their area, maybe a little less wind, and it can change dramatically. Form, Rick. And you're 100% right, Ronnie. It seems like when the guys have gotten a little sun, a little bluebird, I think those redfish have been able to see the baits that are swimming by them, whether their guys are fishing with a chatterbait or a spoon. You know, certainly the light is going to help reflect those baits as they go over those sand holes where a lot of these guys are fishing a combination of shorelines and sand holes. My good wine hooked up here. Teamed oh, up with Brandon Colney. <laughs> That's probably not going to make the this cut. This is the second one in this, this little pocket right here. The one I got before this. Well, all of our bites have came from right here. Right here. It's been 75 yard stretch, 100 yard stretch. You know, you can't, when you're blind fishing like this, guys, you can't control the size of the fish that bites your bait. It, you know, it's, it's just part of the game. She's not here in this open, too. But, Out as in you, the open? Yeah. you yeah, that's hear where Paul mine were. and Goodwine talking, you know, catching a fish makes you feel morning, like you're in right the there. right place. You're in the right depth, and you're using the right thing. So it's just a matter of getting that eight pound bite, a nine pound bite. We haven't seen a nine pounder yet. There was some caught in pre-fishing. So, you know, the next bite could be a big, big move for one of these teams. Oh. All right, good wine on the left, Florida Guide. Social media content guy. He's been guiding for seven years, about well, over 200 days a year. So time on the water, he's got. He does have it. You know, when I was asking him, uh, doing a little bit of background, I was asking him, so, you know, what's your favorite way to catch a redfish? And he referred to his charters. He says, listen, Rick, he goes, I, we fish high water Send in Tampa Mike. Bay, and we throw chunks of mullet up underneath right, the bushes. So Set the rod in a rod holder and pick up a beer. We came in here. <laughs> He's not going to have the liberty. He's not having the liberty to do that in the next three days. He's fishing with Brandon and he's going to work his tail off. And we was looking for mullet and bait. It's been bait all the way around this cove, probably about 25, 50 yards that way. And all of our bikes have came from this area. We drifted this whole shoreline and been getting nothing. Uh, during practice, we got some good ones lying there. But they all, the, all the fish been sitting right here today. Uh, as you can see, bait, mullet jumping around, just trying to get the bigger fish. That's what we're working on now. <clears throat> it's like on got, this side of us is just, is a big giant marsh. 
just a real shallow flat marsh area and as that tide moves in and out it filters all that bait kind of off that flat pushes crab and all that stuff out of it and so these and then that way is just nothing but open bay yeah so they they cruise these edges looking for that bait that's filtering in and out of this marsh and it's almost seems like they're using these like we talk about bass fish all the time like secondary points and stuff but it seems like they're using secondary pockets it's like we're kind of in a we're in a big bay and then it's these little secondary pockets that are made by the grass line where it seems like the reds are actually sitting and where the bait's at we call them horseshoes at the at horseshoe home. any shoreline you find if you got a hard edge and then a little dip yeah we call it horseshoes or horseshoe uh you'll catch fish out of it almost every time no matter where you go try out here and the bottom's just mixed it's a pretty hard bottom but it's got grass patches mixed in it and cruise around eat be happy tell me this rick uh we see the redfish swimming in schools wolf packs as we call them for bass fishing and they, they cruise around looking for the bait if they're in an area that has bait, it's a long stretch, you know, 7,500 yards, and they've gone back and forth on it. When the wind starts pumping into the area like it is across that point, are these redfish going to ever become stationary and get behind an object, maybe like a, a point that's going to disrupt the wind current in their face? Or are they going to sit there and fight it and swim and swim and swim until they find bait? Because that's all they're, they're out there doing in the pack together. Or are they going to ever just sit in an area and rest? Or are they going to just continue to move? Well, and anytime we've been finding great, areas like this, let's hear what Mike or even if here. the area that look good, we'll pull down and then comb it, just pick it apart, see what we could get. So, in my understanding, and this is what I truly believe, is that you know when those redfish are going to migrate or they're going to swim in the depth of water that the big mullet are. We're not talking about little bitty mullet. We're talking about the mullet you see loping in the background. And he, Mike, has to stay on top of where those mullet move to. If those mullet move 100 feet off the shoreline, that's where the redfish are gonna be. Those redfish will be using those mullet as camouflage, hiding amongst them. They can't eat the mullet, but it, they certainly, as the mullet go over the flat, yeah, their shadows spook things that the redfish do eat. Yes, so they're sir. working together. That's a big one, dude. All right. So that's it's key oh to God. make sure you're dude, be yes, sir. in and around those mullet. That's wherever they cave, move. Dude. Yes, sir. That's a good one. Oh my gosh, that's bro. A good Look one. how big that fish is. It might be an over. No, he ain't over. He's that's right. A giant, dude. He's right. Tell no, me if you need pulls sure up. That's a giant, man. Tell me if you need pulls up, all right? Dude, that's an over, bro. No, he's not either. He's you so know, it's big. so discouraging to see Zal Dane. He doesn't get excited or doesn't really get into catching oh one. My God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We could make a Zal on, Dane baby, right. bobblehead. Oh. Come on, we're gonna right. make sure that he has legs Come on, baby, be spread right. wide, big sturdy <laughs> stance. Right. And it's only gonna be four and a half inches tall. You know You're what I mean? Make sure that that leader, it's dude. to scale. You're doing fine. Big one, dude. Fish How is not over. Is. That fish is not over. It's a giant. Now it's just not over, bro. We need more, that one. More so out of confidence and is, hope. Is, is Ryan over. saying that because he's saying, please don't be over? Yes, exactly. Oh. Come on. It's a heavy fish. It's a heavy fish, dude. I'm scared oh, about this dude. back, bro. That's a freaking heavy one. And Chris is certainly here we go, here we go. just all he's doing is trying to stay connected like you guys do when you have a big bass on. Here we go. Oh my god, that's a giant. Oh no no no. Oh crap. Come on, come on. Oh dude. Oh no no no. Come on. Don't do that direction change and stuff. Right side, right side. 
Oh my gosh, dude. Sorry, I don't, I mean, I, I, I'm paranoid with that leader after the, what just happened. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it to him a little bit more. You're gonna, yeah. Yeah. I don't. I if mean, you I can don't, try to get yeah, his head up. I don't, I don't want to expend that energy. <clears throat> Josh, mm. that's a big fish, dude. My God, fish, we dude. need this fish so badly, bro. Okay, come on. Oh. Come on, come on. Head here he comes. Here he comes. Head up. No, no. Mm. I don't want to. I don't want to force it, bro. Here he comes. Here he comes. Here he comes, here he comes, here he comes, here he comes. Yes! All right. That's a giant. It's an absolute That hammer. is a tank, dude. That's a nine pounder. Please fit. Hold this. Please fit. That thing is nine or 10 pounds, bro. I don't think he's over, dude. Gosh, I hope not, dude. Pull Jake, this. come on up here, dog. Pull oh this board gosh. for me. Please, here, please, please. Open that board for me. That is a giant fish. Mm. Come on, baby. Mm. Right here, right here. That's the magic. Sauce right there. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. oh. Hold on a second. No, oh, he's uh -oh. over. Ah. Oh, he's over. Yeah. No. It's a giant. Oh, he's over. Thousand percent. Thousand percent over. Yeah, he's. Gosh, that's a giant fish, see, dude. I don't agree with what's going on yeah, here. They need see. to use the pinch yeah, sure tool. That's like 10 pounds, dude. It's too he's quite close. 10, but I think he's definitely not. Because plus. they may be pinching the tail yeah, just a little more yeah, than what the pinch tool this, pinches yeah. it. Got it? Come on, guys. You guys are. You want a selfie it, Jake? I think it's selfie it. Over! Nine pounds over! God, that's a giant, dude. Oh, it's all right. Good crushed work, it. That's all right. That's, there's nine pounders that live here. Gosh, dang it. Beautiful tail. I'm talking about crushed it. It looks like a goldfish. Go. Right on our mark. I've seen teams take longer to measure a 25 incher that's well within the slot mm -hmm. than they did on one that yeah, can change yeah, the tournament I, spectrum. I, I agree with Rick. Use what they're going to be using at the when they get bumped, when they get because back. Because it doesn't yeah. matter how strong you pinch it or not. It matters where over. you go uh, when you pinch it, which is why exactly. we're explaining yeah, that on the board. Tester for sure. Exactly. The good tool stuff takes any guesswork wow. out. And it's if you over pinch thing. the yep. tail. Wow. Then he'll go paranoid along. With that leader, dude. I gotta retie, so I'm not so paranoid. Do you normally yeah, do that? If that fit, bro, it's What's over. That? Oh, it was over. For day Ask one, your director done. where they're gonna put the perfect pinch. Every what number? single time. So this week we're half an inch. If it's 28 inches, is the upper slot. 27 and a half is where our tournament directors will bump those fish. So you put your board. That's the consistent thing. It doesn't matter how big your hands are, how big the fish is. It's the same mark every time. And you've got to be it's smart. Too, you go to the guy that's change. measuring the fish and ask him how he's going to measure them. Greedy, yep. We just need what we need. Because every guy is, is different. Is. Good one. Good one. Good one. Yeah. Good job, Scott. Good, good job right here. Man. Good fish. I'm going to spike that. I'm going to pull this. I'm going to get that. Come on, Scott. Get to power pull. Let me know. Pull it too. Fiddling around with your drag. Hillary would have already caught the fish by now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nice fish, dude. Nice fish. <laughs> this is one we need right here, dude. I'm talking about your daddy to do your thing. Just going to let him come around. Look at that big turquoise tail. Try to bring him right to you. Try to bring him right to you. There he is, right here. Isn't it amazing how every fish wants to bulldog right to and stay right under the boat? Oh. Get him, yeah, boy. Yeah, that's a good one. Not as big as I thought, but he helps. No, he's going to help for sure. 25 inches, hey, 24 The biggest thing is our, 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 our thought process of where are fish on. are. I'm liking it, dude. We had no information about this place. We went out and practiced for three days. We found a few places that had fish. And so far, everywhere we've said, 
we're gonna catch one, we've caught one. So let's measure him. Where's your stick at? Put it back in this box. Let's just see. I'm pretty sure he's like a 22, 23. Yeah, one of those should be 21, and one's closer than 22, so I have to weed through them. Up. Yeah, so he's 20, he's 22, so he's the biggest one so far. Yeah. You gotta get your scale out. Uh, scale is in the, the center one. I'm gonna lay him in the water, but I'm not gonna lay him here. Look at that pretty shoreline that white and mills are fishing. Sun's out for them. And the fish are biting. Nope. Well, it's not gonna beat the five and a quarter is the smallest fish they have in the live well, so. We will not be hanging around long. No help. No help to us. But I can't say it enough. Catching a fish still makes you feel like you're in the right place yeah. and you're using yeah. the right thing. Rarely do you probably stumble upon one redfish in an entire Three area. Three pounder. There's gonna be more around it, yeah. Exactly. This is certainly a new place. We haven't seen this place for these guys this. I'm switching. You know, today. <laughs> I'm switching. Leaders, Adams and O'Connell on the left. Second place record Ooh, and Zaldane on the right. Big Fred? red fish. Oh. Damn. Ripping a boat. Came right up. No shit. As soon as I pulled it up. Mm. It's interesting. Damn. That's a big one. He may have been over. I don't mean you saw. Keep your eyes peeled for sure. You feel like you have that down or it's really up when you're reeling that? Up for sure. Up, okay. It's definitely up. Okay. Shoot, now Back to my trout. So okay. uh, sure. We just had a big red follow bait all the way to the boat. Uh, we got two rugoons in a well. We're real happy what we got. Uh, and yeah, we're able to call out that five and three quarter. Yeah. And it's like a good one. Yeah. And uh, we're already literally two pounds over what we wanted for uh, our weight today. So we're pretty happy. Um, we're going to keep going, see if we can't even maybe upgrade one more. Every <laughs> ounce counts. And then, uh, start going to look at some other stuff for tomorrow potentially but i mean the fish are definitely eating today lots of bait and uh again stuck to our plan and it's working so just happy the fish are cooperating for sure so we got a pretty good weight we're definitely competitive i do believe we're gonna keep at it i wonder where that big sucker came from what's that i wonder where that big red out here this one. i know Still see an occasional fish, which is kind of cool. And that's important, kind of keeps your hopes up. Every time you see a fish or some type of action, because you, you know things slow down, when you see them, it definitely kind of just motivates you to want to keep going. It can get monotonous when you do all these blind casts. Right there behind your bank. trout. Uh, I, saw, I see this, I got swimming through the water. <laughs> yeah, that was a good one too. Cool. That's a keeper. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably 18 inch truck. All over 18, 18 now. Yeah. We out here in the ocean now. Yeah. 
And we're just drifting all the way across this flat. We kind of get to the end where the little trough starts again. You know, it's about, I think it's five, six foot of water out here. Probably getting ready to crank up, making a little plane. We might go look for some more, some fish maybe for tomorrow, or? We can go south, and uh, we, you know, because we definitely can be able to fish out tomorrow, but we might get an upgrade. We might get lucky. Mm -hmm. well, we really didn't fish it at all pre-fishing. Is that, yeah, oh yeah, no. I'm saying, I mocked over there. Going on the other side of the sun. island, huh? Yeah. Definitely time to make a skedaddle. Yep. yep. I'm making another little, uh, making a little move here. We're real happy. We're gonna try to. Uh, I think we really need to find some fish for tomorrow in case this don't pan out. The wind's gonna be totally a different direction, which I'm not from here, so I don't know how much it really gonna affect it. But uh, it's definitely gonna make a difference. I mean, wind, fish feed with the wind here, so it's definitely a big game changer when you change directions of wind. But hopefully this will stay clean tomorrow. We can get a couple of good bites tomorrow. Batting it down. Yep. Yep. A little real maintenance. Oh, the Actually, I was interesting, Eddie, the, 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 huh? the power pole swept it that way. It kept it right behind the boat. No, oh, did it? Yeah, it's kind of cool. Oh, it was underneath it? Rick, both are one of two teams back, out there in the wide open spaces. Uh, Adams and O'Connell said they're five to six feet of water. You, you imagine it's the same depth here okay. for Rickard and... Almost back in the game. Saldane. Yeah, I think they're a little shallower. They're in three to four feet. Twenty-eight and three-eighths. You know, the one thing that Zaldane and Ricker have right here. going for No way. Them. That's Johnny Willis. That's a black skeeter. 100%. What's up with that? Oh, no. Is. Oh, no. That they have the ability to see. They've got very, very well, but islands all around them. That's definitely one of our guys. So they well, have the ability Scott Martin. no matter what no happens. Way. Johnny with, Willis was a Scott Martin. Um, it is, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, 100% to be in the lee, no matter what the wind does for him. Uh -huh. So that little cove seems to work really well I just really made my well first cast him. since I caught that 28 and 3 eighths. These things test tackle so well that you gotta just go back through and check all your leaders and knots and hooks. And as I did that, it looks like one of our competitors is trying to creep up here about 300 yards away. Can't let that happen. No, sir. He's rolling up in the bug, isn't he? Uh, no, he's outside he of it. He better stay that, outside. That, that's the cut that we come up in. Yeah. Surely they won't come up No, here. they won't. Surely not. Well, surely we'll they may. They, I mean, if they do. There's a, there's no way. rule. The His rule is 150 like yards if they have their trolling motor yeah, up. And not anchored. And anchored. Dude, yeah, that power pole down like at 150. I was, so was going to say, is it, is it a traditional rope or your shallow water anchors can count for that as well? Shallow water anchors considered anchored. So with your power poles down and your trolling motor up, that means you're staying and you have a 300, 360 degree, 150 yard area around you. So they can still sneak in that cut and they're 300 yards away. He and just said 300 fish, yards, yeah. it could come halfway to him. Yeah. If they start creeping in, we'll just take a pause and we'll just start beeline to, to okay. them and just start bombing casting okay. at them, right. you know? Yep. That's, that's the move, that's the bass move. Okay. Pretty much saying, get out of here. I mean, you got, you got it. Yeah, oh yeah. Surely you got to know you you can't come up in yeah. here. Yeah. Come on. No. The spot ain't big enough for that. No. And I'm glad we didn't leave too, because they're coming up in here. You can tell they're coming right up in here. No doubt about it, buddy.
Well, while we wait to see how this interaction transpires, Rick, I wanted to bring you into the Bassmaster Studio sponsored by Marathon at the Screen and Knowledge here. And I wanted to talk to you, Rick, about kind of the conditions that we're experiencing. We have a lot of big playing fields in the Bassmaster Elite Series, but none that maybe are as impacted as something that's connected to the Gulf and the ocean like it is this week. So this is our playing field as you look at Port Aransas down here at the bottom. The south boundary is a lot closer to our takeoff than the north boundary is. Correct. Today's wind, I want you to break down what this wind direction does for the body of water and how these guys have to strategically do because it will change. So today's wind, that green, that's in the mid-20s for speed wise and the direction is coming from the south maybe southeast a little bit but it's coming from the south predominantly all right so here's what you need to understand you have the aransas ship channel what it's doing is that's kind of the div dividing line ronnie and so what's going to happen is as the wind continues to be south the guys that are south of the ship channel their water is going to get shallower okay and then what that wind is going to do is it's going to blow the water to the north of the channel. So all the areas to the north uh, we'll up fit there, bays, Aransas Pass, uh, yes. and then Rockport, and keep going further up near Port O'Connor. Port San Antonio, yep. Correct. All of those places are going to flood because the wind's going to blow it up there. Now, tomorrow, this is what it's going to change as. Tomorrow, the wind's going to lesser, you know, about maybe in the teens 13 to 18 miles an hour but it's coming from the opposite direction now what's it going to do for the fish that were caught today how will they be positioned tomorrow or will be certain areas that factored today not be able to be fishable so what i think is going to happen especially if it's, it's more wind is certainly the again the stuff to the north is going to get shallower it's going to bring the water back into the south areas where they are the question is when is this transition when is this wind going to get there? That's going to be the key. Yeah, when it makes that switch tonight, you you said it, it's one of the top 12 uh, cities in America when it comes to wind, Port Aransas is, and so we will see how that wind switches uh, when it gets dark tonight. You know, 11, midnight, 1 a.m., it'll make that turn. It'll have a few hours before takeoff tomorrow morning to see how these fish are going to change. And like you said, it's not necessarily where the redfish go, it's where the mullet go, and those redfish will follow. So if they get a little uncomfortable with the water level or depth, they're going to be out of there, especially with the clarity as well. So we'll see how the wind affects it, but uh, we got some other storylines kind of developing right now as well. That's spot on. Well, absolutely. We've got uh, about four teams that have put themselves in excellent shape during the course of this first day so far, but there's plenty more fishing time left on this day, and we've got about six, seven teams. Need to, need to make some progress here before this day is done, and they've got certainly time to do that. We'll take a break and be right back. The Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup is sponsored by Minn Kota. Power pole and by Skeeter Boats. We are into the final four hours here of our fishing or past the midway point of this day, our TH Marine rules of the game. In this redfish cup, we have of course 10 two-person teams are fishing three days. Two redfish per day, that's your limit. Get the biggest two fish you can get that fit within the 20 to 28 inch slot limit. Heaviest three-day total weights carry over day to day. It's going to be the winner of the new, newly uh, increased first place prize of seventy-five thousand dollars. So, uh, what was a seemed like a great deal last year is a little better this yeah. year. And every it goes payout goes all the way down to tenth. Where at least if you finish last, it's a thanks for showing up. Enjoy the exposure from this week's of live shows and. Here's uh, some parting gas, gas money, money, you know, yeah. on the way back. Yeah, $100,000 in prize money given away. That's a big pot. What's, big it, pot. what's it mean? Obviously, for our five Elite Series pros, this kind of seems more like an exhibition. It's fun. Gets them out of their comfort zone. They learn something, but it's also peaks their competition aspects out of them. What does it do for these redfish anglers that have qualified for this? I mean, is this a huge deal for them to represent and they want to do well, obviously, no matter where they're at? This is the Super Bowl in red fishing right now, guys. This is what red fishing Super Bowl is, is to be one of the top 10 guys invited to come to the Redfish Cup and fish for $100,000. That's awesome. It is, you know, that's the way it is. The wind looks like it's starting to blow, boys. Oh, it is. The flap factor has gone up by about 15%. <laughs> Look at Mike's shirt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
makes them both look skinny. It's a good camera win. That's right, <laughs> yeah. Mm. God. Yeah, yeah, tap in. Kevin Aiken, true cook right there. Again, they've got a they've got a giant no eight pound four ouncer in the boat. So we're yeah, they got room to call for sure. Find another one of those. And they're right there, way down. Leaders. This is the best stretch with the wind direction we've got. You know, remember Tommy that we're not seeing the the full picture here, but in Texas, a huge strategy is just to let the down. wind blow the boat. Yeah. And you can see Aiken doesn't even have his trolling motor on the front of the boat. It's on a puck in the back of the boat. He put it back there so that when he was running, he wouldn't beat the trolling motor up. Shut the, put the words right back in my mouth. <laughs> Not the right size. Yeah. I swear, I've caught so many rats today. I ain't complaining. Treat load of kids. Kevin, Aiken, and Cook are, they're, they're one bite away. White and Mills, one bite, big bite away from being right there in the mix within a Should half a pound of first on, I'm old school. I use a five inch bait till it's one inch. I look at it like it's, it's approved. I know a fish will hit it. It's got the right smell on it. Gas prices are getting high, man. Oh yeah. Start big and just go down to a finesse approach. <laughs> yeah. We probably got. Like a little less than work. two hours of fishing time. Or an hour and a half. Thinking it's going to take us a little longer to get back. <laughs> the wind's picked up and blowing a little harder this afternoon. I might get a little sporty coming back. 100%. You know. 100%. Or, you know, oh, well, I fished it the first day. Like, I'm coming back here on the second day and third <laughs> <Yeah>. day. <laughs> uh, it happens. It happens. Oh, oh, hold on, hold on. Get him, dude. Hold on, right here. See him uh, puffing or what? I saw a big push right there, and it didn't look moldy. Dude, this area, bro, got the potential to repeat, no doubt. Like, yeah. no doubt. Yeah. Repeat, holes over there. Repeat potential. I feel like we still haven't fit, you know, like, went through. Oh, gosh. Right where you, you just gave it to me without a fish on. <laughs> Come on, bro. You just got me all excited. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> You gotta wonder if that increase in 10 mile an hour worth of wind, look at their jerseys, look at the chop on the water. They don't have that crisp sun. 
you got to wonder if that's a factor of why the bike has fallen off in the last 30 minutes. I think it's the midday lull, Tommy, that we see in bass fishing. I feel like every species has that, <laughs> see, has that ebbs and flows. I was you thinking know? we're going to leave that, leave that on shore when no, we I'm come. No, you know, we, it doesn't have to be a two-hour lull. It could just be a slight lull in action, and then all of a sudden an uptick for the last two hours of the afternoon. You know? I jinxed the whole thing by thinking it wouldn't happen today. <laughs> I think for sure that low pressure is approaching and those fish are feeling it. I got it. I got but maybe Brent will make a liar out of us right now. Brent Roy from Venice, Louisiana, his partner Drew Cook. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, Wes Logan. Excuse me. I wonder if they're still just hold on to sticking to the secret chatterbait. <laughs> <laughs> I think their smallest is in the three range. Yes. That'll do it. That will do That's it. That's better than four and a half pounder. Here you go. You want to do what you want to do. Really, it should be about high tide right now. Barge. Got him. I was kind of hoping more water would come in and push it. Kind of funky, like kind of grabbed all of me and didn't really even hit it. He just pressure. Definitely didn't thump it. Somewhere, I think, is where you caught that seven quarter. Mm -hmm. Somewhere right here. Right here, yeah, I think it was this pothole right here. <sighs> Plenty of bait. You think they know that's us? Oh, yeah. Sure. Do you know that? I mean, are you tight with that guy? No, he's Florida. I don't, he's a Florida guy. I don't, yeah. I don't know him. He knows your boat, though, right? I'm sure, sure he does. Yeah. They're definitely coming in the bug, for sure. What's that? Crab trap. That's the crab trap? Yeah. I've been watching it. It hasn't moved. <laughs> Ready. This red alert zone right here, dude. Mm-hmm. Trying to get us on the right angle before we get in red alert zone real good. Click. 
Kevin and Drew are going to make a move. Yeah, it's been a while since they've uh, put a keeper in the boat, hasn't it? Yeah. It's been a few hours, a couple, yeah. three hours, yeah. I think. And that's the that's the oh. thing, though. There's, normally, when you go a couple hours without a keeper, there's a little bit of a panic. But for them, they're near that target weight that everyone thought. And so even though they're down by about two and a half, three pounds right now, that's very doable over the next four fish, the next two days that they can make up. Correct. It looks like to me that Kevin's starting to, his body language to me when I was watching him cast, looked like he's. Oh my God, I saw him. What's yeah, going on here, fish, you know what I mean? He knows he needs he to make a move. Fish, yeah. He's not sure where that move needs to be. Cause he's got so many places. He's the hometown boy. Yeah. You know what I mean? And he's wondering what this weather's doing and what it's gonna be doing to the next spot. <sighs> got him, big one. It's not like Zaldane and Rick have got oh, yep, no. three he's spots. Like six or seven. You think? He's like might, six or seven. Might be better and than Martin seven. And Martin Willis got don't, two. Don't, no, no, you know? Well, I don't want to pull attention to it, dude. I, I think we're fine. I think we're sure? good. Sure? Yeah. Dude, yeah. I don't know, nah, man. That might know. be a seven class fish, bro. Here, just keep it down and then. Yeah, yeah. yeah go you ahead. Put do, the, do you put thing. the bogo yeah, on yeah, and then you tell me if it's on that seven line, let me look at it. For the record, Rick, we do not have any anchor rules for the Bassmaster Redfish event this week. So the 150 yard rule that may apply for other tournament trails, it's Doesn't hard, it's here. very hard to enforce. Mm -hmm. I don't think so, dude. Especially think hearsay, like things like that, so. Oh, oh that's good. Billy's kind of, so. Billy's kind of good. They do have to protect. Well, they're lucky Ricky Dicky's not down there. Yeah, exactly. be a, <laughs> yeah. Pass me the donuts. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, maybe when you lift him up, lift him up behind the behind the leaning post. We're gonna hide behind that console. Yeah. First, it's all caught up in the net. Maybe put a bathrobe on him or something. Yeah, of course. <laughs> oh, to get you talking about for the visual? Yeah, for, so they don't. Yeah. See it? I don't think it's gonna help, dude. <laughs> They're not even looking. Not. They don't. Not, they don't even care. Except a little bit. Oh. Nope. What's wrong? No, the net, the net was all tangled up. I had the net behind the Oh, the net the got hook. in there. Yeah. No, I don't think he's going to be seven either. No, just check him checking just to make sure. He's little. So far as working, no, just the size isn't Ooh. there. Pull it up out of the water. No. We need those. Obviously, there's a 27 and 9 tenths size fish. Now. But, you know, it's it, just a matter of time before we hopefully get an opportunity at a couple big ones. As long as we can keep catching keepers and keep putting ourselves in, in that position, that high percentage strike zone, because in practice, we got big ones too. He's just fairly close. And some yeah. 21, 22. The one as well. that bit so you, I think. The one you saw, maybe? But, maybe. You know, again, we're not fishing one spot. We're just kind of moving along, covering water. And, and I like that because we can let things rest. We can fish all kind of stuff. So, peel back around you know, stuff. We're not locked down on one little spot, but. It would, it would be nice to go ahead and get a big one in the boat, though. Talk about the decision to come down here. Yeah, so we started off this morning, caught quite a few fish in that, in that starting area, and they were just, you know, keepers. And we, I feel like, we both feel like there's bigger fish down here. There's singles, though. And, uh, but I think our best chance at, at a 27-inch fish is going to be in this zone right here. You know, the tournament leaders, the tournament winners from last year, <laughs> Zaldane and them are right there. Um, so, you know, that's a good area. If they're in this little area, we're in this area. So, it's a matter of getting one of those big ones to bite. Couldn't have said it any better, man. Just a matter of time. Keep weeding through fish. <coughs> Fishing hard. I mean, there's no, no difference in what that, that 22 fish wants to do and what that, what that 27, 28 inch fish wants to do. It's just covering water, in my opinion. He's covering a bunch of water, weeding through these guys. Some days it seems like in, in pre-fish it was a little more of the 22s, and some days it was a little more of the 27s, 28s, and it's just day by day there. So all we can do is weed through here and keep clucking through them. Pull up there, we'll drift forward in that casting distance. That's the biggie, man, is make a bunch of casts, cover all the ground in front of you, pull the pole up, stop, cover all the ground in front of you, and just feel like you covered the whole area before you picked up and moved along somewhere else. Go back to black. 
haven't seen Kennedy have him show him. Getting a big one in the boat throughout the course of this day so far. We caught the fish this morning. First spot. Didn't didn't Favre and uh, Moreno that Marino? How do you say his last name? Moreno. 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 Didn't they have a uh, oversized fish this morning? Yes, yeah, the long, yeah. lean one that was 28 and a half. Yeah, yeah, well over. And they've only been able to put nine with two fish. Wind has definitely picked up a little bit. But we slowed our drift down. Um, using a thing called a drift sock, I mean a drift anchor. You can even use a five gallon bucket if you need to. We've done that years. Um, but it's helping us kind of slow down our presentation of our bait. Maybe put it in the zone a little longer. Without that, we'd be rolling along at a pretty good clip. It's blowing every bit of 20, a little over 20 right now. So you can probably hear it. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's just kind of helping us right now, kind of just cover more water and fan cast a little bit more. So. It worked on those last couple drifts. We had some good bites, you know. We had a three fish drift and another, I don't know, I think two, three fish drifts. So that's a success. Bad news is the, the, the wind's just now starting to blow. You know what I mean? It's got some good stuff coming. I was looking at the radar a minute ago. And uh, I don't think they're going to be affected by rain, but I think that the wind is coming. Yeah, We're going to really know, see a let up. We were talking about the wind the intensity. It's going to stay at the same direction, but it's going to start yeah, to let up around 10 p.m. tonight. And then it starts to, to swirl, right. and that's where it's going to get that yeah. new direction tomorrow. Bit. We're just getting that clean water again. Equally as hard with the still lower through. intensity. Right, yeah, right. or it'll be right in the teens instead of the 20s. Okay. okay. Got a good drift going. We're good. You can see that sock back there, the way it kind of sits in the water. I think just earlier kind of everything up, today, up, before really noon, it's, it's a, it can be what, a game if changer, it so stays in the teens like the prediction, that's about what they were fishing in this switch morning. out. My wrist yeah. is killing me. Gusts in the 20s, but consistently in the low 20s, early high teens. Correct. Good old spinning rod. So Florida if you, guys if you look in... Uh-oh. Trout on. Oh, That's oh. a good trout. <laughs> nice trout. Yeah, we caught one in at least That's 10 cast. That's the biggest one yet right there. You know that? It's probably 20 inch trout. Big trout. Oh. Oh. Hello. Not only Flip are you the, the leader in the 22 Let's just show you how often I throw redfish a cup, rub. but you're also okay. catching big catching trout redfish, but yeah. as your bycatch. All these fish live when together things on these things are going well, they're going they all well. Too. So, much the same Ronnie, thing. if you I'm look there on Cincinnati and Kennedy's, yep. you see those slick spots at 10 o'clock left of uh, Kennedy there in the water? Those are called wind rows. And those wind rows start at 15 knots of wind. Now, here's what you need to know. As you're running or if you're looking, see the wind rows there? Yep. The closer they get together, the higher velocity the wind. Okay. So when it's 20 knots, they're literally a few feet apart like you're seeing there. Now you get out in those open bays and they're real distinct. They're slick, but then there's a white foam and which shows you how the velocity is of those wind rows. Kennedy just broke his rod tip. It's just not going well for our boys from uh, Jacksonville. Is there any difference physically, Captain Rick, between a Texas redfish, one from the Gulf Coast of Florida, one from the Atlantic, from over the Indian River, that area? Is it, there is are, a are, difference. There is some, they're built a little different? Uh, I'm not so sure about them being built different, but for sure, genetically or DNA-wise, 
they are an east coast fishery or an east coast fish and then there's the Gulf of Mexico fish and the reason I know this is because through the efforts of Coastal Conservation Association they have a fish hatchery in Crystal River and they're raising two strands of redfish oh. the redfish to be released on the Gulf Coast because their oh. DNA is different than the DNA of the fish that were caught on the East Coast and that was one of the requirements by the Fish and Wildlife Commission of Florida is that you cannot cross over the strains. Okay. So, I, I, if I'm not mistaken, I think there's five strains of redfish from Texas to the Carolinas as far as genetic DNA. So, and again, I'm not a biologist, so I'm not 100% on that, but, um, you know, they look the same, and the fish, as far as thickness of tails, pointy tails, rounded tails, fat versus skinny, I think that's all diet driven. Yeah. In my opinion, you know. And environment, you know, other fish, you know, especially the, the tail alterations or the fins and things. Yeah, like in Venice, Louisiana, when those fish are on those pogies, and the pogies are such high concentration of protein. They get so fat this time of year versus if the same fish on the same shoreline, you catch him in June, that fish will be a, a pound less really? than what he is in the fall. say a seven fall. pound fish, yeah. Yeah, because he's eating shrimp and crab. And even though that's high in protein, it's not high in fat like the pogies are. So they digest it a lot easier and they don't, seem to put on the same amount of weight as they do when they're on that pogey bite, you know. I don't know where Mills and White are fishing, but it sure looks a lot nicer than the other <laughs> three places. Yeah, no kidding. They're the, like they're out in the backyard there. And looks like Mills went back to his popping cork. He's a retired Marine, Tommy, did two uh, tours in Iraq. And I'm gonna tell you, we got a plethora of different makeup of personalities. We got guys that wrestled, played golf. We have one guy who was a rodeo bull rider. Yeah. And, and Mills is our retired veteran. And I'm gonna tell you, there's no give up in that dude. You know, if it's raining sideways, he's gonna still be standing up there casting. He and Barney White, the uh, elite Redfish Series Team of the Year. Correct. This year of 22. And they should be proud of what they're sitting with. That's a, you know, they're in reach of, of where they need to be. Yeah. That's all we got time for. Some of the guys are starting to consider the run home now because certainly the wind is blowing probably 10 knots, which could be close to 15 mile an hour more than what they experienced driving to the spot. And uh, so they're thinking it's gonna take a little longer to get. Go back up to the top where we just were. To get. Make another drift down. Hopefully pick up a good fish, cool one. Dwayne Mills is still fishing with the fish bites, a scented plastic paddle tail company with a jig head underneath the popping cork. Well, just up the road a piece. There it is. Got the Minute May Bassmaster Classic there, way yes, in. Yes, sir. 2017. 2017, yeah. Minute May. It's where the action is. World Series, hotly contested World Series going on right now. Good, good stuff. They've had a no hitter in the World Series so far. Last night was dramatic, three to three to two. Yeah, man, it's, it's been fireworks all the way through. Three two lead for the Astros, and somebody's gonna get crowned on Sunday here this week, Tommy. That's true. Fireworks this morning for sure. We're seeing the results of that right now, courtesy of Bass Track. Those are unofficial weights right there, but. Adams and O'Connell with the pound advantage over Rickard and Rickard and Zaldane, White Mills, and Aiken Cook. And all the rest, we got more fishing on the way. Look at the red fish.
Live coverage of the Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup is presented by Skeeter Boats. The fishing capital of Texas, that's what it's billed as. Look at the redfish there. Slide back up there a little bit. Sliding down the transition. I'd like to say that maybe I could even catch those Captain Rick, but I don't know. I promise you could. <laughs> you just maybe have with to, your guidance, you'll have to take me. You would have to listen to Captain Ricky Dicky. <laughs> <laughs> you make a bad cast, then you're Sit talking down, to put the rod. Yeah, put the, put the <laughs> rod down for a minute, Ronnie. Let's get out to our defending champions. Ryan Rickett, Chris Saldane. 43 pounds and four ounces. Over three days last year. Definitely ahead of that schedule right now. Well, I guess they did come on this flat, didn't they? Good fish. Good fish. You see the mullet jumping in the background? He ain't nine. Tommy, mm -hmm. there was just some fish just flashing. I mean, that's how you know. I just said, I think we're about 15 yards out of. God, come on, baby. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Uh, yeah. That might call. That might call, buddy. That might be close to eight. That might call. Where's the where's the boga? That might call, bro. Hear him croaking? I do. That sounds like a t-shirt, Ronnie. Call, bro. <laughs> get, Go from, get the net broke. Yeah. <laughs> that might call, bro. Stay <laughs> off my spot, bro. All that <laughs> stuff. <laughs> seven and a quarter, the smallest. No, he's a little under the other one. He's seven, like seven just pounds. at seven. Yeah. He's got good length, but you see what I'm saying? Like yeah. the length, yeah. that was 27 yeah. inches almost, yeah. and he's just not got the right. A pretty fish. Seven pounder. I bet people would be clamoring to have that oh, fish today. Yeah. No. Willis and Martin, who were right around yeah. the corner, certainly could use that one. Be tickled to death. <laughs> I see how close those two teams are. See, I'll say this. Now it's going to be in their head. If Rickard and Zaldane did want to change up and go to a different spot tomorrow or Sunday, knowing that those guys were nearby and had stumbled upon something similar, maybe not exactly the sweet spot, but in the region. Now they kind of have to stay there and protect possibly a little longer than they want to. And that can affect that can allow somebody else to rise up the leaderboard, right? Poppy, a good one. I can't really tell. I don't think he's no 10 pounder. If you have two for eight, then I think they will. I think they will probably get rid of one of them. It's in the lines of 20 to 28. He'll help, won't he? Maybe. Thanks, sir. to our leaders right now, Adams and McConnell, O'Connell, excuse me. Monster. 
Hooked a pinfish. Pin perch? <laughs> yep. It's different. That's a grunt. That's a grunt. That's a piggy perch. Yeah. Show that. That's a bigger piggy perch that. This is what they're eating. You can hear them. We need to get us a bait that does that little electronic. I foul bait. hooked him. So that's what these fish are out here eating. They're all over these flats. This one's a little bit bigger. Most of them are about half his size. But you can hear him grunting. Come on, grunt for me, little pal. There you go. Piggy. That's what they do. They make that sound, and those redfish just eat them up. So are the trout as well, but they're pretty little things. This and finfish. So that's what they call the piggy perch. That's because they grunt like a little pig. Check those fish. Piggy. Are we golden? The boys are doing their drifts. I mean, look at that boat. They're in open water. He said earlier he was fishing five to six feet depth. Mm -hmm. And you can see, look at how much the boat's bouncing up and down versus our other teams. You know, Kevin, Aiken, and uh, Cook, they seem to be in a little deeper water, but because their boat's bouncing up and down a little bit too. One of these guys were talking about if there wasn't as much grass, I think, I think it might have been Roy yesterday talking about in the interviews if there wasn't as much grass they could maybe throw a crankbait for some of these redfish I often hear you guys talking about shrimp imitators soft plastics maybe some top water or something with a blade on it like a chatterbait or a spoon some metal something loud is a crankbait something that's underrated or not talked about or just regional for redfish well when you have like he was talking about the minus one that yeah. they use in Louisiana. Little wake baits which and is, Yeah, wake baits. And, uh, you know, certainly I think that would work very well here. But because the grass on the surface is so bad, and it is just on the surface, uh, it makes it a lot more difficult. Almost all these guys are using singles right now, single hooks, whether it's a jig head and a soft plastic. I'm surprised that out there in those big open bays, we're not seeing more of the popping cork with a 12 inch oh, look, leader Kevin, or Kevin 18 inch I'm leader. What's that? I think Kevin gets a trout or something right And uh, yeah, making the noise, <laughs> but then <laughs> having the jig coming up from below the redfish, you know, and you get that real reaction bite. And those concaved rattling pipe of popping corks are the way to go on a day when it's blowing like this. And you were talking about a popping cork last year when you were showing us that there are certain types that you can you can turn one way to really chug some water and you can turn it the other way to not chug as much water but still get the clack in and there's a ways of yeah. of altering that presentation for if the wind dies down or if the water gets murkier or if you know Correct. You need more attraction or less. And for sure whether you're using the traditional popping with the chugging type of head versus one that's more of the bobber style. You want to have all that rattling hardware that you have mullet. because mullet. that adds to the noise. One single mullet. Mm -hmm. Looks like Kevin sees somebody, a floater maybe. I want that school to pop up so bad. You know, Ronnie, we have a saying in uh, the sailfish arena, and that is it only takes a minute to get back in it. One of those little schools pops up in front of any one of these teams and they both double up. That whole scoreboard could be shuffled. We and always that, say that in bass fishing, Tommy, if you fish all day and don't, don't have the weight you need, it only takes five casts. But in this game with a team sport and a two fish limit, it it's one just, cast each at the yeah. same, you could catch both at the same time. And is that often something you see, Rick? You know, I mean, you can get right in a hurry, but yeah. Scott's been Scott's been one who's adamant about Jonathan, you know, casting back in after he hooks even a small one. That's a great yeah. point. And the point is that with a two fish team and two potential working rods, a school pops up of two eight pounders, you could go from having 10 pounds in the well like Taylor and Moore have to having 16 pounds and be in the top of the leaderboard. 
and that's what makes you know fishing what it is especially competition fishing it's no different than being on the 18th fairway and hitting that perfect drive right down the middle that's the one that takes you back to the to the clubhouse and more importantly the next time you go play but it's it's funny how this other than Zaldane and Rickard who are fishing in an area that's surrounded by little barrier islands nobody's caught a big fish since our break you know it's just that extra 10 mile an hour with the wind I think is really affecting uh, the teams right now that are fishing out in that open water you got to wonder if it's maybe because they're feeling boat noise, feeling boat pressure. The boat's blowing across the flat a lot faster. So they're feeling that, you know, wake that the boat causes, especially if it's bouncing up and down. You know, it kind of creates a reverb wave. I, that's what I always refer to it as. I guess the more breakup there is on top of the water, too, the more trouble the sight feeders have yeah. locating, I guess. Certainly, and with that wind, you also have waves slap against the fiberglass of the oh, boat. Yeah, yeah. Who was it yesterday we talked to? Said, "Man, they if they they if they detect you in the area, they'll stay two casts away from you." Oh they, yeah, they they're oh, expert at that. Yeah, somebody was talking about running a trolling motor. Yeah. And he felt that they'll stay two casts away, as you said. Oh my God, they're everywhere, Chris. They are everywhere. <laughs> Is this it right here? No. Is that a shell? No, that's it. No. No. There it is. Oh, no. No, no. these protos trying to retrieve a swim bait that he's designed this year it's running low on the prototypes he says so gosh almost Ryan almost sorry sorry buddy we got pressure on the right and this dumb stuff going on oh, you got it you got to get it there it is freaking line oh, man. hurry up and get in there yes, too because yep. I'm getting yep. stroked yep yep I got I got another rod my braid off that reel. Oh, come on. Alright, we got a little pressure here in the form of a competitor up up top. We got fish biting. Come on. Bear with me, Ryan. Bear with me, buddy. Sorry. You know, they say when you encounter a grizzly bear, you're supposed to get together and get real big. <laughs> Chris is certainly not helping Ryan right now. He's... <laughs> I was wondering where you were going with that. Yeah. <laughs> Arnie White and Dwayne Mills. Man, I don't know where they're fishing, but I sure wish I did know, because it is beautiful in there. Oh, here's our popping cork with the fish bites on it. Uh-uh. Dirty. 
place white in mills here. The smallest fish is five and a quarter, so they just need to find one to get the slot and get over that number. pretty thick and it's look a lot darker you can tell it's probably been in the marshier shallower reeds area the back of that fish and you know i'm not sure exactly where the boys are fishing the, uh, but you know with the wind guess. blowing as hard as it is out of the direction that it is if they're over on the west side of uh, the intercoastal it could blow some of those ponds that did, had, didn't have enough water during pre-fishing now may be accessible. They've got enough water in there, and, and the truth is, if and if you can burn that today, because there might not be enough water tomorrow or Sunday, that could be a that could bode well. This is a free day of fishing that is not accessible as much, you know. Yeah. So the boys, for sure, are getting a little bit of flow in there, meaning they're getting more water than they would have had uh, if the yep. wind wasn't blowing as hard out of the east that it is. And here's why this is important is because on a normal tide, you may not be able to access where they are right now. And, but it doesn't change the fact that there's water there during normal tide. They just can't get a boat in there, which now the redfish know that there's crab and shrimp and all other things that have not been accessible. And now all of a sudden we put a foot and a half of water in there and now it becomes accessible. It does. A little, little bit of help we understand now from that fish, between five and a quarter and five and a half, so some ounces yeah, gained. Yeah, ounce, an ounce bigger. That wind say is... half a pound? Yeah, or it's a few ounces. A few ounces. I think about a quarter of a pound. Yeah. Hmm. Boy, they are also tucked in there out of the wind. At a yeah. Nice that's little a, strategic spot. That 15 to 20, 22 mile an hour wind from the south backs up the tide pretty good even though the tide's going to be pretty strong trying to get out of there it's going to back it up for the most part would you say i mean at least slow the tide outflow for sure for sure look they got blue skies look at how they don't have that same wind rose on the water so that again all these little barrier islands that are around is really help and protect their spot. And you know, I had an old timer in, in 2001 tell me, Ronnie, <laughs> if it feels good to us, it feels good to them. And that's where you should start fishing when you go to a place you've never fished before. <laughs> Makes what? sense, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm more productive when I'm fishing if I, if I feel yeah. good and <laughs> comfortable. I'll tell you later. <laughs> I'll tell you later, Ryan. All right. Are they netting one? No. So I want to know, do the Looks glasses like in the shoes come as a, a kit, a Chris Zaldane kit? <laughs> it's a part of the bobblehead yep. you said you were creating, for yeah. sure. I mean, I'm just, I need to know these things, <laughs> you know? I mean, I might have to change some of the marketing things that I'm doing at my place. Stylistically, he has carved out his... Oh, he's his styling it camo all. Camo and yeah. the glasses. Yeah, it's been his <laughs> deal no the last few years. Mustache, too. The couple years sure, ago, he didn't have yeah, that. Yeah. Now he has that. Yeah. I mean, this could be, you know, that, that Christmas oh gift card gosh, thing, dude. you know? What? Yeah. Where you could get the combo and save 10%. Oh, my. Getting hammered, right? It's that zone. It's like that strip right, right there. That's the strip we should be on. We're just outside of it. it, too. You know exactly where. <clears throat> I bet you we're at low tide right now, or approaching it. With all yeah. this activity, yeah. I can almost guarantee it. Yeah.
got a we got a boat in front of us here and we've we've fished this area for four whole days now and we haven't had any pressure and we got one of the competitors right in front of us here so we're we feel kind of rushed and we're getting bites every other cast it seems like Smoked it, dude. That's a big trout. Is it? Pretty sure it's a big trout. Smoked it. Big That's trout, a dude. Giant trout. That's man. unbelievable. Monster trout. That's what's been biting us, dude. That is a wow. hammer trout, dude. 25 <laughs> inches. Sorry about the deck. That is now I'm gonna tell you the local Texans that are watching him flip it in the boat like that are gonna go Sorry, bananas. I'll wipe it off. <laughs> Because that <laughs> is good. don't get a hook. In I mean, there's yeah. guys that fish for trout all that. year long and not catch one that big. Speckled speckled sea trout. Speckled is that the trout. Yep. Name? Yeah, that's a giant. It's actually one. in the drum family. That's in the redfish family. Oh, is it? That's not in the trout family. Oh yeah, that's far from a trout. Golly, look at the mouth on that thing. Slimy, slimy too. Choked it. Choked mm. that walker. Yuck. You better clean that boat up. I'm going to tell you, Rickard, he keeps his boat cleaner than a doctor's office. I'm telling you. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Ryan doesn't play when it comes to the, the cleanliness of his boat. You see him looking back there, Tommy? Did you check yeah, to make sure Chris did And I heard, heard Chris say, sorry about the boat, Ryan. <laughs> he, I think he, they he have an the understanding. Rules. Yeah, he has, he's, he's been briefed on the, the unofficial yes, sir. rule. We have some music. Uh, yeah, a little different boiling flavor. up there, yeah. Captain Rick. I think you know what that's all about. I do. Let's take a look at the power pole replay of the day. We're certainly talking about the champions, defending champions, Chris Aldane and Ryan Ricker. What? Look at Zaldane. I mean, he's more excited. I mean, that that I haven't seen him jump that high since he caught a ten pounder. Oh, I what saw a, you just a minute ago before we started the power pole replay of the day. Put your order in so that you can have the glasses and the shoes to match. So I'm glad to see that you're supporting the look there. But yeah. it doesn't matter what you're wearing when you catch a when you catch a redfish like that that puts you up up top early in the event. You're going to get excited, Tommy. No doubt about it. And they've kept themselves near the top, just under by a pound. The team of Adams and O'Connor. Rickard and Zaldane, White and Mills hanging in there for a good while for the last three or four hours. Ditto for Aiken and Cook. I do want to see their reaction if they do come in and it stays official like it is right here and they're in they're in second with as good of a day they've had. I want to see their facial reaction for sure. <laughs> yeah. we'll have that weigh in for you. I bet we could sell tickets to that. We've got, got plenty more fishing though before the weigh in happens. We'll be right back. The Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup is sponsored by Humminbird. Yamaha. And by TH Marine. Oh, what a great destination we have here. And draws people from all around the country. A lot of folks from uh, nearby as well, San Antonio, Austin, all the surrounding areas. This is where you go to enjoy the Enjoy everything the sea the Gulf of Mexico has to offer, and boy, the fishing in this place has been legendary for more than a, a century and a quarter. Big tarpon placement first got going. 
And it still is. The tarpon fishing has come back in a big way. They migrate through there in late July and August, and then they move right on south into Port Mansfield in September and October and into Mexico. We still on. But we're not talking about tarpon, Tommy. We are no. talking about redfish. It's all redfish today. And man, we have had we plenty to talk about. Big one. A big one. That's a giant, dude. When the That's sun it. comes out, look at how the bite increases. Yeah. Seven. Oh the redfish got that bow move down, down, don't they? Let's keep this down. Hey, I'm gonna let you deal with it. Yeah, 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 yeah. No. Go ahead. You got it? Yep, 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 yep. Look at how they don't even get excited about a seven and a half pounder anymore. Let well, me know when you're ready for me to help you measure. Like, like, look at that company. thing. They, they would totally have a fit. They just are trying to keep it on the low low, no doubt. Seven and a quarter, bro. He's got to be seven and a quarter. I don't know that'll call, bro. Oh, down low. That's what we got going here. The down, down low. low. Yep. On the down low. Mm. Down low. This morning was on the up oh, high. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's seven. Let me see. Uh, yeah, no, let go. Seven. No, six. Six. Yep. It's a fun one. Oh. Gotta get back out there. We got company, boys. <sighs> Either bite, and we got pressure on us. Step back, dog. Come on, man. Show off with the live camera, dude. Got everybody watching right now. We need to catch a big one right here. Go ahead and stick that power pole down. 28. Oh, that definitely was something different. I heard it, I didn't see it. it they ate right there. Oh, gosh. I heard it, it definitely smacked something. So Ronnie, when I was asking my series of questions as I got to Scott Barton, I asked him, so what did you, what high school sports did you play? And he said uh, that he said wrestled he and he played there. golf. I to I unless you just want to and fix I, all that. I didn't throw real warm. I said, are you, that. what, wrestling and golf? <laughs> And he, and he goes, listen, I was building power and finesse all in one time. <laughs> <laughs> now, did you ask if it was like wrestling with the headgear and mats or WWE? That's the thing that you got to, no, which kind was, of wrestling? Yeah, yeah, headgear. I mean, I'm not trying to irritate anybody. And the mouthpiece. <laughs> yeah. He, we, he offers, obviously, he's lost his mouthpiece over the years. But... When he responded, now think about this. Uh, finesse, I was creating finesse and oh. power all in one time. <laughs> uh, it took me 20 minutes to quit giggling about that one. What's going to hurt is one of these boats coming in and gets up right behind us. That's what's going right. to hurt. Like yeah. a local. She just. Yeah. Oh my. Goodness. Did you miss him? He looked pretty good, rolled dude. up on him, dude. Yeah. Lee. He looked pretty good, bro. They're not like crushing it. They're like no, they're I know. pushing it. Boom. Looks 
so juicy right now with the chop and the sun being where it's at, the tide being low. Let me get over here. Get over. They're bugging out. Fish look pretty decent. It did look good. It was tall. Yeah, looked pretty Golly, decent. Golly, dude. You gotta wonder. Hmm. Them catching all these fish in the same it's that place. Low tide bite, man. This is not day three. No. Especially, hey, I could see it if Rickard said the wind direction, day one's the prime day, we're gonna get it for just all we can get, one, and man. then change and adjust the next two one. days. But you said Brought this shouldn't the affect him. So they can visit this spot all three days. And so wearing on it as if there's no tomorrow is something hard to hard to do. I think we're right. good to turn around, brother. Yeah. I really do. I want to do that. I want to get back on that good line. Okay. Are you good with that? Yep. Of course. You're good. I'm just going to troll the motor so I don't oh, screw are? it up. Okay. Just so I don't screw it up. Okay, cool. I'm so close to it. Probably should put the motor on. <laughs> Will you pull this trouble motor for me here in just a second? Okay. I'm surprised we haven't seen another big fish come out of Kevin yet. Out of Aiken. They were moving a lot yes. a while back. God. Yeah. Man, I don't know how we haven't checked in them. I thought I did, but I kept up with the motor, and then I, that cloud came over right as I was staring. So you know what, we probably ought to talk a second about the boats, guys. You know, a lot of times when you go to... Spot way, way up there. I'm Almost looking. Looks like it's going left and right. Yeah. Let's see what you're looking. I'm trying to look for that white in them right now. Looks like a school, dude. Shit. Oh, we're right looking at, we're looking at, oh yeah. <laughs> and I'm out in front of it. Normally when I see that, I start looking for that white in their bellies. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because it's that same color when they're schooled up, what it looks like, and then you see the white in their bellies. Rick, you may not know this, but Aiken, Kevin Aiken, being from this region, that's a benefit. The sight fishing aspect that comes with red fishing, Drew Cook is one of the top three or four anglers in the, in the world for bass fishing when it comes to visually sight fishing for fish. So if it does get to the point where it turns into that later in this weekend, I, I would not be surprised to see these guys, especially with them being so good on day one with these conditions. It could only get better for them, possibly. Yeah. Sir? So what I was going to... What I was going to say is that, you know, we need to talk a little bit about the boat setups. All the teams are required to fish out of a bay boat style of boat, like the Skeeter 2200 or the 24. Um, some of these teams have qualified that they weren't in Skeeters, but it doesn't change the fact that they're in a bay boat style of boat, which means that they're not standing on an elevated console. They're not able to s uh, fish off of an elevated platform, whether that platform is a cooler, a ladder. You see a lot of big towers on a lot of Texas boats. Um, but to keep it real fair, you know, we made the rules so that they were fishing out of bay boat styles of, uh, of, of a, a V-bottom style of boat. And, you know, this area supports that. They have a lot of uh, deep water, certainly safety and running from point A to point B is a 
huge concern yeah, for Yamaha and Skeeter pull up and, start whacking and the Redfish right. Cup. So uh, safety is always first. Um, but, you know, I think it was really important for our audience to understand that they're wondering if they're from Texas or Louisiana, where are the big elevated platforms? And that's just simply not allowed in this particular three-day event. There's also no what we call rupping, which is reconnaissance under power. You know, so they're not allowed in their pre-fishing or even in the days of events of running and running over a school, making the school raise up and then turn around and spin around and throw in there. They're not allowed to do that. They're not allowed to burn the flats. We would, you know, we don't want all of that happening and damaging the grass flats. And that's for the sake of conservation as well. Yeah, the 100%. erosion of it, protecting the, the fishery itself so we can protect the species as well. Yeah, and we earn, learned in the early to mid 2000s that, you know, when we would take these tour events and go to these places, you know, that's what they always fussed about, that we were doing damage to the flats. So we just said, okay, we're not doing that anymore. And, and I think that was the right move. It was certainly the right way to do it because oh. we've got to protect the environment. Still catching some trout, <laughs> made a little move. Uh, you know, the wind has definitely picked up a little bit. And uh, we've come over to where some cleaner water is. Some of this flats we were fishing kind of blew out and got kind of, I guess that chalky kind of soapy color. Anyway, um, we've come over where we saw some cleaner water on the outside of some islands. Same yeah. thing, man, just trying to find them on that string. We're about to hit that kind of same line where they were on the other side over there. We'll see, yeah, catch a few look, trout and some redfish. Look, kind of looking for this one, one, one big bite now for sure. I mean, we got two really de de decent fish we're happy with and uh, one, real, real, one real big one to really make things nice. Yeah, we're but, certainly uh, not in panic mode right now. We're nah, kind of chilling. We're pretty relaxed. Uh, Hopefully find something maybe for tomorrow or two, you know, maybe find a little pot of fish somewhere. You need all the fish you can for three days, you know, especially a three-day tournament. And you know, Tommy, th three really important factors is that you got to find them, you got to catch them, and then you got to bring them back to the weigh-in. Yeah. And so far, we've got 10 teams that have done that. They found them and they've caught them, some bigger than others, but Nobody's got back to the way in yet. That's true. That is that without that, now. none of it, none of the other matters. Correct. Yeah, I think so. I'll put it in that just in case. Just Kennedy hooked up here. It ain't that big, but rather be safe than sorry. I think he might be 20 inches. Oh, man. Yeah. That's just the bait falling off. All right, we got a big one. Y'all ready for this? <laughs> <laughs> Boy, it's tough today. Well, Chris Kennedy hadn't lost his sense of humor yet. Well, they need one that measures right here. Yes, they do. Twenty inches, so they'll take that pinch and slide it down it. the ruler till it gets to nineteen and a half inches. Just got you undone. And then we'll see where if that fish goes over the buddy. twenty inch line. Worry about that in a second. Uh, my belly's in the way. Like 21. <laughs> 20 and a half. Number two. <laughs> In the mile well. All right, little buddy. He's going into the protective witness program. He's yeah. getting ready to be transported 30 miles to the <laughs> to port. <Yeah. laughs> to, the, to the other jurisdiction. <laughs> yes, sir. Got the stink out again. Second time we had to get the stink out on day one. You better catch one bigger than that one you threw back now. <laughs> About the same. 
No, the one we threw back was four something pounds. <laughs> I held it, trust me. But I see. netted it. It was four something pounds. Trust All me. All right, whatever. <laughs> Leaders in second place, Adams and O'Connell, the two Louisiana anglers who are actually the qualifiers from the Texas Redfish Trail. That's correct. And I gotta say, looking at the creds for these guys, both Adams and O'Connell, and Zaldane and Rickard, you got a lot of top fives and a lot of First place wins. Yeah, I go right up if you can. Yeah, Which way you want to go? Right. Serious <laughs> red fisherman. <laughs> Ryan Rickard last year, before his first win, That's had cool about not 17 second places. Really uh, and he doesn't even know how many. Having a big V bottom boat, fives. it really tracks well. So He's you had get another the second you want. Place. Just I mean, that little bit of steerage right here is going to bring us around that island up there and just give us another good mile and a half, two mile drift if we want it. So it makes it easy. And obviously we're not spooking fish with the trolling motor and everything else. So it's all we're trying to do, stay in the fish. Did he say there whether he was using a wind sock or a five gallon bucket to slow his drift down? Said he had used a bucket with before, but I think they were prepared with a sock this time. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Probably move anyway towards the uh, they ever yep. utilize drift paddles? I know those are big northern smallmouth Great Lakes places, so, but you could use them for redfish. And, and power drift. pole makes a paddle yeah. that goes on the, on the side when you're not running. When you're running, it mounts on the side of the power pole. When uh, they go down the angle, it, it kind of catches all the water. Yeah. It attaches to the spike, and then when you decide you want to slow down, then you just put the power pole in the water, and there's this that big paddle on the end of it and it'll slow you down quite a bit. You wanna to go to the right, you put the right pole down and it makes you go to the, and you can adjust it so that it acts like a giant skeg. It works very, very well. It works. Eddie just looks so at home, Tommy, with a fish in his hand from oh, all yeah. the fish that he catches in Louisiana. Oh, yeah. He just flipped that trout off, just took, brought it in, grabbed it, took the hook out of it, dropped it back in, and went right back to fishing. Where's he going? Always a good bait. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of scent, a little bit of motion. Yeah, you get the sense he's put his time in. Never going to hurt anything. Well. Yeah. I was happy to hear recently that the Louisiana legislator ha were talking about changing the amount of trout that you can keep uh, yeah, and the amount of redfish that you can keep, keep, keep in the game, making no, the limits no. less, which is going to really help their fishing as well as they were taking the trout size, the minimum size, up, which will mean a 12-inch trout. Well, I think it's going to 13 or 14, and Shoot, what that's going to do is allow that fish to breed yeah. a couple Cease more times bigger, before he's big out, enough to actually out, be cool. in the capable to be taken thing. home for a uh, table fair, you know? Yeah. Shoot. 
is a good anchoring spot right here. Really good anchoring spot. Think those boys know the lay of the land? <laughs> the lay of the lake, as you guys yeah. say. Wow. Some good holes right out there. Yes, there are. The one thing I've always said in tournament fishing, it's really, really important that you stay in your boat, meaning mentally you stay in the boat. You can't allow what's going on 300 yards away from you to be a distraction. Otherwise, you're not fishing efficiently. And since Scott Martin and Willis have come into visual sight with these two, they have been distracted quite a bit by those other guys being close by. We need one of these 27 and a half inches that yes, freaking just do. swallowed two or three we of those do. mullet and then you then, then catch them. And they're fishing, unless I'm not reading it, but it seems to me they're fishing a lot faster. Oh, it looks so good right now, dude. Than it they really were. Does. Come on, baby. More casts per minute. Yes. And, and maybe the baits that they're using, but I don't think so. I think Ryan's still throwing a spoon and Chris is throwing his swim bait. But it just seems like Ryan's not fishing the spoon all the way back. Um, not to say that would make a difference. Like, you know, he wants to be out long ways for the boat. It's almost like that long cast makes him feel like he's honoring or he's protecting his zip code, <clears throat> you know? Mm -hmm. And again, in my opinion, that's a distraction. So. Got to take care of those fish, Tommy. Going into the fourth quarter. This was a football game today. A couple of hours fishing time left for our 10 teams out there today. Some of them looking very good right now. Others with uh, uh, plenty, plenty of uh, headroom, room to grow, as they say. A good way to put it. And we'll be right back to see what transpires. Live coverage of the Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup is presented by Skeeter Boats. Redfish Cup 2022, Port Aransas. Here on the Texas Gulf Coast for this Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup Championship. And 10 teams out there, just as we had last year. Five of our teams are uh, actual Redfish teams from the major circuits, qualifiers from the major circuits around the country. Five other teams uh, involve a, a Redfish guy, competitor. Teamed up with the Bassmaster Elite Series Angler makes it very, very interesting. This is one of our pure redfish fish teams right now we're dropping in on. They qualified through the Power Pole Pro Redfish Series. East in Florida, right? That's correct. Since he's from uh, Jacksonville and then Kennedy's from Louisiana. And uh, oh. There he is. They came up on top last year. All right, all right. A good one. Worked their way back to get here again this year. It's like he came up on top and got it. Were you always that on the top water? Yeah. You start throwing one. it again. All right, never mind. Way baby. This is a come on, baby. Stay on. That's why it looked like stay still, Pay. Come on, You're baby. Good. Stay still. All right. Stay on. That's why it looked like he was up on top. What, what we're looking for right here. 
been a slow day for this team. They did put another keeper in just about 30, 40 minutes ago to mm -hmm. hit their Come limit. Come baby girl. Maybe they got something going. They'll miss 10 of these today. Big ones. Probably five big ones. I don't know how big this fish is, but it's probably what we got. Biggest fish we caught today. What's your, oh, it's a good one. Come on, buddy. Come on, Chris. Yes. Yes. Finally, we got a nice one. I've missed. So I've had 12 big blow-ups on top water today, and we finally get one of them. A decent fish. Better than what we got. Super stoked. Not a monster, but <laughs> single hook top waters. Ooh, he wasn't on it. Is he no. five pounds? How big is he? Six? Five. <laughs> hey. Mm. Hey. I'm happy. We we don't we don't shoot the skunk, baby. <laughs> Good to go. Don't they have one they gotta throw out? Yeah, they had two yeah, right up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't see them get rid of one. <laughs> Maybe that's yet to come. As long as you do it before you pick up a rod again. That's the thing. <laughs> so, I mean, it's never too late to make a change and change your fortunes in, in a day that's that's going very slow. A couple of hours left of fishing time. My question to you, Captain Rick, is how much how much average travel time are these teams going to require to get back to uh, to the weigh-in? Well, I think with the way the wind has picked up. If it took them an hour to get there, they got to allow another 30 minutes to get back. So, so for some teams, that could be an hour and 30 minutes running. Yeah. Uh, there's no doubt that they've got, you know, twice the amount of wind they had when they were driving there. So, and we've always said, you know, there's three components to this red fishing. You got to find them. You got to catch them, and then you got to weigh them back. That's you got to right. get them weighed back in and alive. Absolutely. All well, of those things are key ingredients to the first day. Well, we have a friend who's already back. In fact, he's he's never left. He is our own Dave Mercer out there today, enjoying everything that's going on uh, in Port A. And and Dave, where are you right now? You look like in a kind of a historic place there. It's got the old uh, turn of the century feel behind you. <laughs> It sure does, a keen eye, Tommy Sanders. And who better to give a history lesson than the Canadian guy? Right. Guys, <laughs> we are in Port Aransas this week, but it always wasn't Port Aransas. Up till 1910, it was called Tarpon, Texas, because of the abundant schools of tarpon that people would travel from all around the world to fish. And where I'm standing right now is Tarpon Inn. And Tarpon Inn used to be uh, Civil War barracks, but then it was transferred into this lodge and it has such a rich, rich history. Some of the people that have come in here, Franklin D. Roosevelt came here in the past and, and caught some of these tarpon and they started, I mean, we all know that tarpon are so much more protected than they used to be back in the day. I mean, people used to keep everything back in the day um, and they do big mounts, but what they got into this tradition of taking a scale from the tarpon and signing it and dating it. Come on in here and I'm gonna show you something cool. Now, this is my friend Brianna, but she will not talk on camera, so we're not gonna talk to her, guys. Just ignore that she's even there, but I'm thankful she let us in here. But if you look at here, you can see some of these historic scales that have been signed, and that one right there, Franklin D. Roosevelt signed that. But it wasn't just the celebrities and the who's who that got to sign these tarpon. If you pan over to our wall here, you see that you have Whoa. an incredible <laughs> collection of tarpon scales. And that scale comes from the cheek, and they've been signed by all the guests that have come here all over the years. Brianna, what is the oldest one? The oldest one is 1892. 1892. Brianna, I am not good at my job, and my boss is telling me to talk to you, so where are you, what are you saying? 1892 is our oldest scale. I could show y'all over on the wall. Oh, wow. See, I told you you were going to nail this. This is the day. Okay. okay. Right here. July 8th, 1892 by Roy and Molina. Um, we do have an older scale that was caught in 1836, but unfortunately it's too faded. We can't find it. We don't know where it is. It's too faded to read. Our newest scale is right up there, the little silver one caught in 2021. Wow. What? Which is your favorite scale? 
I would say the the oldest one that I could see because I like pointing it out to people. I like, and everybody's like, "Oh my goodness, that's so old. That's so long ago." And it's just a nice piece of history. So, an amazing piece of history and a great job by Brianna. I mean, she is totally going to uh, give me trouble. When, well, actually, speaking of which, the best way for people not to give you trouble is to just exit the situation before they can give you trouble. <laughs> But we'll walk out here to this lazy little porch, and man, you could just imagine. And Tommy, you picked it out. You said it looks like turn of the century. Well, this definitely was a Civil War barracks, but it turned into one of the most historic uh, lodges. And they actually credit this with being the official home of Texas sport fishing, because this is where it all went down. Yeah, 135 years ago, they were, they were building the jetty. The guys who were building the jetty noticed all those giant tarpon out there. That's, that's incredible. And, and the, uh, there was a grapevine. There was a fishing grapevine back 135 years ago because soon people started, you know, they started coming on the railroads to, to come down and fish there, right? For somebody who didn't want to be on Yeah, camera, it was an incredible. Great job. Go ahead, Dave. Nailed it. I'd, I'd say she nailed it. I would say she nailed it. A little too good, actually. Uh, the producers here on Cider are taking her number down, and she <laughs> might be doing the reporting tomorrow, guys. <laughs> Dave, uh, one more question for you. Did, did you see, did you see any movie star uh, tarpon scales in there, like John Wayne or, or uh, I don't know, George Clooney or somebody like that? Let's go see Brianna again. How about, how about we go see Brianna? Hey, Brianna, oh I'm God. back. I didn't mean to start all that. Up. Is there any, like, movie stars that have ever uh, signed? Uh, any, any like, uh, well, let's just get on behind the counter. I've always wanted to work in a hotel. I'm not exactly sure. I do know we've had, like, uh, Duncan Hines. I don't know if you can see this right here. Oh, oh. Uh, you might be familiar with Duncan Hines. He's a famous, you know, you know him for the box, cookies and cakes. But um, besides that, I believe Hedy Lamar was here before. Oh. Um, off the top of my head, I can't think of everybody who's been here, but that's a few. That is very good stuff. Wow. That's very good stuff. You could just kick back here and learn from Brianna. Pick up a copy of the Island Moon and uh, go to yesteryear. And uh, she's really mad now, guys. I know she's smiling on camera, but she's livid. Dave, you need to find a, just an old tarpon scale somewhere and sign it and put your own up there. Dave Mercer needs his name up on the wall. The, the wall of fame, the tarpon wall of fame. If I catch a tarpon, can I put, put, can I put it up on the wall? Or if I just get like a beer cap or something, can I sign it? And... There you go. Perfect. So appropriate. You know, Tommy, Scott Guthrie and Rick Murphy stayed there, but we didn't put any tarpon scale in there. Dave, thank you so much. You and Scott Guthrie? Yeah, we stayed there when we were in Port Aransas. Wow. Yeah. But we didn't, no scale. No, no scale? You didn't no. catch any tarpon. We didn't catch any tarpon. We're too busy trying to find a redfish. Which the, the height of summer is when the tarpon ha happens there. That's correct. Okay. And, and for the record, we didn't find the redfish too well while we were there either. Oh. <laughs> well, that was a rare occasion because you, you guys usually found them better than everybody. I believe our own Mike Sukon, I saw that wall last week because he sent me a photo uh, through email with that, talking about the wall, and so there must be a story at Daily Limit on Bassmaster.com about the tarpon, uh, tarpon town and tarpon scales on the wall. So there is, so it's on Bassmaster.com, yeah, it yeah, yeah, you need to check it out, it's, it's incredible. Especially on his edge where he jumped up over the clean spot. Yeah, I'm hoping it gets clean up there, we find some fish. All this water's just kind of gotten blown out. It's definitely not as nearly as clear as it was this morning. Doesn't mean the fish go anywhere. Just uh, kind of takes a little bit of wind out of your sails, even on a windy Still day like today. Clean. But uh, plenty clean enough for fish to eat. Oh yeah, no doubt. <laughs> Think about that stuff we were fishing up north. Oh, I know. <laughs> I can't tell if Actually, that's cloud cover or if that's green water up there. I'm gonna find out in a minute. I think it's green water. It's kind of all way too long. He's in here somewhere on one of these islands. Try a couple other lures, but there's really not much 
productivity we've it's, had it's on too, It's too shallow for the chatterbait. Too windy for it, like a jig or anything like that. That 16th ounce jig you pulled out may stay out of the grass. Yeah, it's just. If any of them did, that's the only option. I mean, if they were in these sand holes, I would say yes. But we're not getting any fish reacting around the sand holes. But if. Uh -uh. Pretty much every good fish has came off the spoon. Back so. home, you know, we catch a lot of fish around that right there. That's where a fish would be. Where a lot of our fish have been, not so far today, but in general. So you got to wonder if running that trolling motor, even though it's blowing so hard, if that maybe is the difference of not getting the bites because you look at Aikens and Cook and Adams and O'Connell, they're drifting. Yeah. They are not turning on, the, they're just setting up Wind long switch drifts. Wind definitely got to move around, sprawled out. Yeah. Dang it. Oh, yeah. Let's get back over to, oh, here we go. Pulling it cooked up. Stay on there. Uh, hold tight. we we'll get them. Big one. Oh, he's not as big as I thought. Uh -huh. I don't know if he's gonna help. Still don't wanna take no chances. Ready when you are. Yeah, I don't think he's gonna help. They slowly called up today. They had a, a seven pounder and a three pounder. Now it's a seven pounder and a four pounder. No, he's not. Is there two fish? I think this one may be four or four and a half pounds. I don't know how much it's going to help, if it helps at all. There, didn't he look like yeah, twice as big? Yeah, when he first came up. Start measuring board. Where'd that board go? Uh, is it in this one? Board is in there. Do this all. Not even a keeper. No. Nope. Don't even gotta worry about it. The bite was awesome, though. As soon as I said the hook, bait just went poof. Mm, see him popping uh, mullet jumping over there. I have to drift toward that island and then yeah. run back up and make a drift further that way or something. That didn't suck. That was awesome. That was. Gosh, I thought it was way bigger than that, though. That water looks to be pretty clear. Just kidding. Looks Went pretty. all like on him. He wasn't that big. Compares some of the other stuff. You can mm -hmm. at least make out the black grass spots versus the sand transitions, uh -huh. you know. We just made a move. The good thing is, is we got through the gauntlet. It was quite a bit rougher than it was this morning, but we got on kind of this side of where it's really nasty. So it's a cakewalk getting back to the ramp now. Just caught one that was just short, uh, but kind of just getting into the area where we caught them the other day, had a few bites. We didn't catch any real big ones in here, but how much the water's moving around new group of fish could have showed up. It's a lot cleaner than it was in here the other day. Got a lot more grass floating in here today. Yeah. Wind's blowing almost the complete opposite direction. It was coming like this the other day. But they still ate the chatter wagon. <laughs> Oh. 
has got thumped. Mullet. Mullet, 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 mullet. I really think the the last two hours worth of wind is paying a toll on the fishing, Tommy. You know, those fish feel that pressure change and. Mm -hmm. And that may have been why we had such a really good bite this morning between, let's call it, 9 and 12, you know? Yeah. Because there was Armageddon coming, you know what I mean, as far as the pressure. Those fish are so much better than any Doppler radar we have or any barometric measurement, oh, gosh, you know? yeah, they're sensitive. Like if we do catch one more, it will be that, that one, <clears throat> you know? Yeah, especially how the bites, the bites kind of slowing. Slowing, or yeah. Or either they've so moved one or two, but yeah. I think it's just the bite slowing. Yeah. Kind of got that part of the day. Dang. It was pointed out to us yesterday that, you know, a lot of places where we go with Bassmaster Live, you get wind like this on a bank, it can really gets murky and cloudy and so forth like that. They say it does, it's not that bad here just because it's heavy sand here. It Correct. settles down so much more quickly. It's that, that hard packed sand that Dave was showing us earlier on the beach. Right. Really kind of. And like you say, it's this isn't a silt bottom like you have in Everglades National Park right. where you have right. six or 12 inches of silt. You have, <coughs> you know, hard, heavy sand and you don't have as much stuff to me get messed up. Now, certainly I would think that something is, that's really on the wind blown side is right up against the bank and probably 20, 30 yards off of the bank, you're gonna have some waves oh breaking God, and oh making wow. it muddy. Watch it, mm -hmm. watch it, watch yeah. it. Oh, power, power, power pull down, power pull down. This will be fun, this will be cool, power pull down. Wow. Ooh. Oh my gosh. Purple or not purple? Right here. Look at this. Oh, oh, that's cool. Heck with the tournament, dude. Catch one of these things. What? Oh, that? we got bonded up. Come to me. Oh, yeah. Good old Kentucky wind. look like to me Tommy they look like big big jack curvals and they came upon a school of mullet you see the mullet jumping there yeah oh, that, wow. that's a 20 pound jack curval wow. wow you still swim see him swimming to the top of the screen and you, you, truthfully it's a blessing they didn't hook any of that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because it's gonna destroy all your tackle be good for a YouTube video, though. Oh, yeah. That was pretty cool. That was like, it was like one of those moments where I, you, you want to catch one? It's like, heck with the tournament. Let me hook one of these 20-pound jacks and fight it for an hour. But at the same time, we got we got a job to do here. So I'm kind of glad we didn't hook one, but also kind of surprised we didn't, because usually when that happens, you better hang on, dude. That was pretty That was pretty ferocious. Yeah, they don't miss baits too often that doing was, that. That was cool, but it showed us where the bait is. I mean, you know, obviously, out on this edge, it might be a uh, more some bigger reds out here. If that makes the power pole replay of the day, you will see that mullet jumping right <laughs> yeah. before that yeah. jack tried it's to eat him. Big mullet out of the water. Going to the left, yeah. This is a, this is a, uh, this is a four clicker. You got to put four, you put your hat on four clicks just to keep it on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> Tommy, we had our flaps per minute, the FPMs, when yeah, it comes right. to wind speed, sure. the jersey flaps per minute. I've never thought to have a hat tracker for the wind with four four clicks. Well, that depends on your head size. That does, I mean, some uh, yeah, of us have exactly, this big yeah. giant head, and some, some of us, us have are, some one of us only like have one. Yeah, <laughs> we only have one thing clicked, you know. Yeah. And, and then some of y'all have hair, and some have. Well, colors. there's that too, which makes a difference in the click, <laughs> the click ratio. <laughs> That was that was impressive. That was a bloodbath going on. Yeah, I wouldn't want to be a mullet at that no, time. No, no, bad bad day to be a mullet right there. Would not be surprised to see them again. Normally those jacks don't go too far. What is it? You don't have to be faster than the jack. You just have to be faster than the other mullet. The other mullet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Now, Ronnie, the last thing you looked at indicated wind speed down tomorrow a little bit. Yes, yeah. Okay. Today was, you know, the at the utmost, utmost consistency of 23 to 24 One big upgrade. from the south. Tomorrow it should be it. in that 15 to 18 from the north, you know, water, little change little up a little bit. Yeah. yeah. But in the meantime, in between the direct Mother south and the direct the north wind, it starts to swirl all night from 10 to like 2 or 10 to 3. It'll make its rotation like around there and then all of a sudden it'll just kind of have to yeah. pause in the north them. and come from there, northeast. The water changes clarity or changes depth. It moves moves the fish around. I'd love to see Brandon catch about kind of the area that we caught him in the other day and it's just yeah. <laughs> a bit right flat. Now. It's super shallow, maybe a foot to foot and a half deep and uh, they, they kind of just roam this flat. You know, it's pretty close to the channel. So new groups of fish can roam the channel and slide up on these flats. You get all the bait and everything up in here. Mm. Short, so get it, get it. literally hundreds of species here in great abundance beneath the waves here. Texas Gulf Coast, there, there's, there's one of the prominent ones right there, Jack Crevel. Wow, look at that mullet running for his life. I don't think he made it, Bruce. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he turned down the wrong street, I think. Yeah. He went down Creval Street, shouldn't do that. <laughs> or Jack Avenue. Yeah. <laughs> Jack Boulevard. <laughs> well, that's the, that's the standings right now. They haven't changed much in the last couple of hours. Adams and O'Connell, our Louisiana team, hanging in that top spot right there. Rick and Sal Dane, defending champs in second place. They've been solid there for a long, long time. White and Mills, Aiken and Cook. All looking to upgrade a little bit, get a little bit more into the conversation for the top spot. Who knows what can happen between now and way in time. The Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup is sponsored by Minkota.
power pole and by Skeeter Boats. About an hour and a half until way in time here. Port Aransas, day one. This Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup competition. Let's take a look at the team that sits right now in fourth place. It's Kevin Aiken, the local. Lives in the area here, Drew Cook, Tallahassee, Florida area. Just finished his fourth year with the Bassmaster Elite Series, former Rookie of the Year, winner of the tournament this year. Red. Century Club performance on Santee Cooper. Think he's that big, Drew? Whoa. Drew, I'm kind of hot here, bub. All right. Not huge. He's just a little one, dude. Oh, I can't see him. I don't know if he's, I don't think he's an upgrade. I'm gonna grab the Boga grip, all right? All right. He literally ate it at the, mm. the bottom of his tennis shoes. I, he looked little, but I think I said that other one's pretty much five even, that looks like. Yeah. Doesn't look bigger than five. But. So remember, Tommy, they have an eight and a quarter. Yeah. And they have 13 pounds, so they're oh, trying to upgrade a five Ooh, pounder. Ooh, that rod out of there. Yeah. I don't know if that one will do it, but. He doesn't even want to open his mouth. Get close. Short. Put him in the water for, for a sec. I gotta measure, I gotta weigh that other one real quick. Let's be close to five. I don't wanna pull this one out and weigh him, but I got no choice. Look at, now you get a real here. idea how hard it's blowing. He's got his <laughs> power poles down, and look at the waves crashing over the back of the boat. Stop. Drew, that one's bigger. The fish in the net looks He's to me to one. be bigger. Ooh, that is a call. Yep. Yeah. Nice. Check him before we throw him in, or we'll grab him. Go ahead and jump in. I'll grab him. No. Well, there you go. Little bump. Little by little. Mm -hmm. That's the way you eat into a lead. Let's get back out to Brandon Bonick, Mike Goodwine. I just wish Brandon could hook a nine pounder. I'd watch him come totally unglued. <laughs> <laughs> He'd jump all the way back to Idaho. Oh, could be on Don't right now. Don't worry about it. Nope. Oh, that's not our man, that's for sure. Fun, but not the right size. Gosh, look how he ate that. It is gone. <laughs> gone. Uh, those pliers go. Now, do bass guys not carry pliers in their AFCO you know pliers with, shorts? Huh? Where those pliers? Yeah. We, have, we, in handy, own boat. Yeah. we have handy boat uh, little slots that you can put them right where you sit in the there. floorboard and you, as you unhook the fish. There's little spots right there for it, but you guys have a console in the way. So. That way they'll be there because that's where they are. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, I always see them laying on the carpet, you know what I mean, up on the oh, front yeah. deck. Hey, 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 hey. But up here it's, uh, you know. Freedom, that way. You can't put anything different. on the front deck of those things, no, otherwise you're wearing it in no. your teeth when and you And you know how these youngsters are these days. Their, their shorts are a little shorter and their pants are a little tighter, and so pliers just don't work these days in pants. you got to put them in the slot. Ooh-wee. Don't tell me that. She's blowing. Make out and make another pass. Look at Roy's body language. One thing I've learned this week versus just not happy. Bass fishing oh, yeah. is that slumped uh, shoulders. Is you just make big drifts so you're quiet, so you're not making any noise with the trolling motor, super long cast. Or if you're bass fishing, you just stay on the trolling motor and just work your way down this bank. You wouldn't be as worried about it. Man, 
guys, it is cranking. So we're going to troll back out toward the channel and then make our way and then just make a drift, but move over a little bit. Uh, it is 140. We got an hour. How long will it take two, from two, here? 245. Yeah. Right. How long will it take to get back from here? 30 minutes? Mm -hmm. What did he say? 80 minutes? 40 minutes. Oh, 40 minutes. 40 minutes. 30 minutes. 30 minutes. At least it won't be too bouncy going back now. No. Oh, that's right. They made a move. Right that's right. Yeah, he said we're just kind of around that's the good. corner. See, yep, the red roll. roll. Yep, that was a red. Belly rolling. Boy, he's got it. like sticking out though, you know? No, they're kind of light color. Yeah. You think you'd catch them out at 10,000 kids. I almost thought it was a drumming for Huh? Definitely reds. Floating high though. Oh yeah. I like it. Come on, give us another shot like that. Yeah, you need to be up weed. So Tommy, I want to bring up a point. I Again, with us not being there, it's hard to understand. But I'll tell you, if you look at these fish mounts that we have here on the desk, the fish between you and I is the size of the fish that you would want to try to catch. This is the 27 and a half inch fish. But the point is that this fish versus that fish, that fish is going to live in a different depth of water meaning he's gonna be more comfortable in water that's a foot and a half. Let's call it 18 inches, or let's call it two feet. This guy, with it blowing that hard, and I'm the shot. pressure from the barometric pressure changing, this guy is not gonna be as comfortable in 24 inches of water. He'll want more water over his back. That's correct. It just requires for this guy to be comfortable a, a lot bigger depth. Our leaders are fishing in five to six feet of water. Our second place team is fishing in five feet of water, four and a half to five ah. feet of water. So you gotta wonder if some of these guys spent their time fishing too shallow or even now that is blowing 25. You know, it looks like to me, Martin and Willis, I can see the bottom. I can see the bottom with Good, good Wine and, and, and Paul Nick. So I'm wondering, are they think they're in the right depth, but actually because of the barometric pressure changing, the wind blowing like crazy, are they just where a five pound fish would live, a 24 inch fish would yeah. live versus a 28 or a 29 or a 30? We haven't seen any 30 inch fish. So my point is that you know, those bigger fish are gonna be in a different depth of water, and maybe our teams need to adjust for tomorrow to get into the fish, uh -huh. to get to the area where there's more shot at bigger fish. Kinda of hard to stand up here right now, almost. <laughs> and you can see with Adams and O'Connell, look at the boat, how much it's <laughs> bouncing up and down. That's because he's in six feet of water. I haven't seen him move much. <laughs> Time you got in. Now, do they like almost about yeah. almost 145? Good, That'd be old troll. Really self-evident drop-offs. They like to have access to, to to deeper water where they can slide back when they feel a little bit. Uh, yeah, but pushed. I think in general the way of thinking, and I've 
I've learned over the years, whether it was fishing recently with Jeff Page and in, in Florida, or was fishing with Guthrie all those years when we were traveling all over the country. That was one of my arguments with my partners at times where I would say we're not in the right depth oh, of water. The reason we're catching 24 and 25 inch fish is because that's the depth of water we're in. That's the water, the yep. depth that holds that size fish. If we move to a deeper st uh, style of fishing, maybe it took that sight fishing game and made it harder for us. Go up the but pull down, put it down. housed the bigger fish. You know what I mean? It mm -hmm. wasn't about whether they could drop off. Those big bays of water that you have down in Port Aransas, and these guys are making these two and three and two hour drifts. The guys, Adams and O'Connell, yeah, are fishing in wide. five to six we feet of water, and there's yeah. probably some little yeah, depressions, yeah, and that depression is just because it went from grass to sand. That's a few inch adjustment. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what I mean? It's not a foot adjustment. I don't believe this is a drop off thing like the edge of a channel or anything like that, but we're talking about miles and miles of five to six feet of water and we're talking about miles and miles of two to three feet of water and you can obviously see right here with Goodwine and Paul Nick you can see the white potholes yeah you can see that the boat is not bouncing up and down to me it feels too shallow and that's why they're not catching uh. 27 inch fish or 28 inch fish in order to catch the right size, that 28 inch fish, every once in a while, you gotta catch a 28 and a half or a 29, because at least you know you're in the depth that the bigger fish are gonna be comfortable. You know, the bait can be in all of those places. If we're talking right, about yeah. mullet, blue crabs and shrimps, or per, a pogey perch or piggy perch or pinfish, all of those things live in that place. So, it doesn't matter whether it's 24 inches or yeah. six feet. Some bait fish like shade though, right? I mean, some of them do. They'll, they'll congregate under floating vegetation sometimes, uh, get under you know, boats and stuff. That could be the case in some locations. I don't think that's the case in the Laguna Madre. I don't okay. think that's the case, you know, in Corpus Christi Bay. I don't think that's the deal. Yeah. Uh, certainly, if we were fishing in Navarre and Pensacola or Panama it's City, a it's a dock game all day long. Yeah. Swing right here. Yeah. This just feels too shallow to me for a 28 inch fish. That's all. More right there. Mullet. Pack water. Uh, what was it? That was the Dan cast, huh? Yeah, again. But the thing was, that was a legit fish right there. He started rip and drag immediately. There you go. Oh, yes. Chris. Oh, good oh, one? Oh, yes. Okay, just just stay, stay uh, buttoned come up. On. He feels better. Is he come on, man. Don't Smile even ask you? any questions. Just get the guy. Okay. Gosh, chill the out, man. The thing, the thing. I just lost a stud. Chris got him one. Since he and Kennedy in third place, four two is their smallest fish. I, yeah, better than what we got. I can't see him now. He ain't making no big run, but oh you know, yeah. Come on, baby, stay hooked. Stay you go to the back? hooked. You go to the back? Stay there hooked. Come on, bring him in. Good job, Chris. Come on, buddy. Coming in, coming in, coming in. <laughs> yes. Yes, Bubba. Yes, Bubba. Good job, buddy. Wait, wait, wait. Hold it up. I'm going to keep all fishing. Here, hand me that rod. Hand me the top water real quick. This it? Yeah. You threw in the same spot that my fish got fishing. the same spot down here. We call it the Dan Cast. All right. <laughs> Getting on the Dan Cam. <laughs> Man, we got it going here. This uh -oh. skinny fish. Now what happens is the hook goes through the fish's mouth and then through the net. 
There you go. I think that's going to oh, be did bigger. You hear that? 4.5. That's it? That's it. That's way bigger than 4.5, dude. Let me see that thing. Let me I don't see. know why he doesn't. My partner's been with me forever. He doesn't believe anything I say. That's What's crazy. He, he looks so much bigger. <laughs> He don't believe me, fellas. Well, that means the All right, this one's a cult. <laughs> I'm going to leave him on the... That's a good one. This is a small one. And small fish in this live well ain't even a catch. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Say bye. Oh, oh. Whoa. As you can tell, we keep them good and alive. <laughs> Focus off. Boom. Good to go. Dan, did you hear that one rip and drag? <laughs> that was the fish, right. <laughs> and how did he come off, Dan? How did he come off, Dan? I don't understand how that happened, but I mean, so, after you start taking drags, I was like, okay. Didn't we grab that? Uh, don't step on my rod. Then the net, the, uh, the bait came off in the net. No. All right. So I wonder. Chris, that is one he messed up rig right there. Is using a wrapless getter walk. He took the treble hooks off and put inline hooks on it. Yep. So here's the question. Get just one, Chris. I'm kind of messed up for a little while. God, man, that thing was ripping drag immediately. I was like, oh yeah, this is a better, better one than what we got. Better than either one, better than either one of them in the live well. And then just comes off. Are these nope. hooks dull, Chris? Uh, no, they poked me pretty good. What I'm wondering is, if he didn't put those hooks on with a snap, with a swivel, what I've seen happen with a straight J hook, or like they call inline hooks, on straight to a snap ring, the redfish eat it, and then they do this roll thing. You see them roll when they get in the net, and, and I've seen it a hundred times to where it will tear the hook I mean, out if it's not off, on a swivel. So it, it, it'll wallow out a place where the hook can leave the mouth. Because it's a yeah. snap ring and it doesn't allow yeah, the hook to rotate. So when he goes like that and it's a single heavy shaft, it will twist out of the fish's face. Oh, sorry. And I'm wondering I gotta re -tie because, uh, if Chris Sensi, when he put it on, if he put it straight on the snap that ring, that, that could be the reason like why it's the tearing out and of the I fish. That nice one, and then you threw right in behind me and hooked another one. But did you guys see how skinny that fish is? I did. I was looking at it. I thought it was a six pound fish. They both so have done a good eyeball. job, I'll say this. That Kennedy has done a great job of when since he gets a fish five. behind the top water, to of throwing I'm in there him. behind him after the fish is blown up on the lure. They keep eating plastic lures. They ain't gaining no calories off of it. Something. I can't see to retire. <laughs> I know the feeling. Yeah, <laughs> right. Got to go see Dr. Gabe and get his LASIK. Yeah. <laughs> so does that stuff like go up right now immediately after we catch the fish? Do you send, they, they get the footage or something? They're always recording, so it's always going back. No, I'm talking about like, do they go live and say, hey, you know, so-and-so, we just, just got this upgraded or something like that? There's a leaderboard. Yeah. That's just. Oh, 
But they don't show it all the time. They just go through it every now and then. Oh, okay. They don't have to do it. So it doesn't go to them. Then okay, I got you. All right. Where was that fish yeah, at? We started seeing swim around us. What? Cow nose rays. Now the boys right. know about bass yeah, track or redfish right. track. You saw this week. Yeah, it was that big yeah. one swimming around. I saw another one. Right. Uh, we just caught more. That might have been the same fish that blew up now, because he, he was pulling drag. I don't no, think he came No, he was in pulling eight. drag going that way, you All know what right. I'm saying? Yeah. Immediately pulling drag. Did you hear him? I was like, you got I didn't hear the drag, but the wind's ripping through my ear. I can't hear much. You heard the drag. Yeah, he was on that, the right side of you. Yeah, he was like, the correct side of Right you. after he hit it, he took off, and I just got tight, and I had my rod right here, and he was going, and just comes off. I'm like, oh, wait, man, I can cast this thing. I think I can cast this as far as my spinning rods. You probably can, and with the wind at your back. Isn't that crazy? Chris. Oh, yeah. No, you were like, is that another one? I don't think he's worth it. Just keep fishing. I'll let you know. He's not pulling a whole lot. We got to be five pounds to make the call. He's not. No, we're good. Keep fishing. So are you? He's not. He's not. But, Dan, we're starting to catch fish again. Yeah. <laughs> we were both pretty heartbroken for a little while. <laughs> I ain't going to lie. Yeah, yeah. I was heartbroken after you threw that fish back. <laughs> I was like, we fixed that. Yeah. Hey, it's all good. But, I, I mean, we have fish in there that should weigh 10 to 12 pounds, and they're skinny as all get out. It's crazy. You threw in the same spot again, didn't you? Yep. Put that on a note. I learned that trick back at home. Just keep throwing until they stop fighting. Who knows what's going to be there? Might be a crab. Where you at? Straight out, straight out. All right, I'm coming on this side. Might be a little crab trap or something that's underneath the bottom. You don't even know. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? I don't know. Maybe it's a current. I don't know if they got crab traps out here. I'm not no, they ain't got no crab traps out here. They got come. I've seen like two. I haven't seen a two. crab hey, swim hey, by. That one was ripping drag. wasn't like a. It wasn't like yeah. a. It wasn't like this. Z, z, I it couldn't was, hear because your rod was on yeah, the side. Yeah, but it wasn't. It wasn't. Z, z, it was a. Z, z. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, finally got an upper slot fish. That would have been nice. Yeah, it would have. We still got time to do it. I mean, the top water, dude. I mean, I can't put it down if no, I do. No, you can't. I know. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not cursing you. I'm mad at you. Nothing. It's just. It's silly. It's kind of an aggravating thing because it is drawing fill. There goes another eagle. Uh, spider. Uh, I think there's a cow in his race, huh? So, so far, but one. They saw that fish swimming. Yeah. Farve cast it at him and. He was going from yeah, left to right, and, and and then uh, Marino threw over there and got in front of him, and boom. It's going to help these guys. No, but that's an upgrade, brother. That's all that matters. Got it. Yeah, he's going. Trying to lead it, yeah. Yeah. We see it to the right, next one, and now Favre gets to the right because the fish is going to the right. And Potten hooked him. Could be interesting tomorrow afternoon, fellas, when the wind lays down a little. Mm. Shoot, we remember. Houston and Hudnall last year had the biggest bag of the tournament on the final day, and if they had had even a, a semblance of something good the first two days, they'd have, they'd have blown it away. But somebody's going to be close. Somebody's going to be third, fourth, fifth. And they had like an eight-pound day mixed in there. Oh, the first yes, day, promise, eight, yeah, day and then one. they had 13 or 14 yeah. day and two, a boom. 19. Every day they got better by five pounds or so. <laughs> which is a lot for just a two-fish tournament. Well, that's the way it stands right now. Adams and O'Connell. Still riding high there, Rickard and Zaldane, ditto. White Mills, not much action in the last couple of hours. Uh, same thing for Aiken and Cook. Uh, maybe a little bit, an ounce here and there. Good wine, Palinic, right in the middle. 
Rick, is anyone out of this thing yet? Boy, I tell you what, those bottom three that are in the nines, I think um, Marino and Favre just went up over 10, so. Uh, but I wouldn't want to be in that bottom seven or eight. But you gotta have, you could have a real big two days and maybe make up some ground. But man, when you got Zaldane and Adams and O'Connell, those guys up there catching eight pounders like they're giving out lunch cards, come on now. Well, it's gonna be hard to keep up with that. We got fifth place at 11 pounds, five pounds and change behind. You'd love to be within four pounds of that for sure. Our coverage comes your way on FS1, Fox Sports 1, starting at 8 a.m. Eastern Time tomorrow. We'll be with you on Fox in the morning time. Weigh-in is coming up. That begins at 4 Eastern right here on Bassmaster.com. So we will have everything made official Get at that time. Otherwise, these anglers will fish on. Many of them are going to be having to head back very, very soon. But remember, 4 o'clock, write it down. The weigh-in begins right here. We'll see you tomorrow. FS1, 8 a.m. Eastern tomorrow. 3, 2, 1, coming your way. That worked. I do not remember. Let's head up. Yeah, boy. Yeah, boy. Yeah, boy. Yes. Let's get that one in the well. Yeah.